So my family and I have been living in my house for about 18 years now, and I've noticed a few weird things happening, but nothing evil and sinister. There are a few spirits in the house, and they usually appear randomly, so they come and go as they please. But there will be times that you'll randomly look to a particular spot in the room, and you can picture them in your head, or you'll see them from the corner of your eye. The spirits in my house are both young and old. There are two men. One is my grandfather, and the other is unknown. There is a female, and she's unknown also. So are the two young girls and the boy. The older spirits stay with me in my room. The unknown male lays beside me or sits next to me on the bed, and the woman sits on the edge of my bed or sometimes lays next to me. One of the little girls peeks around the cupboard in my kitchen, while the other sits with me on my bed alongside the little boy, who also stands in my doorway. But there have been three occurrences that I know of that have happened to me besides the spirits surrounding me on a daily basis. The first was the shadow figure in the laundry. I had just had a shower, and I opened the bathroom door. The laundry light suddenly turns on. There was a shadow figure that looked like my older brother, so I said his name. Then I take a step forward and the figure rushes to the back door. I chicken out and run to my room to get dressed. Once I had done that, I told my dad, because my mom is a skeptic. The second was the shadow figure that was in my room. I was lying in bed watching some YouTube before I went to sleep, like I usually do. And I don't know about other people, but I always put my head under the covers because I don't like the dark. Anyway, I took my head out from under the covers, and I see a shadow run into my bedroom wall. I just put my laptop down on my bedside table and went to sleep. The third is the orb outside my front door. It was after dinner, and I was going to feed my dog. And as I was walking out of the dining room, I looked toward the front door, and there was a bright orange orb floating on the other side of it. I looked to my parents and back at the door, but the orb was gone. I don't really know what to make of these recent encounters. They're not like the other ones that I'm used to. What do you think? I'm a real estate agent. Also, for privacy, I've changed the names of the clients. This is one of the few haunting type things that I've ever experienced. Anyway, my clients, we'll call them Jim and Pam, had been looking for a home to buy for a while. We'd seen a few houses that were in their price range, but didn't have the features they wanted. So when a home matching their requirements and price point popped up on the market, we were all more than motivated to give it a look and hopefully make an offer. We scheduled a showing for 7 p.m. that evening. I didn't have much going on that day, so I got over there at around 6.45 p.m. And since I still had 15 minutes before the buyers would get there, I decided to look through the house and also turn on the lights as it was getting dark and turning on lights for a showing is always a good idea anyway. When I walk into the house, right away I notice it's fairly nice for the price that it's at. It seems to be underpriced by at least 10000 if not more, and that gets me excited. I know the buyers are going to want to make an offer, so I just have to make sure there's nothing super awful. As I make my way through the rooms, turning on lights, I come upon an intercom in a hallway next to the kitchen. I press it and talk through it to hear that the other receiver is directly below me in the basement. Very cool, as I've only seen intercoms in movies, then I walk through the door frame into the kitchen. The counters and cupboards looked nice, but cheap. And then I noticed the refrigerator was open. Must have bad suction, I thought, or someone left it open. I think to myself to go over and shut it. I did so, and then I gave it a little tug, but it seemed pretty well sealed. So I figured somebody from a previous showing had just left it open. Even though the refrigerator has nothing in it, it's still a little rude of the last agent to not do a once-over and shut it. As I mull this over, the intercom buzzes and static comes through. 
I slowly walk into the hallway as it continues, and a few steps away, it cuts out. Hmm, I thought. Must have electrical shortages or something downstairs. I hadn't gone downstairs yet, so I figured I might as well go down there and turn on the lights and check to see what was going on with the intercom. The basement doesn't have a switch, just a pole string attached to a light in the middle of the room. The light from outside is coming in through the small windows, just enough so that I can see where I'm going, but not much more. Before I can pull the light string, I hear the intercom buzz back on, but this time, it's static through the basement receiver, so now the interference is coming from upstairs. I'm not really sure what's going on at this point. I turn on the light and run up the stairs. Again, the intercom stops as soon as I get close, but something in the kitchen catches my eye. I walk into the kitchen to find that every cupboard, drawer, and the refrigerator are wide open. My heart sinks and the hairs on my neck stand on end. At this point, the scare was over, but the clients called to let me know they had just arrived. It was 6.55ish, so all of this happened pretty quickly. I hurriedly slammed everything shut and tried to act normal. When I opened the door, Jim asked if I was feeling all right. I assume I was slightly pale. Look like you've seen a ghost type of appearance. I said that I was, and we quickly walked through the house. Nothing opened this time, and afterward, when I asked how they felt about the house, they both agreed that something felt off and dark. I told them that I sensed that too, but didn't go into detail. Needless to say, we didn't write an offer, and I've never gone back. Definitely creeped me out. Definitely haunted. I've had many paranormal experiences in my life, but this one has stuck with me for a while. This all happened a few years ago in a little hick town. My friends and I were bored as hell, so we decided to find some trouble to get into. My friend mentioned a super creepy house in the middle of nowhere that had been sitting empty for a little over a year. We decided that since we didn't have anything better to do, we should go and check it out. So, the six of us crammed into a car and headed over there. It was around 3 a.m., middle of summer. The moon was full and it lit up everything around us. We parked a little ways up the road and walked up to the house. It was definitely spooky in the moonlight. It kind of looked like the creepy house from the Blair Witch Project. We were originally just going to walk around the property, but my boyfriend at the time decided to kick the door open and explore inside. Three of my friends stayed outside to watch for cops. The cops didn't normally patrol the area, but we wanted to be extra safe. The other two and I went inside. I made it maybe six feet into that house before I got hit with a really weird, heavy feeling. It felt like I was wrapped up in a thick blanket, but instead of being warm and cozy, it was cold. I got out of there as fast as I could. My boyfriend and our friend, let's call him Tim, teased me, saying that I was being a wimp. I knew something was weird in that house, and I refused to go back in. Tim decided to record their walk through the house. After walking through, Tim picked something up, threw it at my boyfriend, and started screaming to try to spook him. Well, it worked, and they ran out. The three of us then started looking through a shed in the back. We found various hunting traps. They looked pretty old and rusted, so I assumed they were just hung up for decoration. My boyfriend decided to take one to remember that night. I'm pretty sure that the trap he stole had something attached to it. A lot of weird stuff started happening at our place after that, but those are stories for another time. We left shortly after. When we got back, we watched the video that Tim took inside the house. After we laughed at my boyfriend's screams, Tim said he thought he had heard something weird in the video. 
so we played it back. And sure enough, while they're running out of the house, there's a voice in the video that doesn't belong to either of them. It was a woman's voice, clearly saying, she died here. We collectively lost our minds. I was the only girl there that night, and the sound of them screaming and running would have drowned out my talking. And like I said, I had already left. I wish I still had the video for proof, but I had a falling out with Tim and deleted our messages, so I don't have the video anymore. I still beat myself up over not saving it. I used to be terrified of the paranormal, so I didn't save it when he first sent it to me. I've come to accept since then that I'll always have weird paranormal experiences, and it'll always be a part of my life. Still, that video was the first paranormal experience I've ever had solid evidence of. When I was between two and 14, I lived in a haunted house. Lights would turn on and off without any people in the room. My little brother, who was about three, would point and scream and cry at the corner where the front door connected to the garage wall. The worst thing was, I used to get in trouble for wearing shoes in the house while people were asleep. The thing is, I didn't even wear shoes in the house. I would take them off the minute I got home and leave them by the door. Whenever I left my bedroom door open during the night, I'd see a very tall man in a sort of old-timey barbershop hat standing in my doorway. When I closed the door on him, I would hear him walk down the hall. I'm also fairly certain that there were two graves in the crawl space under the house. I mean, anthills aren't usually six feet long. Right? There's a little boy that inhabits my mom's house. My mom has owned her home for 18 years now. There have always been small, bizarre occurrences around the house the kind that you can explain away or simply ignore. Things falling off of counters or going missing. Strange noises or that feeling of being watched. Footsteps down the hallway all the time. We never talked about it, and I never felt scared or even had any idea that our house was actually haunted. Until one night. The bathroom at the house is located at the very end of a long hallway and my bedroom is directly next to it. It was summertime, and I was about 14 or 15, that age where you would stay up talking to your friends on the phone all night. I was on the phone with my best friend. It was 4 a.m. when I distinctly heard footsteps running down the hallway into the bathroom, and the bathroom light clicks on. Immediately, I get up to check out what's going on, thinking that maybe it's one of my younger sisters. If somebody like my younger sister was running to the bathroom at 4 a.m., obviously something is wrong and I wanted to help. Maybe 10 seconds elapsed before I look into the bathroom. There's nobody there and the light is on. I check on my sisters and my mom. Everybody in the house is sleeping like the dead. I'm absolutely horrified and my friend on the phone experienced the whole thing with me. The next day, I told my mom. She tells me that she knows the house is haunted by a little boy in a red sweater, because she has seen him herself running down the hallway. Years later, my stepdad on one end of the hallway and my mom on the other both see him again, the boy in the red sweater. He yells like a child playing and runs down the hallway into the bathroom and then he disappears. Something about this is just inherently sad to me. The idea of a child stuck in a purgatorial loop. What was he running from? What was he running to? Who is he, or who was he? And what happened to him?
If you like haunted houses, you would love my dad's home. It's a two-story brick home built by a family back in the 1840s. It was owned by the same family until my dad bought it. There's a rumor that it has a tunnel entrance on the property because of the Underground Railroad. I lived there by myself for several years during college. Dad lived with his girlfriend. Paranormal stuff happened on the daily, so much so that it was just routine. Footsteps throughout the house and going up and down the stairs during the day was typical, but mostly at night and in the early morning. If it was at night, I would usually just turn up the TV. Several times, I was woken up by a man who shouted, Hey! When I'd look around, a man's silhouette could be seen leaning casually against the doorway of my room. I got the feeling that this ghost didn't like me, but I didn't really give a damn and I would just roll back over and go to sleep. Often, I would also wake up to the feeling of my bed shifting, as though somebody had sat down. Once I felt something rub my back, not in a malicious kind of way, more like a motherly way. I'll also experience very strong and sudden aromas. They'll come out of nowhere and last just for a few seconds. Usually it's cigar smoke, my dad and I don't smoke, old lady's perfume, or freshly baked bread. Items would always go missing and then magically reappear in other areas of the house. You never, ever feel alone. You always see somebody just out of the corner of your eye. I had to keep the blinds closed because I kept seeing somebody walk across our front or back porch, but nobody would ever be there. I always got the feeling that if you glanced at the top of the stairway, you would see somebody standing there. Very often I would hear feminine humming. It definitely had tune and inflection. It wasn't our central heating or air conditioning or anything mechanical like that. After a particularly active paranormal night, the next morning, there was a random, dirty, rusty, handmade nail, about three inches long, laying on its side outside of my bedroom. The only time I felt genuinely scared was when I was playing a video game at about 4 p.m. I heard the front door open, and my dad whistled his distinctive whistle. I heard footsteps and keys being placed on the counter. Without looking up from the game, I said, Hey, Dad, I didn't know you were coming here today. I would have ordered pizza or something. He didn't answer me, and I thought maybe he just didn't hear me. So I paused my game and went into the kitchen. It was totally empty. No keys on the counter. His shoes weren't by the door. The door was locked, and his car was not in the driveway. I thought, wow, kind of rude for him to leave so soon. So I called him and said, where'd you go in such a hurry? Dad sounded confused. I haven't left work. I'll be here late tonight. My dad works about an hour and a half away. There's probably more things that I just can't remember right now. My friends have all hated that house and they would never come over. Whenever family comes over, they get weirded out by the vibes, which is strange because most of them don't believe in these things. I first want to talk about the recent experience I had at my house while I was trying to astral project. I was laying down, doing the techniques, when I suddenly hear somebody breathing right next to me and my dog. At first I thought it was my dog, since sometimes he moves around in his sleep. And I think he has nightmares. While I'm hearing the breathing, I look at my dog, but I can hear him breathing and it's a different pattern than the one that was right next to me. My next experience haunts me to this day. I was in bed when my dad and I hear the gate button being pressed. It connects to an iPad. We ran downstairs to investigate since we suspected that it might be the police. We open the app to see that it's a black screen. Peculiar, but it was because of the Wi-Fi. For some extra context, the gate camera will snap a photo of the person who pressed the button to be let in. It took two photos. My dad and I went to the windows to see any lights, but there were none. 
there was nobody in the photo. The next experiences somewhat relate to each other. This happened when I was walking home from school. I was strolling down my road when I hear someone yell, Hey! I turned to see if it was my neighbor, since we have a few houses on the small patch of road. No one was there. I walked next door to see if anybody was home there, but nobody was. The second thing that happened was I was walking in the forest on my property. I was walking on this little trail when I hear snap. Not like a twig, it sounded like a firm finger snap. We have tenants down in the yard, but how they could snap so close to me when no one was there is beyond me. It had to have been somebody standing right next to me. It wasn't an echo or anything like that, but nobody was there. The last experience has given me a wider sense of the paranormal. I was dragging the lawnmower when I hear an old woman's voice say, Hey! I turn to see nobody there, so I keep dragging it. Then I hear, Stop! It was so loud that I dropped everything and had to look. Nobody was there. I want to be honest, we do have a tenant downstairs, but why would she be yelling at me? I kept dragging the mower, and then I heard mumbling, and then the voice disappeared. What's even creepier is that my neighbor's grandmother lived in this house. When she died, I think he just decided it was better off cutting the property in half, sell one side, my house, and then make his house on the other. So, maybe it was her thinking that I was him or not being happy I was in half of her house. In any case, it's definitely been interesting. I grew up in a haunted house through my childhood years and when I was a young adult. Sometimes I wonder if it was real or just in my head, but I wanted to talk about it. Heads up, there is some mention of animal death in this story, so if that's not your thing, maybe don't listen to or read it. Anyway, when I was a very young child, I lived in a very old house. I think the house was originally built in the early 1900s. It was originally a doctor's office and home. Right next door was the town's hospital. The house was originally a one-story, one-bedroom, one-bath house and was later turned into a three-bedroom, one-bath, one-story house in 1960. I live in fear in that house. All you felt living in that house was fear and nothing else. I would either look down at the floor or close my eyes if I had to get up and walk to the bathroom. I always felt watched, and sometimes when I walked into the kitchen to get to the bathroom, something invisible would come up and hit me, or my body, or I'd be checked to the side. It would also happen if you stood at the kitchen sink. Something invisible would come from nowhere and body check you to the side. Then we had our dad's old non-battery operated plug-in radio that would turn itself on all the time. Even when it wasn't plugged in, it would still go on, all on its own. It did for years, and we just got used to it. But then we had a social worker therapist lady come for a visit. We came and sat down at the kitchen table to talk about the radio turning on with the lady there. I tried to do my best to ignore it, but I couldn't, and I had to explain to the lady what happened. She was actually okay with it. Apparently, it wasn't her first time with the paranormal, so that was cool. Years go by, and I'm home alone taking a bath. Out of the blue, the front door opened and slammed shut, and I could hear somebody stomping all the way through the house and into the kitchen, and then stop. I got out of the tub quickly, covered myself with a towel, and then threw the bathroom door open. No one was there. I was still home alone. You can't break into my dad's house. My dad put in key entry only locks and hard bar grids over the outside of the windows. The living room windows were triple paned and the bedroom windows were double paned. That house was like Fort Knox. Again, a few years later, my big sister lost her keys one day. She always put them in the same spot every day. 
but that one day when she went to get them, they just weren't there. We searched everywhere for the keys, and when we finally stopped looking, the keys showed back up in the same spot they should have been in to begin with. The second time they disappeared, they were found outside on the ground in the drive. It was outside the fence. There was no reason for them to be there. The third time the keys went missing, they weren't found until many years later, inside the compartment in the dashboard area below the radio of the car. She didn't find them, but the car dealership that she took the car into to trade it in found them. That was pretty creepy. The house, or the negative thing in the house, turned Dad into a very negative person. He went from an awesome dad to a very abusive dad over the years. I took the brunt of that abuse because I was the youngest and the most sensitive to the paranormal. He never abused my big sister, just me. The negative thing in the house also grabbed Dad and body checked him a few times, but he kept that to himself for years until we no longer lived there. One time when I was home alone in the house, I was standing in front of the kitchen, but kind of standing sideways because the kitchen stove was next to the sink. Something in the living room in front of the pellet caught my attention. And when I turned to look, I saw this mist or fog come up through the floor in front of the pellet stove and start moving toward the first bedroom. That was mine and my sister's bedroom. And then it just disappeared in front of me. Oh, and this is the best one. When I came back home for a little bit when I was a young adult, my sister and I had a bed together for a few nights. But one night in bed, my sister in her sleep just sits in my bed right next to me. As soon as she laid down next to me, a very bright young man came up through the bed on my sister's side of the bed, leaned over her and grabbed my right leg below my knee. I wasn't asleep at all, and I was just laying there wide awake. I couldn't sleep because at that time, I was pregnant with my first son. But yeah, I could see the outline of this young man. He looked like a high school quarterback, slim, tall, biceps. He lit up the room, he was that bright. After he disappeared, I looked at the radio clock in our room. The time was 3.47 in the morning. We also had something in the house kill two of our cats with antifreeze. Someone opened a brand new bottle and dumped it in the corner of the house. Nobody was home when it happened. You needed a key to get into that house. One cat died right away, the other two weeks later. It was slowly killing two more of our cats. We could never keep pets in the home. They all started to die shortly coming back home. Years later, dad and sister moved out and he rented it to a friend from work. We had a six foot tall, large dog kennel in the back. The guy put his bulldog inside and chained him in the kennel. Then he locked it up and left for a few hours. Later, he found his dog hanging on the opposite side of the gate by its chain. Obviously, he was dead. That's never happened before and we had two dogs in that thing before and they were even bigger than the bulldog. We were all completely shocked when that happened. Even the work friend became a very negative person after moving into that house. To this day, I want nothing to do with that place. It now sits completely abandoned. Dad can't sell it, which honestly is probably for the best. It's not safe for anyone to live in. This story is definitely not the only paranormal experience that I've had, but it certainly was a unique one. I have a guardian ghost, or at least I think so. As long as I can remember, there have been weird things happening in my house. As a child, my parents purely blamed it on my imagination, but it continued and got even more visible during my teenage years. While a lot of the things that happened belong to another story, I'll concentrate on the very nice dude that seems to live there with us. He made his first appearance when my step-siblings and I were about five years old. I remember vividly playing hide-and-seek with them, 
walking into my room and seeing a ball rolling across the floor from behind the sofa. But nobody was hiding in that room. When I mentioned this to them years later, they confirmed that they also had had this feeling of another person playing with us. I've always heard footsteps in our house, up the stairs at night, behind me while walking up or down them. It was quite common. Then it started to become the whole house. When I was about 13, I used to spend about two hours home alone every day after school until my parents got home. Usually I would spend this time in my room. What would happen every day is that I would hear somebody unlock the front door and walk into my living room. And every day I would go downstairs thinking that one of my parents must have come home, but nobody would ever be there. It got me so paranoid that I started locking the door to my room when I was home alone, thinking somebody must be in the house with me. Then I started to hear breathing at night, in my room, like right next to my head when I was lying in bed. The first time it happened, I got so scared that I stuffed my blanket above my head. The next morning I told my mom about it, who said that I must have just heard my stepdad snoring in their room. That would mean that I had heard that through multiple closed doors between our rooms. Sure, Jan. Anyway, the breathing started to get more and more common. Not every night, but quite often. Then there was the first incident that now, looking back, makes me think that this paranormal roommate had tried to protect me all along. When I was 14, I had a friend. As it turned out, she was a very toxic and backstabbing person, but I hadn't realized that yet. She was over at my house after school, and we were upstairs playing Sing Star on my PlayStation 2. My mom came up to inform us that she would go to the store to get some groceries, and that we would be alone there for about a half an hour. This was okay with us. We waited until we heard her lock the front door. And then we closed the door to the room we were in and started to sing to all of our favorite 2000 hits. That was until my friend suddenly stopped and started staring at the door. I paused the game and asked her what was wrong. And that's when she just turned pale and told me that somebody had just knocked on the door very loudly. I hadn't heard anything, so I told her that she must have just heard something else. We continued our game, and about a minute later, the same thing happened. My friend stands there, just frozen, completely panicked, telling me that she needs to leave the room immediately because something is trying to get inside. Great logic, by the way. But I, who still hasn't heard anything, slowly opened the door. Nothing was there. My friend wanted to go downstairs, which we then did. But when we got to the middle of the staircase, she starts screaming. Of course, both of us start running, me being scared because she's screaming like bloody hell. Our first instinct was to open the back door and run outside where we waited for my mom to come home as my friend refused to set foot in the house again. When she calmed down a bit, she told me that when walking down the stairs, somebody started talking right next to her, right into her ear. Needless to say, she never visited again, which was good knowing now all the things she did later on. Anyway, I was very paranoid still that somebody might be in our house. Right under my window was our back door, which I didn't trust one bit, when it came to protecting us from an attempted break-in. Every now and then, when I was lying on my bed at night, I would get afraid of any noises coming from that direction, because oftentimes it sounded like somebody was trying to open it. But any time I got scared by it, this breathing would start again, and eventually it didn't feel scary anymore. It started to feel like somebody was trying to comfort me, trying to tell me that everything was okay, and that I wasn't alone. Which, looking back on it now, is not so comforting, because I was alone, but I digress. After what happened with my friend, I was glad to change schools. At my new school, I avoided topics like ghosts and stuff. 
I wanted to use the opportunity of making new friends without being the girl with the haunted house. Also, a part of me was thinking straight enough to acknowledge that the breathing only occurred when I was feeling scared, and might just be some kind of mental mechanism to calm myself down. That was until I had a sleepover with two of my friends at age 17. For reference, my room was kind of long. On the one side it had my bed, and on the other it had a sofa. There were like three meters between them. So Sarah slept on the sofa, while Ella slept in my bed next to me. Next to my bed was a rocking chair that my grandpa had once gotten from a garage sale. Keep in mind that I hadn't told them anything that had happened to me in the last couple of years. Since it was the first time having them stay over, I wanted to be a good host and asked them how they slept. Ella didn't say anything, but Sarah said, Okay, I know this is gonna sound super weird, but I couldn't sleep for most of the night. It was like somebody was just breathing into my face, but when I looked, nobody was there. I was shocked because this confirmed everything that I thought I had just imagined. Around this time, the thing with hearing the steps got worse. So much worse that my mom started asking me if I was jumping around my room in the middle of the night. My stepdad asked on several occasions what in the world I was doing in the kitchen at 3 a.m. because he kept hearing somebody walk around downstairs. I hadn't been doing either of those things. About two years had passed since the sleepover with my friends when Ella and I were talking to a friend of ours who had just gotten his first apartment. He told us to come over later on and I jokingly asked him if he had any furniture yet or if we would have to sit on the floor. He then proudly told us that he even had a very cool rocking chair. That's when Ella told us that she hates rocking chairs because she had a really creepy experience regarding one. Our friend wanted to know what happened, so she started telling her story. Well, I spent the night somewhere and there was a rocking chair in the room. When I woke up in the middle of the night, there was this tall stranger sitting on it, just watching me sleep. I was confused and said, that's so creepy, where did that happen? She said, it was at your place. And no, it wasn't my stepdad. Ella knows my stepdad and he isn't that tall. And also he wouldn't just be sitting in our room in the middle of the night. I wanted to get more information about it but she refused to ever talk about it again afterwards. That's why she had been so quiet that next morning. The following years continued as usual. I even started communicating with this ghost. Whenever I got scared and heard the breathing, it always made me feel calm. So I started thanking him for letting me know that everything was okay. And whenever I thanked him, the breathing stopped. I once saw the guy that Ella mentioned too. I was walking down the hall past an open door and there he was just standing, a tall man with some kind of hat. I could only see the silhouette and I left as fast as I could because it was still kind of creepy. Later on, after finally believing the stories that I had told them, my parents became more aware of everything. Even after I moved out, my stepdad continued to tell me that there was some ghost guy living with them. Like, yeah, I know, I've been telling you for years. On the rare occasions that I am at my parents' house, he rarely makes his presence known to me. Sometimes I can see a shadow passing by an open door or something small, but my mom still sees him. She just decided to ignore him. We're still not really sure what this could be. I can rule out any deceased relatives as there aren't many and nobody has ever died in the house. My parents built the house, so we were the first to live there. I thought that maybe he was just attached to me and that when I moved he might follow, but he never did. I also don't think he's attached to the rocking chair because it started before I ever placed that in my room. I guess he just thought it was comfortable? I don't know. Still, I hope someday I find out where he came from and why he's in our house.
My house was built in the 70s, not particularly new, not particularly old. We moved here in the early 2000s. I don't really know any of the history behind the house. We've always joked that there were ghosts here, doors slamming shut, creaking, and things randomly disappearing have always been blamed on ghosts. But around five years ago, it started to get a bit more aggressive. Sounds of light footsteps could be heard in the hallway, scratching from the second floor and from inside the wall. We have no rodent or pest problems, we checked, so it seems unexplainable to the entire family. Then, one day, about three to four years ago, I was home alone, sitting in the living room, when a loud bang happened on the second floor. It was so loud that I was worried the upstairs cabinet had fallen down to the floor. When the bang hit, my lights flickered and the TV turned off and then back on. I could feel the shake all the way from downstairs. I went up to check what had happened, but everything seemed the same. This has happened several times and it is almost entirely identical. A loud bang, a shake, flickering lights, but nothing really happening. What makes this worse is that you can't hear it when you're upstairs. You can only hear it when you're downstairs. I've had people on the lower floor call my phone when I'm upstairs saying, stop slamming the door so hard, when I'm laying silently in bed and I can't hear it. In the past year, I started to actually see things. I thought I was just imagining them at first. At one point, I saw a toddler sleeping in my brother's bed. I saw her very clearly. She was young, maybe three years old. She had long blonde hair and her arm hung over the edge of the bed. When I approached her, she disappeared. This was probably a year ago, but it still spooks me. Then a few weeks ago, I encountered her again. I was home alone when somebody knocked on the door. I was a bit confused as I wasn't expecting anyone. As I approached the hallway, I heard the door closing and a young girl say, hello, like she had just come home and was announcing her arrival. I felt chills run down my back, but I still opened the door to look. My brother is five and I thought maybe he had just come home early, but nobody was there. I closed a door today, like properly shut it, and then she opened it again and when I looked at the open door, she shut it. Now I'm hearing banging sounds from downstairs and I don't know what to do. The dreams that I get in this house are always so vivid too, compared to when I'm not at home. Sometimes I wake up with the sheets off my bed and the blanket on the ground because I sleep so uneasily. This never happens when I'm out of the house though. Anyway, I don't really know what to do. I don't think speaking to her works. I tried, but then she just stops being noisy for a bit and then it picks back up. I really have no idea what's going on. I work as a visual artist for the topmost financial company in India. I met this lady in the cafeteria who I was introduced to by another friend of mine. And as I got closer to her, she told me about her paranormal experiences that were so bad they made her want to commit suicide. This is not my experience, but her and her families. They are Muslims and a family of four. Three months before I met her, her father had passed away, so it was just the four of them. The mother and the two sons who are in school and she being the eldest sibling. After her father had passed away, they had leased a massive house for one to two years, maybe more, I don't remember, with four bedrooms, spacious halls and two floors. It was a really big house that was leased for a very reasonable amount. The thought that the kids would have so much space and fun in a big house like that was really endearing to her. So as soon as they start living there, 
a lot of strange occurrences took place right from the beginning. They heard screams, like really loud screams that scared everybody. They could hear footsteps and banging from the first floor. None of them had a clue what was going on. All of them were scared and panicked, and they never left each other. They slept in the halls together, and they never used any of the rooms. She told me that one night, while the boys were sleeping in the hall next to her, one got up screaming in the night. When they checked on him, half of his hair on one side of his head was gone, just half bald out of nowhere. Their kids started to suffer from panic attacks, and that was just the beginning. One experience that her mother went through made them decide to leave right away. While the kids were gone to school and my friend was at work, the mother was alone at home, cooking in the kitchen. She was just going about her day, and then all of a sudden she could hear somebody crying. She's confused and calls out to her daughter, thinking that she'd come home early from work, but she got no response. She goes back into the hall to check, and nobody's there. She goes back to the kitchen and continues cooking, when all of a sudden the sound of somebody crying becomes even louder. She sees something from the corner of her eye, on the ceiling, and notices that there is a lady sitting upside down on the roof, crying. The mother couldn't take it. She panicked and ran. She ran to her neighbor's house, which was quite far, and called her daughter. When she told them this, they all asked questions. The mother and daughter decided to go talk to the owner and tell him that they didn't want to live in that place anymore. The problem is, once you lease, you can't take back your security deposit until it's served its term, based on the contract. So they couldn't even move out because they would need more money to rent a different place. When they met the owner, he told them that he used to live in that house with his wife. She had committed side in that house on the top floor. Since then, he's been seeing her and hearing her walk around the house. So he doesn't want to live there anymore, but he never told anybody about it because he thought it would be bad for business. This family literally had no choice but to live there until they made enough money to move out, and it was hell. They've gone through so many messed up experiences, many that they don't even talk about. They even got a dog, which their neighbors advised, and the dog won't even go inside. He lives outside. They even called a Baba from the mosque to bless the house, but they still suffer and they still see the lady in the house. Nothing ever really worked out there, and three months after they started suffering, the mother died, and the three of them moved out to a smaller home. That house has just been left abandoned since then, and I think that's probably for the best. My name is Jennifer and I live in California, and the reason that I'm telling this story is to tell about my trip to Disneyland, specifically the Haunted Mansion ride. I had read so many stories about this ride that I was kind of getting scared of it. It's bad enough that it's dark in there, but I am partially blind, so combine that with only a third of an eye to really rely on, permanent shadows, blurry blobs, and creepy noises totally scares me. I'm not one to be scared of serial killers or humans who are crazy, but I'm terrified of the supernatural. Anything that's dead and is committed to following human beings for no apparent reason scares the cheese right out of me. A serial killer can kind of be dealt with one way or another by improving security at home or defending oneself one way or another, but the supernatural can't really be fought. So I get in line to ride the stupid attraction, and then I remember all this crap that I had read. And I'm like, man. By the time I get inside the house, I'm terrified because it's super dark and there are lots of creepy sounds. I tell my friend that I'm seriously scared and she doesn't laugh. 
She just holds tight to my arm and assures me that everything will be okay. I say nothing else for the rest of the wait. We get on the doom buggy and start the ride. Then I say, well, at least I can't see anything in hopes that it will make the fear go away. Just then, I feel this weird pressure or touch on my left hand. It was like somebody was slowly and gently stroking my hand. I dismissed it as me either being paranoid or as being part of the attraction to scare you. But I'm not so sure, as it's only my second potentially paranormal experience. Has anybody else experienced anything like this? And what do you think? I've heard lots of Disneyland legends based on certain rides, and lots of horrible things about it, but I've never really experienced any of it. And anyway, I just thought I would share. I would like to share a personal experience that I had in my childhood home in the early 90s when I was six years old. This isn't the first experience, and it definitely wasn't the last, but it's the only time that I ever truly saw her. A quick backstory. The house is a brick colonial, built by one of the very first families to settle outside of Philadelphia. They were a very affluent family who owned a large portion of land in the area and worked in the city. The house was lived in by their descendants well into the early 1900s. So, as you can imagine, a lot of history, births, deaths, and such were going on within those walls. As a child, I suffered from nightmares, a lot of them. It was commonplace for me to wake up in the middle of the night, jarred awake by some terrifying dream and this time it was no different. On this particular night, I had awoken from a scary dream, and in order to calm myself down, I laid quietly in my bed and scanned the dark corners of my bedroom for some unknown threat. I have no idea what I expected to find, but I definitely remember the feeling of what could be hiding here in the shadows. As I looked around, nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary at first, but then all of a sudden, there she was, standing in my doorway, staring directly at me. Her face was emotionless. She was very beautiful, with shoulder-length brown hair that had large waves toward the bottom, and she was wearing a long white nightgown. Forgive me for the cliché, but that's what she was wearing. I stared at her in shock and confusion, and she just stared back. I didn't understand what was happening, but what I did know was that there was a woman in my house in the middle of the night that I didn't recognize, and she was looking directly into my eyes. She was clear as day, as if somebody was just standing there, watching over their child as they slept. The wheels in my head were turning, and all I could come up with was, this person should not be here. The next thing I remember doing was throwing the covers over my head, as you do, with my heart racing, and thinking over and over, please go away, please go away. I have no idea how long I hid under the covers, but when I emerged, she was gone. From what my mother tells me, I didn't tell her right away what had happened. I think she said that I told her a couple of days later that I saw a woman in the house. From that point onwards, even to this day, when I visit my parents, who still live there, you had better bet that that door is shut. Friends ask me how on earth I could live there. The way I see it, her presence has never been malicious, and she lived there first, so it's just as much her house as it is mine if she chooses to stay. She does seem to have a sense of humor, though. I thought about saving that story for a different day, but it does directly correlate to the original, so I will add it here. Fast forward to last summer. I was back home for a short time helping to run the family business, which is also on the same property but in a separate building. The topic of hauntings came up with one of the employees that I had grown close with. I told her that we have a resident ghost in the family home, and told her the story that I just told you. She jokingly said to remind her never to come to visit. I reassured her that it wasn't that bad, 
and that I personally hadn't experienced anything recently when I visit. I even made a joke that perhaps she had moved out. We laughed, and that was the end of it. Or so I thought. That very same evening, I came downstairs to ask my mother something, and found that I was alone in the house. The property is pretty large, so it's not uncommon to be around and not know where somebody is. I went into the kitchen and found some almonds to snack on. Just then, I felt like someone was in the house with me. I figured it was my mom coming back, and I checked around the corner, but there was no one there. I called out to her and received no response. It was strange, but I shrugged it off and went back to snacking. I had my back to the entrance to the kitchen, and I was just sort of standing there staring out the kitchen window and daydreaming. That is when I felt it. Someone poked me on the back of my arm. It was a playful poke, the kind you do when you sneak up behind someone and tap them to get their attention. In the time it took me to turn to see who was there, I remember wondering who it could possibly be. My parents really are not the type to sneak up behind you and poke you. It was no one. No one was there. I fully expected someone to be standing there, so when there wasn't, I was so taken aback that I let out a startled yell. I power walked straight for the front door and left the house. The feeling I had was like reality slapped me in the face. I'm completely convinced that it was her giving me a playful nudge, saying, I didn't move out. Guess who's still here? That really freaked me out. I can handle little things here and there, but being physically touched? No thank you. Anyway, that's all. I just wanted to share my story. I grew up in several haunted houses. Even now, we have an entity in our kitchen who we jokingly call the fridge ghost, as it likes to hang out by the fridge and occasionally open it in the middle of the night. But for now, I'm going to talk about a house I lived in until middle school. It's located on a street called Cherry, which my friends and I always joked about for obvious reasons. However, nothing about the feeling I had when I lived in that house with my family was anything to joke about. My friends never wanted to spend the night at the house I grew up in. All of them had the same bad feeling staying there. The sinking feeling that formed in the pit of their stomachs before something would happen. And unusual things inevitably would, more often than not. Doors would regularly open and close on their own, this was something that I chalked up to the tilt in the foundation, at least at first. But when you hear your doors, cabinets, doors leading to the house, essentially anything with a hinge, slam in the middle of the night, you start to question if it's just regular house noises. The windows would open and shut on their own as well, which is a little harder to pin on a shifting foundation. There were a couple of times that the televisions would turn on and off on their own, Sometimes the volume on the TV sets would go up and down as well, and there were other times the channels would show up on the television sets that I've never seen. I could probably blame the odd television behavior on magnetism, or the fact that both television sets were quite old. However, the strange things I would see on those off channels through the static are enough to convince me that there might have been something else going on there. I would often hear noises in the vents, like things were crawling around in them. Sometimes it sounded like bodies were being dragged through the ventilation shafts. Sometimes I would hear scratching on the walls or the windows or other out of the ordinary sounds like footsteps on the floor when no one else was there. My mom used to tell me that it was little woodland creatures who got into the insides of the walls, but I never saw these animals. The closest I came to seeing anything close to that was one family of skunks we found living under our porch. But after moving them out safely to the woods, we never saw any other animals that could account for making the types of noises I was hearing. Sometimes I heard whispering, and other times I heard yelling, like a faint cry through the walls. 
There were other times I would find weird yellow liquid on the walls or other similar substances. My mom used to tell me it was mold and not to touch it until she could clean it, but it didn't look like any mold I've ever seen. It didn't look like any of those substances could be made by anything living. I would also see ghostly figures wandering through the house. When I was young, I used to talk in great detail with what I think was a child female entity. It was more like a one-way conversation with the entity, although sometimes it would answer in its own way. I wrote an essay about my friendship with that ghost for one of my classes later on and submitted it as fiction so the teacher wouldn't think I was crazy. But the truth is that my friendship with that ghost and some of the other presences was very real. Of course, there was the typical haunting stuff too. Objects being thrown, pulled, or just simply going missing altogether. I used to joke with my mom that the wall trolls or house gnomes had made off with our stuff to which she would just roll her eyes. When my mom started seeing some strange entities peering at us through the windows or as we were sleeping, she started to take my stories a little more seriously. She won't agree with everything I have claimed to see in that house, but she will definitely admit that there were presences that would appear. I often saw toys come to life, including a doll my aunt had brought me back from Russia. I had a dream that the doll was trying to kill me by choking me to death. When I woke up, the doll was sleeping next to me in my bed. No one had ever moved it there that night. I ended up blessing the doll and throwing it away. To this day, I don't like dolls and I won't sleep in the same room with one. I remember that the landlord who lived in the house next door was always asking us how things were going there. My mom told me to keep quiet about the things we saw because the rent was cheap and she didn't want to upset her. But even though I never got any direct answers from the landlord, I could see by her behavior that she must have known something was off with the house. Perhaps the strangest thing was that the house didn't particularly have a dark past or a history attached that would make it stand out as a hub for spiritual activity. The landlord was cranky and her attitude could have contributed to the overall negative energy. But other than that, we never knew what in particular made the house so haunted. I didn't exclusively see evil entities in the house either. Like I said, I made some friendships with the ghosts. And I even saw other entities, what I can only describe to be little people and entities that looked like what people say greys are, but they weren't aliens. This leads me to believe that the house was built on top of some kind of ley line or portal that opened up into other realms. Maybe instead of a haunted house, we just had a house with the gateway. I'm not sorry that I had the experiences that I did. In fact, I think it broadened my horizons and showed me from an early age that there's more to the world than what we can physically see. I will always think of the friendships I formed with the spirits and other entities fondly. For some people, my experience might have a rational explanation, and that's fine. I've always had an open mind, and I'm happy to listen to many sides of an argument. But for me, the experiences I had in this house growing up were tangible, and not just the imagination of an elementary school kid. They are something that has colored my view of this beautiful and mysterious world, and has opened my eyes to all kinds of realms of possibility. So a few months back, I moved into this beautiful two-story house with my mother, and we had a roommate with two kids in a great neighborhood. The price was suspiciously cheap, but at the time, we didn't think twice about the price. Anyway, the first night was a little creepy. I thought I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. My mom was close to the stairs on the second floor, so I always heard who comes up and down, but... I just dismissed it, thinking it was just the house settling, as they say. Plus, I thought to myself, people always get a creepy vibe the first night they move into a new place, right? So after a few tosses and turns, I eventually fell asleep. Now this was the first night, and the next encounter didn't happen for a few weeks. 
but this definitely got everyone in the house spooked. That night after work, I came home, happy that I had the next day off. So as soon as I got home, I got ready to play a game. As I sat down, I felt this presence in the room. But it was only me, and it literally felt like something evil was looking directly at me. I felt drained, but at the time, I didn't think much of it. Looking back on it now, it was almost like something was stealing my energy or feeding off of it. But as normal, I dismissed it and went to go ask my roommate if she wanted to smoke, and she said yes. So we went outside, and we were talking for a good bit. But out of nowhere, she brought up how she felt about the house. Then she told me what happened to her earlier that day. She told me that when she came outside to smoke as she was sitting on the stairs, which is where we always smoked, she happened to turn and she saw the blinds from our living room open. She saw a figure looking directly at her, but when she turned to get a better look, it vanished. She said she didn't go back into the house for a few hours, but when she did, nothing was there. To me, it seemed like nothing. I honestly thought she was just seeing things. But we both felt like there was always something watching us. This is when things get a little scary. About a week or two passed, and my roommate and I were down in the basement smoking because it was snowing outside. We finished up, and then her two kids wanted to play, so we both stayed downstairs and watched the kids play. We were sitting a good bit away from the stairs when we saw her youngest son look up the stairs. The creepy thing is the way he turned and made it look like somebody had called him. Mind you, we were both looking at him at this time, so when he turns, he then slowly looks up the stairs as if he was trying to make out what he was looking at. As soon as his head stops, I'm assuming that's when he saw whatever it was he saw, and he started crying, like literally bawling. When his mother called his name, he just smiled and ran towards her. From our point of view, we couldn't see up the stairs because there was a wall covering it. But we know he saw something. That's when we knew the house was probably haunted. Since she was home more than I was, and more than my mother was, she had stories about doors being opened that were originally closed. You know, the normal haunting stories. But now we started to believe her even more. My mother said she started to feel depressed whenever she got home. This was the scariest thing that happened to me personally. We were moving, and at first everything was going smoothly. I was packing up the living room, and my mother was packing up her room. The roommate had already moved out, so it was just the two of us. After a few minutes of moving, I heard a loud bang. It was as if a bowling ball had fallen off of a countertop. It came from upstairs. So I went to go check it out. Nothing fell. Nothing was on the ground anywhere. My mom and I were pretty spooked, so we left to get some extra boxes and then we came back. When we got back, it was nighttime, and I went upstairs to pack up the kitchen. As I was doing so, I heard this loud, demonic screeching sound. I know it sounds far-fetched, but it's true. At the time, I didn't think much of it. In my head, I knew it came from in the area I was in, but when you're in a situation like that, sometimes defenses take over and you just try to brush it off. So I brushed it off. Thought it was just a car from outside that had a bad break or had to break hard. Anything other than what I'd actually heard. I proceeded to pack the kitchen. When I opened the cabinet, I heard the loud bang again. So I looked around. And then I looked back into the cabinet, proceeding to close it and run downstairs. Literally nothing had fallen in that room. I was running downstairs when I heard the screech again. But this time, it came from inside the cabinet. I was still close enough to tell. It was almost like I felt a gust of wind blow past my head at that point. And I swear it felt like something went through my forehead. It felt like a punch. It wasn't like a fist punch, but like an energetic punch. It didn't hurt, it was more like a force that went through my body that I could physically feel. I booked it downstairs and told my mom what happened. Needless to say, we moved a lot faster than expected. If anyone has any experience with this stuff, please tell me what really happened to us. 
I always find it kind of odd, ghosts and demons and stuff like that, but maybe they are real. Something clearly was going on at that house. I just wish I knew what it was. So, my family moved into the house in question in 1999. I was five at the time. The house isn't too old, built in the 70s, and I live in a very small community. So as far as I know, nothing bad ever happened there. Just to give you a quick layout of the house. When you come in the front door, to the left is a hallway, and the last door on the left is my bedroom. But there is a bathroom at the very end of the hallway. And the way the house was laid out is such that whenever the bathroom door is open, the mirror reflects back down the hall toward you. Things only happened after the sun went down. Ever since I was young, I would always wake up in the middle of the night either thirsty or hungry, so I would go to the kitchen to make a snack. While walking back to my room down the hall, I would always feel something right behind me, reaching trying to grab a hold of me, which of course forced me to speed walk or light sprint back to my room, where I would sit quietly trying to calm my heart. Whenever the bathroom door is open though, and you could see your reflection in the hall, I never felt like I was being followed. But I would see shadows running around behind me or peeking their heads out around the corner like they didn't want to be seen. Shortly after we moved in, we got a dog, since then we always had dogs in the house. We've had three in total, and most of the time, if I was ever home alone, they would come and hang out with me. And every dog, even to this day, will occasionally just stare at my bedroom door that leads to the hall, or even snarl at it. Fast forward a few years to 17 to 18 year old me. I'm working a part-time retail job where I keep the keys to the store. On some occasions, I had the mornings off and someone would need the keys to open so I left them in the mailbox outside my front door just so I wouldn't have to wake up early. It happened on two occasions where my coworker John would come to get the keys in the morning, and as he was getting back in the car, he would see somebody staring at him through my dad's bedroom window, which was the room next to mine. John stared at him for a few minutes and waved a little, but the figure didn't move or react. He would just look down to start his car, look back up, and the figure would be totally gone. He described the figure as a wrinkled old man with a bald head. Nobody in my family has ever matched that description, and at the time, my entire family had left for work, and I was still sound asleep in bed. I'm also not an old man. John had refused to ever go back to get the keys again after that. I don't know how many entities I have in my home, and though I have an uneasiness and nervous feeling, I never felt outright threatened, until one day. I was 22 at the time, I was just in the basement getting laundry on a normal day. Nothing was off, nothing felt weird, it was 100% normal. I was finished folding all my clothes, so I went to carry them upstairs to my bedroom. And as I was climbing the stairs, I heard loud stomping coming from behind me, down the hallway where the laundry room was. Then they sped up, as if somebody was running full sprint toward me. I spun around, and I saw this black figure round the corner and barrel up the stairs. It made it to within an inch of my face, and then disappeared. I almost shot myself. I've never felt such anger and malice in my whole life. I ran to my bedroom, slammed the door, and just sat there in silence, listening for any bit of movement at all. But it was completely still. Those are the experiences that I've had so far. I can only guess what might come next, but I think it's safe to say I definitely live in a haunted house.
When I was a little girl of about 10 or so, I would always go shopping with my aunt for my birthday. But this particular time was a little different. She wanted me to stay the night and then go shopping the next day. I agreed to do this because who doesn't love going shopping with your aunt as a kid? I was always creeped out by her house for the longest time before I stayed that night. My dad and brother have had experiences before me. They always camped out in the backyard in the woods. She had a big place, a house, a barn, a pool, even a pond, and lots of land. Sounds perfect, right? Anyway, they said that they saw a fog surrounding the house. Not the barn or anything else, but just the house. Creepy. And they also heard things in the woods, too. Yes, I am thinking what you're thinking, it was most likely animals. The fog was harder to explain. Either way, I figured that they were just trying to scare me, so I didn't think too much of it when the opportunity to stay there at night came up. Let's get on to that experience. I was up in the bedroom, right at the top of the stairs. If you walked straight up the stairs, you could walk straight into the bedroom. The catch to the bedroom is that it had a baby gate on it, so it was very hard to get in and out quickly. There was a home office to the left of the stairs, and then to the right, there was like another living room area with an old time bedroom connected to it with dolls and glass tea sets. Oddly enough, that's the room that I felt the safest in. Off of the living room area was a long hallway that led to my aunt and uncle's room. I was laying in bed watching my favorite movie, Mary Poppins. It was at least 9 p.m. at night. Bedtime for a child like me, right? I fell asleep during the movie. I woke up with the TV off and to a room that was completely pitch black. The door was open and I could barely see the staircase leading down. I tried to close my eyes so that I wouldn't be so scared, but what happened next, I can never forget. I heard footsteps coming up the stairs, and they weren't heavy, so I knew that they weren't my aunt or uncle. In fact, it sounded like a child walking up the steps. I hid under the covers and hoped that it would go away. The footsteps came all the way up the stairs, across the room and stood right next to my bed. I tried very hard to be still and quiet. Finally, the entity turned away and I heard the little steps go back down the stairs. I was really relieved until I heard them ascend the staircase once more. I was so scared I wanted to scream for my aunt, but she was so far away she wouldn't have been able to hear me anyway. It came back into the room again. As I hid under the covers for the second time, it came and stopped by the other side of the bed, closest to me. I felt it tug on my blanket, and then it turned away and walked back down the stairs. So this time I got smart, or stupid. I don't know, you can decide that for yourself. Once I heard that it was far enough away, I jumped out of bed. I opened the baby gate and I ran all the way to my aunt and uncle's room and crawled into bed with them. Let me tell you, I scared the crap out of them. Once they finally made room for me, I got all cozy, but I couldn't sleep. Anyway, it was about a minute after I got into bed with them that I heard the baby gate slam. I was so terrified, but at least I was with my aunt and uncle. The next morning, I woke up in their bed alone upstairs. Now, you might not believe this, but I don't really care if you do or not, but I woke up to three scratches on my chest, and they were very painful. To this day, nobody really believes me that it happened, besides my best friend. This event still haunts me. I don't really talk to people about it because nobody ever believes me and I don't want to get ridiculed, but I just had to vent. Whatever it was, I still don't know. A demon posing as a child? Probably. Something evil? That's for sure. But I guess I'll never really know.
So, I've never been the kind of person to believe in ghosts. I'm a non-religious guy. But I've seen some odd things in my 26 years. Nothing to convince me 100% that the paranormal is legit. However, I have one interesting experience that tends to get interest every time I tell it, and honestly, has made me question my stance on the paranormal ever since. About six years ago, I was a 20-year-old student living in London. My latest flat contract had run out, and I needed a place to live ASAP. I had very little money and felt guilty needing my parents to be a guarantor, so as any broke Londoner would do, I googled the cheapest place possible, somewhere I could move into that day or the next. That's how last minute this was. I was fortunate, or in actual fact, misfortunate, to find a place available to move in that day. Contract signed, I had a place to live. I moved into this detached house with all my stuff the following day. It was a dirty house, but the flat occupants were all 20 to 30 year olds, four of them, and very friendly. The area was quiet, and I felt reasonably comfortable. The house was always damp and cold. It was autumn, so it's not surprising, but it was always an unpleasant atmosphere. The garden was overgrown and creepy. The windows that faced it were scratched, cracked, and looked very dirty. The hallway lights didn't work, so the entire interior of the living room and hallways connecting to the rooms were pitch black at night. The bathroom was just something else. On my first night after speaking to one of my new flatmates, I was told that they have all experienced weird noises especially scratching on the blackened window in the bathroom. I laughed this off as utter nonsense. Probably just a tree brushing it when it gets windy outside, I thought. So after a couple of weeks, I finally started noticing weird occurrences in the building. My room's window faced the driveway, and I liked to keep my curtains closed, just because it was west-facing and I didn't like the sunlight pouring in and blinding me every morning. So I would close the curtains in the morning, head to class, come home, and find the curtains opened more than halfway. This wasn't a one-time occurrence. This happened every day. In fact, I could come home from class, close them again, go out to work or see friends, and come home to open curtains. Yet when I was in the room for hours on end, they never moved. Bit weird, but whatever. My windows were closed and locked, and so was the bedroom door when I wasn't there, and I was the only one with the key, I hope. Above me was an attic. Nobody lived up there. It was a locked storage room. But at night, I could hear what sounded like feet stomping, two people walking around, kids running, and sometimes whispers. Bit freaky, but I thought maybe someone in the house had access to this room and was using it at night. For who knows what. But no one was up there. The room was locked. I would sometimes go up at night and go to the door and try to get a sense of who the hell was in there, but no luck. I never saw anything, but I could always hear these footsteps. One of my flatmates was a very religious man. I could hear him praying at least five times a day. And he was always very friendly and open to talk about his faith, and to listen to me stress out about the awful state of the house. But he himself didn't hear or notice anything weird, other than the unhygienic state of the place. He decided at one point to head home to Algeria for a few months, with his room locked. After six to seven weeks of living there, one of the other occupants moved out, and a room was available there. I told a friend of mine that was as desperate as I had been weeks prior, and he moved in within a few days. Things were great. We worked and went to the same uni, so it was cool hanging out with a friend. I told him the stories. Due to his religious beliefs, he wasn't a believer in ghosts. And like me, he wasn't phased by the stories. But he began to notice oddities too. The same stomping noises upstairs. The scratching windows my curtains opening on their own. 
He felt like he was being watched all the time. He noticed the shed in the garden had a broken panel and could easily imagine someone being inside, sometimes watching us in the kitchen when we made food. Routine pest control opened the shed during a visit one day and found half a dozen dead rats and a pile of hollowed out bees in there. Creepy, but no monsters, right? My friend and I were eating dinner after work in the kitchen one night. I was facing him and the door to the hallway, while Stee was facing myself and the sliding glass door that gave access to the overgrown jungle garden behind. I remember him turning pale, jumping to his feet, and asking me in a very frightened tone, Can you come to my room? I laugh and asked why. He said, Seriously, can you please just come to my fucking room? It's not a joke. Then he bolted to his room like he was running away from something. I finished my sandwich with the last bite, didn't even think to turn around to see what he was so spooked about, got to his room, and he locked the door, sat on its bed, and turned on his PlayStation. After a few minutes, he calmed down, and as he started playing, he told me that he saw something in the garden, a woman in a white dress. She walked across the garden, half a meter from the glass, almost floated past, he said, and then she vanished. He kept repeating, we have to leave, we have to leave, and that the noises were one thing, but that when you see something, everything changes. My room scarred him, and everyone else, the most. Another flatmate told us they thought they'd seen me in my room peering at them on the driveway through a 20 centimeter gap in my curtains one night. They said they saw the shape of a person's head. The only thing was, I wasn't there that night, or on any of those occasions mentioned, and I certainly don't peer at people through my window. After that, things got worse. Two nights after the kitchen incident, I'm woken up at around three or four in the morning. My friend is banging on my door in the pitch blackness of the hallway. I open it, and he comes in shaking with fear saying his bed was vibrating and moving, and that he can't stay here any longer. The next day, he speaks to a friend, he has a place to stay, so he packs up most of his stuff, and he's gone. Within a few days, another person left, a little creeped out, but mostly annoyed with the poor state of the house. At this point, the remaining occupants and I are all looking for alternative living arrangements. Remember the religious guy that went back to Algeria? Well, he's been gone for months now and hasn't returned. The landlord makes a visit once a day, and he has a spare key, so he decides to inspect the room to make sure all is okay. So he opens it up and we go in. His room was amazing. It was warm, cozy, not damp or cold. It was honestly like a different house altogether. It was really nice, and I really don't know how to explain that. Finally, I had decided to move in with my partner, who had avoided this house the entire time I'd lived there, maybe visiting once or twice. She hated it, hated being there, and always felt uncomfortable. On my last night, I again heard weird noises, but this time in the hall. I was aware that I was home alone that night, as the only other flatmate left was on holiday. It was, as it always was, very dark when I opened the door nobody was there. I walked into the living room, and the window at the back that faced the side of the house was making weird scratching noises. I needed to use the bathroom, and as a necessity, I had to carry a flashlight to do the job during these hours. I walked into the bathroom, did my business, and as I'm zipping up my pants, my flashlight briefly shines over the window. For some reason, I looked, almost as if I was expecting to see something. I didn't. I walked out of the room, and I don't know why, but I decided to look at that window once more without the light. I saw the shape of a large man. I went back to my room and locked the door. All night, I heard feet stomping upstairs in the attic. I couldn't sleep, so I moved all my things into a pile in the middle of the room, sat on the bed, and waited for sunrise. I got a taxi first thing in the morning, and finally got the hell out of there. 
And whether I believe in anything paranormal still or not, you couldn't pay me to go back. My name is Jordan. I was a young kid of seven years old when this all started. I have an older sister by one year. I'll call her Jess. We were both being raised by my mother. She began a relationship with her boyfriend that we'll name Derek. We moved into a house in West Bountiful, Utah. The house sat near a horse farm, which sat north from the house, away from the road about 50 yards from the back door. The house had two wagon wheels buried into the ground halfway for decoration, sitting near the street. We had an elderly lady as a neighbor who lived to the east of us. The next house east was my friend Brian's house. The house was kind of old, but still in good shape. Walking into the front door led you into the living room. The stairs to the right led upstairs, where the bathroom was first on the left followed by my sister's room to the right, then my mom's room on the left, and my room on the right at the very end of the hall. Past the living room was a kitchen that, to the left, led to the driveway, and to the right led downstairs to another living room. This was adapted into a place where I had my Nintendo 64 set up on a tiny TV. While going down the stairs, there was a crawl space to the right, next to the furnace. Since I was seven, I can't recall how long we lived in this house before things started becoming strange. But to my mom and sister's recollections, the first oddities we noticed was that deep into the night, the toilet would flush randomly. I never noticed this, since my room was farthest from the bathroom but my sister and mom were both convinced that I was being mischievous and doing it. I do remember them asking me if I really needed to pee last night, but I said that I didn't know what they were talking about as I hadn't left my room. Weeks later, the toilet flushing became a common occurrence at night. I heard it happen as I was walking to the bathroom one night, so I turned around and went back to bed, obviously nervous. The next day, Derek said it had to be pressure in the sewer, causing our toilets to flush. I took his word strongly since I thought he knew all things about plumbing. But the toilet flushing started to become boring, I assume, for after a pause in the activity, the faucets in both the bathroom and the kitchen were both suddenly blasting water out of them. The knobs opened up completely. Derek sprang awake to the sound of rushing faucets and quickly shut them off. After he turned off the kitchen faucet and was walking back upstairs, the toilet flushed as he passed by the bathroom. I slept through this entire ordeal, but my mom said that it pissed him off so much he actually kicked the bathroom door. The faucets joined the toilet in becoming a common plaything at night, and all of us felt pretty uneasy about it. I'm not sure in which order the next parts of the story should go, but all of this happened in the span of about a year, six months into living in that house. My friend Brian came over, and we were playing Smash Bros on my Nintendo 64 in the basement. After several matches, he needed to use the bathroom, so he got up and ran up the stairs. I kept playing. He came running down the stairs. I thought he was excited to keep playing, but he stood there next to me, breathing heavily. His eyes were as wide as dinner plates. He stumbled over his words and asked if there was something wrong with my bathroom. Before I could say anything, he starts frantically explaining that the toilet flushed right before he got to the door, and that as he was done and was leaving, the faucet turned on full power right behind him. I told him that that's happened many times before, but only at night. Brian wanted to go back home after that. He didn't even look back as he walked down the street. I was sad. I was sure that Brian wouldn't want to hang out anymore after the house had scared him. This was, from what I recall, the first time that somebody from outside the house experienced its oddities. I told my mom about it, 
and she said that it was strange it had happened in the daytime. There were other times that my sister and I would stay weekends with our dad, every other weekend usually. On one of these weekends, my mother and Derek were in bed. She can't recall what time at night it was, but out of her sleep, she could hear the soft sobbing of a woman. She laid there half asleep, wondering if she had left the TV on in the living room. But the sound wasn't coming from downstairs. It seemed to be coming from the room they were sleeping in. The sobbing became more pained and louder. Derek bolted awake, thinking that my mom was hurt. But then they both just sat there in silence as the sobbing turned into a cry of unimaginable pain, as if the woman was either being tortured or in pain of losing a child. Derek quickly got dressed, saying that the neighbor lady next door might be hurt and might need help. He ran out the front door and over to the neighbor's house, but by the time he got to her door, there was no screaming or crying. He slowly walked toward the house, and the crying got louder. There was no mistake that it was coming from our house. Derek checked every square inch of the house when he got back, but there was no one in it except for him and my mother. As soon as it had appeared, it stopped. My mom says that that was one of the hardest nights sleep in her entire life. One that I was present for happened about a month after the night of the crying woman. It is, of course, the dead of night, and we're all sleeping in our rooms. Suddenly, my mom and Derek were awoken by a blinding light, as bright as a lighthouse. My mother and Derek sprang up and tried to find the light switch in the house, but as they flipped it on, the light stayed. Derek thought it was a semi-truck shining its brights through their window, but as he opened the window, he realized that their window faced the horse farm. They had no window facing the streets at all. As soon as he spun back around from looking outside, the light died out. I remember the commotion afterward. Derek was running all over the house in a panic. He checked the fuse box, grabbed his tools, and tore apart their light fixture at 3 a.m., trying to find any logical explanation and shouting in frustration the entire time. My mother would stay up late most nights. She loved her horror movies and crime shows, so she'd watch them while we were asleep. It wasn't far from midnight when my mom heard the voices of children giggling. The only light on in the house was the TV. She assumed that my sister and I were trying to scare her so, she pointed at the stairs and said, Both of you, go to bed now. The giggling continued for a little longer, before my mom stood up and marched up the stairs. But no one was there. The giggling, though, was getting louder. She finished climbing the stairs and opened my sister's door, only to find her fast asleep in her bed. She checked into my room and found me the same way. After she went down the stairs again, the giggling finally stopped. My mom claims that afterward, she sat there and thought of the woman crying for a while before this occurrence, and thought that these children giggling had some morbid connection. My mom caught the elderly neighbor one morning in her driveway, and asked if she knew anything about our house. The lady said she lived on that street for half of her life, and never heard or saw anything bad happen inside of the home just families moving in and out over the years. We never looked further into this theory. The time passes and we now refer to our ghostly friends as the kids and the lady. The kids loved to play around in mine and my sister's rooms. They'd open and close our closets, slam my sister's hope chest to startle us, and still loved to play with the toilet at night. Of course, now being eight years old, I had a constant, uneasy feeling in that house. My mother would assure me that our ghosts were a happy family that needed a place to stay, but this didn't settle my fears at all. I had grown accustomed to having multiple light sources in my room, a lava lamp, two plasma balls, and a fiber optic light. All of them were on the headboard of my bed and I needed these on at all times to feel comfortable enough to sleep. When they were on, I never had anything bad happen in that room. 
My mom and Derek understood that I needed them on and never touched them while I slept. But from time to time, I would wake up and find that some, if not all of my lights had been switched off. Not just the power strip they were plugged into, but the little manual clicky knobs on the wires themselves had been turned off. I'd usually wake up late into the night to pitch darkness and scramble out of fear to get all of my lights back up and working. One night, after turning them all back on, I noticed the closet door, which had been closed when I went to sleep. It was wide open, but that was all. The next part is rather hard for me. Even as I tell this story now, I have goosebumps all over. I had a very gruesome dream that I could only describe as a horror that no young boy could ever dream of on his own. I was sitting in a room in the house in dress clothes, and I was crying. Loud bangs to the door of the room, and a hellish scream echoed through the empty room, and I huddled into a corner and screamed. The room went dark with a shadow as the door opened. I couldn't see what was in the doorway, but I kept screaming for whatever it was to stay away. Silence fell. For what seemed like an hour, I sat there in the corner, staring at the blackness of the door. Suddenly, people came walking through the shadows. They were all of my family, from my mom and dad to my sister and even a couple of cousins. I didn't leave the corner to greet them. They all just stood there, staring at me with pale faces and glazed eyes. My sister smiled eerily at me and would take stiff steps toward me. I would scream and she would step back and giggle. My dad walked up to me, towering over me. As he knelt down to my level, his eyes went from glazed and dull to being a void of darkness with small glints of light for pupils. I cowered in fear, turning my head from him. He then grabbed the top of my head and forced me to stare him in the face. Then he said, You have to say your goodbyes or they're going to be lonely in heaven. Jess screamed in a shrieking voice as my dad grabbed me by my ankle and held me upside down. I was equal height to his face now, and I could see all of the faces of my relatives at that moment. They all had the same eyes as my dad, but had gaping and bleeding mouths almost like their jaws had been nearly torn off. They all chanted the word, Heaven, over and over as they carried me into a living room where a bed was set up. In the bed was a corpse. It was my sister. Still held by the ankle, they held me above her corpse. I remember every detail of her face. Her skin was olive green and white. It was cracking in places and her eyes were cold and cloudy and lifeless. I stared at her face in shock and disbelief. One of her eyes moved and stared back at me before she suddenly sprang from the bed and wrapped her arms around me, pulling me into the bed. She screamed and shrieked as she wrapped her rotting fingers around my neck and began to choke me. I screamed with my last breath for somebody to come to my rescue but at the last moment, I saw my sister placing her thumbs over my eyes and pressing in. I felt the pain of my eyes popping, and all I could do was scream. I was suddenly woken by my mother. I was apparently shouting in my sleep and flailing uncontrollably for several minutes before she got me to open my eyes. Not to my surprise, my lights were all off. I could barely see my mom's face as she held my head in her arms. I was in complete shock. I was shaking violently, unable to speak, darting my gaze over every inch of the room, looking for the demons that nearly had me. I struggled to grab my mom's arm and stuttered, asking where Jess was. At that moment, Jess, who had been awoken by the noise I was making, flipped on the light as she walked in. Upon seeing her, I broke into a nervous breakdown. I tried to crawl away from her, still choking on absolute terror and unable to scream. I grunted and wheezed at her, tears pouring down my face like a waterfall. My mom told Jess to go back to bed. 
Jess left the room, and my mom asked me if I wanted to stay the night in her bed. I couldn't answer. I was still in shock. She picked me up out of the bed and took me into her room and put me in the spot next to her. She threw blankets over me and said to try to get some sleep. I laid there, shaking like a leaf, the dream playing on repeat through my head as I trembled. Not even being near my mom made me feel safe at that point. I remember being like that for hours afterward. The exhaustion finally caught up to me, and I fell asleep once again. My mother says that when she looked at me the next morning, she noticed that I had slept through the remainder of the night with my eyes open. I woke up a couple of hours later in a haze. My entire body felt heavy and weak. I made my way downstairs to where my mom and sister were. They asked me what I dreamt about. It all flooded into my head again, and I started crying hysterically. It would be several years later when I finally told them what the dream had been about. My mother called my school and let me stay home that day. She asked if I was hungry, but food was the last thing on my mind. She led me to my room and said I should have a nap since it's daytime and things will be more peaceful. I laid in my bed under the covers and wept. A chill ran through my spine and I stopped crying. Listening carefully, I could hear the whisper of a child. Shh, don't worry, it'll be okay. I laid there frozen. I slowly pulled the blanket from over my eyes, only to witness my closet door slowly closing itself. I stared at it quietly for some time before hopping out of bed and running down to the living room. I didn't tell my mom about the closet or the whisper. I knew she would just blame them on the dream I'd had. So I kept that one a secret for a couple of years. My mother believes me now, though now that I've told her everything while we were sharing our experiences. Weeks later, my Aunt Dana stayed with us for a week. It was a weekend where we were going to my dad's house. My mom and aunt were alone in the house while Derek was at work. My mom was watching General Hospital and my aunt was using the shower. My aunt came running down the stairs out of nowhere, pale as a ghost. She asked my mom if she had walked into the bathroom a moment ago. My mom said no, of course not. My aunt described looking through the foggy shower door and seeing a woman with blonde hair in the bathroom staring at the mirror. My mother has brown hair. She then turned and walked out without making a sound or speaking a word. My aunt stared back up at the bathroom and said, There's something very wrong with this house. She's not the only one who's ever said those words. I got my friend Brian to stay the night at my house with the promise of late night gaming. He remembers the incident from before and asked how it was living in a haunted house. I said it's not all that bad, jokingly, of course. I didn't tell Brian about any of my personal stories in fear that he might end our friendship over it. The night hit about 11 p.m. and we switched from games to cartoons. We both fell asleep with the glow of my tiny TV upon us. Everything was fine, until I was shaken awake by Brian. He was hysterical. He grabbed me and pulled me close and said, I hear them. They giggle at me when I'm sleeping. There's something wrong with this house. I want to go home. Please let me go home. His scream woke up my mom, and she ran down the stairs to find Brian hyperventilating. She grabbed all of his belongings and walked him out of the house after he calmed down and down the street to his own house. She came back and said that Brian's dad didn't want his son to come over anymore just to get scared to death. I don't really blame him. He still came over sometimes, but he never stayed the night again, and he especially avoided the basement from that time on. There were a couple more parts to the story, but they played out in similar fashion to most of the other activity. My mom's relationship with Derek came to an end, and we were packing up stuff to move to a different city. After all of our belongings were removed, we walked slowly through parts of the house, talking about our stories of creepy happenings. My sister and I, feeling a bit brave due to us leaving and never coming back, had a surge of courage to ask the kids if they liked playing with us. It was dead silent in the house. 
My sister and I giggled to each other and said they probably hated playing with us because we were annoying. My mom says she felt something a bit different, almost like there were a couple of people who were sad to see us go. Derek also felt the same vibe. But after two years in the house in West Bountiful, we left. My mom and I still bring up the stories from time to time. We both get goosebumps from the blinding light story, and she's blown away by how terrible my dream was. I recently revisited that dream a month ago, not to my choosing, of course. Played out the exact same as that night when I was eight years old. Only this time I woke up calmly and shook it off. It was after that dream that I decided to write about what I can only describe as a ghost story. It may appear as fiction to many, but to us, it was a living reality. It saddens me that we didn't do more research into the house to see if there was ever a problem or a tragedy there. I don't live far from there currently, but there's a good chance that the house and many others were demolished in a housing project. Either way, I feel it's best left as it is. A creepy story. I'm 26 now, and I have a love of horror movies and creepy places. Maybe my exposure to these terrifying events flipped a couple of adrenaline switches in my head. I still don't have a definite answer as to whether ghosts really do exist, but I can't deny what we went through in the West Bountiful House. Every town has its own creepy stories and urban legends. My small Midwest town had the Salem House. The story was that in the 1800s, a Civil War veteran and his family lived there. One night, he just snapped and killed his entire family before hanging himself in the barn. People who visited always talked about getting cold chills, seeing shadowy figures, having car troubles, the list goes on and on. My friends and I, being big into the paranormal, decided to check it out one night. I knew it was a creepy area of town, but I don't think I could have ever prepared myself for what happened that night. The whole road that is home to the Salem house is pretty creepy. It's in the middle of the country and very dark. About halfway down the road, the whole area becomes surrounded by woods. The night we visited, as soon as we got to the wooded area, I was overcome by fear. I tried to convince my friends to turn around and go back, but they told me that we were already too far along and I couldn't chicken out now. Soon after driving out of the wooded area of the road, we turned onto a long dirt driveway, the driveway to the Salem house. My boyfriend, Kyle, stayed in the car with me while Haley, Mike, and Lily went out to explore the barn. Kyle and I sat in silence for a bit and just watched them head out. Once they disappeared into the barn, I got that overwhelming fear again. This time it came with a sharp pain though, as if somebody was scratching my back very hard. Kyle asked me what was wrong and I told him what was happening. He lifted up the back of my shirt and told me that there was nothing there. Moments later, I hear the loud scream of Haley as she, Lily, and Mike come running back to the car as if they were being chased. We start the car, and just before pulling away, several handprints of different sizes created smudges on the windshield. We stayed silent the entire way home. I finally told them all about how I felt like I was getting scratched, and to my surprise, this time when they checked, my back was covered in scratches. Although this was about three years ago, we never really bring up our experiences at the Salem house, though I have asked several times what spooked my friends so badly. They never would answer me, and thinking about it now, I think that's for the best. When I was around nine, a few of my cousins came to sleep over at my house. Since we couldn't all fit on my bed, 
We decided to sleep on the floor near the door to my bedroom and all share one giant blanket. Sometime during the night, I woke up to somebody tucking in the covers around me. I thought maybe my dad had seen us while on the way to the bathroom and maybe we had kicked off the covers as I was prone to do at the time. I opened my eyes to say something to my dad, and although I could still feel the tucking in of the blankets, there was nobody there. Nobody was tucking us in, yet I could very clearly feel the hands pushing the blanket in around me. I was in the middle of the pack, and I looked to see if any of my cousins were awake or fidgeting, and also to see if they were observing what was going on, but they were all sound asleep. And motionless. My little kid logic told me to close my eyes and whatever it was would never know that I had woken up. So that's what I did. I laid there silent and still for what seemed like 10 minutes or so while I felt the blanket move as invisible hands went down the line and tucked each and every one of us in that night. It wasn't the most exciting brush with the paranormal, but since I don't remember much of my life before I was 10, it's my very first memory of anything weird like that. What's interesting is that my dad believes that there's a spirit too. He even credits it with saving my life. Something shoved him really hard once while he was standing in the yard. It shoved him so hard that he fell over. When he looked back to see who had pushed him, nobody else was in the yard. But that's when he saw me desperately trying to get his attention from the window on the second floor. I was three years old, and I was having my very first asthma attack. If he hadn't looked behind him to see what had shoved him, who knows what would have happened. Whatever it was, it eventually moved on. We lived out of the state for a few years and rented the house to one of my aunts and her family. She also saw this thing regularly while they lived there, and so did my uncle. When we moved back and they got a new place and it started appearing at their new house, it was never seen in mine again. When I was in my teens, my father bought a house in the country. Newer house built in the 70s, I believe. Neighbors weren't too close by except for a house right at the end of the driveway. A little background. The previous owners were a husband and a wife. The house at the end of the driveway was the mother of one of them, I can't remember which. The husband found out that he had cancer. He kept spiraling further and further into depression as the disease progressed. One day, he decided that he was done. And, as the story goes, he set up tarps in the dining room right in front of the patio and the patio door. He shot himself. The wife proceeded to move out and the house was put up for sale. Enter my father. He buys said house. It was quite big, roomy, nice finished basement. My room was upstairs, first bedroom of three down the hallway. It was enjoyable at first. I got to decorate my new room, yay. As a teenager, I had an obscene amount of posters, pictures, and drawings that I did as decorations. I stuck them all to the wall. It didn't take very long for things to start getting weird. Now mind you, at this stage, I had no knowledge of the previous owner or the story. I would wake up like clockwork every night at about 2 a.m. Strange, but I would just roll over and go back to sleep. Then, in the mornings when I would wake up, my posters on one wall, the wall with the closet, would be crooked. As a typical teenager, I would leave them crooked for a few days, and then finally straighten them, retack them, and give up. Then I started to notice that all the posters were tilted to the same exact angle, in the same direction. Definitely weird. So I ended up taping them, all four corners, with some pretty good tape, and still, the posters would fall and end up crooked, the same exact way. Eventually, I just gave up and left them that way. Remember how I said I started waking up every night at 2am? 
Well, it started to freak me out once I realized that it just kept happening. So I would take longer and longer to fall asleep. Then the real fun started. I started hearing footsteps. They would start at the basement stairs. I heard them come up, open the basement door, walk through the kitchen, down the hallway, past my door, turn around at the end of the hallway, and proceed back the way it had come into the basement. The first time I heard this, I figured it was Dad. But no, it wasn't Dad because I could hear him snoring in his room. Then I panicked. In a good old-fashioned way, my blankets went up over my head and I hyperventilated. I seriously thought that at some point my door would open. But it didn't. I didn't die or see any ghostly matter. But man, was I ever freaked out. I didn't sleep much the rest of the night the first time it happened, and it was hard to get much sleep at all after that. The next morning, as soon, and I mean as soon, as my father woke up, I told him what I heard. He laughed and said, okay, well you must have been sleeping and dreamed it. He has zero belief of the paranormal, and here I am, still not having a clue about the history of the house. Okay, okay, maybe I was dreaming. I still woke up most nights, but no footsteps. It's all right, right? Wrong. They sure did come back. At least once or twice a month I would hear those footsteps, and I'd damn near die of a panic attack each time. But knowing that telling my father was futile after the first four to five times I tried, I gave up telling him. Mystery feet never tried to enter my room, so believe me, I was more than happy if it stayed that way. We were there maybe five to six months when my father came inside one day. The lady who lives at the end of the driveway picked blackberries in the backyard, so he was out talking with her. He came in and said, Okay, I have something to tell you. I was like, Okay? Little old lady wanted me to go make pies with her or something like that? But no. He proceeded to tell me about the history of the house. He said that the lady had seen lights come on in the dining room a few times, but it was when nobody was home. She's convinced it's her deceased family member still lingering. I was thinking, yes, he finally accepted that something weird is going on here. But nope. Then he went up and checked the wiring and everything was fine, so he laughed at me and the lady for having really good imaginations. Now, no lights ever went on and off by themselves while I was home but random doors would open and close on their own. Drafts, right? My father thought so too. Me? Not so much. The laundry room was in the basement. I hated it down there. Always got some serious heebie-jeebies and felt like somebody was always watching me. Then it felt like somebody was pushing or nudging me down the stairs while I was walking down them and I really started to dislike it there. Flash forward a year or so, I had a boyfriend after a while who started staying the night. Curious, after a while, my boyfriend said, hey, how come all your posters are crooked? I sighed and said, because no matter what I do, they always end up crooked in the morning, so I just leave them that way. He said, no way. So, me being me, I went out and got the best packing tape I could find. I told him to start helping me tape every single corner of every single picture and to make sure they're straight. I told him to make sure he was satisfied that there's no way they could fall off. We got it done. Our mission was complete. I asked him to make sure to remember that these pictures were straight before we went to bed. He said, yep, they're straight. And when we woke up, they weren't. He damn near shit himself. He couldn't believe it, but alas, teen picture-hating ghosty struck again. So finally realizing that I've got someone who half-ass thinks something weird is going on, I fill him in on everything else that's happened there. He said I absolutely had to wake him up when I heard these footsteps. Well, oddly enough, every time I did hear them, I tried. Oh, how I tried to wake him. But no way was he waking up. No matter what I did, he wouldn't wake. I even bit him once just to see if that would work. Still kept sleeping, like nothing had ever happened. One day, he and I were sitting in the living room. 
We had these big wooden basement doors that were underneath the patio and they opened up to a little garage big enough to park your car in. They shook so hard that we could feel it vibrating the living room floor. It was loud. It sounded like two people at least were banging and shaking these doors. A pheasant even took off flying at the same time because it was scared. We jumped up, obviously thinking that somebody was trying to break into the house. We ran outside to look, but there was no one, and I mean no one there, except two freaked out teenagers and a pheasant that I'm pretty sure had a heart attack. It was a wide open field. There was nobody anywhere. We would have seen them somewhere trying to make their escape. And keep in mind, the shaking was still going on while we were out there, so we would have seen who was doing it. Obviously, we told my dad when he got home, and it was more, ah, you guys are crazy, statements. My dad had this old wooden rocking chair in the corner of the dining room. After a while, this thing started rocking on its own. I told dad. He bought a rug for underneath it and said it was those darn drafts again. Nope. That thing would still rock. But of course, it never did it when my father was around. Not too long after that, my boyfriend and I got an apartment of our own and moved out. But trust me, that's not where the story ends. The boyfriend and I moved out. Eventually, my father got a new girlfriend who moved in. She has two kids. One is my father's and one by another man. They were young at this time, the girl being around five and the boy being about two. After a while, the girlfriend started talking to me and saying that there was something off with the house. She did know the story about the previous owner. Her daughter stayed in my old room. You know, the one with the posters. Also, the one with the closet. Her daughter started talking about an old man named Zabu that lived in the closet. She described him as an old man with a long beard and said that he glowed green. She said that she'd seen him a few times and that she didn't like him or the closet. One time, the boy was sitting on the living room floor, looking up at the ceiling. And just randomly, out of nowhere, he says... I don't want to talk to you right now. Nobody was speaking with him, or even close to him. I'm sure there was more involving them, but I can't remember all of it right now. Weird things kept happening, though. At the time, I'd even asked a paranormal investigation team if they would be interested in looking at the house. Of course, they were all for it, but we first had to get permission from the owner of the house, which would be my dad. When my dad's girlfriend brought it up to him, he declined, saying that there's no such thing as ghosts and he didn't want a bunch of strangers staying in the house. So, regretfully, I had to inform the team of this decision. Flash forward to a few years later. She and my father broke up and she moved out. He got a new job where he was rarely home. I have two children by now, so I decided, you know what, I'll rent the house while he's gone. My boyfriend and I and our two kids moved in. The first thing that happened was later one night. I was in the basement, and the lights were quite dim down there, and I heard something rustling around in one of the two bedrooms. I opened the door, and the light wouldn't come on. Nothing strange, just a blown light bulb. But as I was looking around the room for possible rodents, I looked up at the ceiling, and there was a flashing green and reddish-orange light. Then I realized that they were everywhere. The closest thing I can compare it to is the flashing light you might see on a smoke alarm. There were hundreds of these lights all over the ceiling. So I backed right out and closed the door as quickly as I could, and vacated the basement altogether. Those lights started to randomly appear on the ceiling in the main part of the basement, too. My sister and her boyfriend came to visit. Once again, we were in the basement. We smoked down there instead of upstairs. It was getting late. Her boyfriend went and opened the car bay door from inside the house. He was going to go outside to use the bathroom, 
as it was much easier for him and he didn't want to go upstairs and wake my kids unnecessarily. So as he's heading through the car bay, we hear, what the? He turned around and hightailed it back out of there, slamming the door. Obviously panicked, he then proceeded to tell us that he had just seen a little girl running across the room from one end to the other. We opened up the door and checked things out, but nothing was there. One night after dark, I was in a bedroom upstairs, not my old room. Nobody was staying in that one. In my daughter's room, the one adjacent to my old room, I was putting some laundry away. When out of the blue, my daughter, who was about three or four at the time, pointed at the window. She said, Mom, who's the man standing outside? I looked at the window. She's still pointing and looking at it. Trying my best not to panic, I said, Babe, there's no man out there. I didn't see anything. No man. It was completely dark. There also wasn't a man inside the room, nor in the reflection of the inside of the room on the darkened window. But if she could see it, I sure couldn't. As calmly as I could, with a racing heart and clammy hands, I picked her up and left the laundry. I brought her out to the living room, where I then asked her about the man she saw. She said he was really tall and had a beard. Remember Zabu? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I made sure to have the curtains closed and her bedroom door opened at all times after that. Another day, I was in the living room, playing Guitar Hero, sitting in a chair not too far from the television. It was night and my kids were in bed. So while I was into the game and focused on all the colors and playing, I saw a little girl out of the corner of my eye, standing a few feet away from me. I assumed it was my daughter who had gotten out of bed to use the bathroom. So I then proceeded to talk to her and ask her why she was up. I asked her if she could go back to bed or if she was thirsty or hungry, but I got no replies. My song was over and I could still see this girl out of the corner of my eye. So I looked directly at her and there was nobody there. The daughter I thought I'd been carrying on a one-sided conversation with was still in her bed, completely sound asleep. I was in shock. There was no way. But alas, apparently now we have a Zabu and a little girl hanging around. One morning, it was early. I was in the basement doing laundry. My children's dad at the time was sitting on the couch with our daughter. The couch was in front of a built-in bar area, 70s style. There was fluorescent lighting all over it, but it didn't work. So we had a small table lamp on top of the bar for lighting. The plug was behind the bar area. I had forgotten some laundry upstairs and I ran up to grab it. On my way back down the stairs, I yelled to the kid's father, Watch out, get up! The lamp that was on the bar was literally sliding across the bar and was about to fall off the edge right onto the heads of the two people sitting under it, which happened to be my family. As soon as they got up, it stopped moving and stayed where it was, hovering at the edge of the bar. My father also had an old phone that was screwed into the wall in the basement. It was very old, probably put in when the house was originally built. He just never bothered to take it out. It had a rotary dial, too. For all the young ones, that's a phone where you actually have to turn the dial to the number you want. No touch numbers here. We didn't have a landline hooked up, as seven to eight years ago, cell phones were much more convenient. When we would be upstairs, that phone would randomly start ringing. Of course, it's been years since there was a landline hooked to the house, and it would only ring a couple of times before stopping, and never while anybody was downstairs. We would randomly hear scratching on the carport door, almost like a cat. This would happen when we were downstairs. It was on the inside door heading to the carport, but on the car bay side. And of course, upon investigation, there was never anything there and nothing was ever disturbed. We stayed there maybe six to seven months and moved. I'd had enough. I told my father what had been happening and once again he said I was foolish, that there's no such thing as ghosts. Fine, to each their own. 
he can believe whatever he wants to or not. A few months after I moved out, I got a phone call from my father. He was kind of frantic, which was unusual. He said, I believe you now. I said, what are you talking about? I mean, it's kind of a weird way to start a phone call. He said, about the ghosts. There's, there's something in that house. I said, really? Finally, you believe me. What happened? He said that he was laying on the couch at night. He's the only one living there now, and he said that the cupboard doors one night started opening and slamming shut on their own. Another night, a mug had fallen out of the cupboard on its own. The taps would turn on and off on their own. He swears he saw somebody walking around outside at night, but when he turned the outside lights on and went to investigate, there was never anybody there. As a total non-believer, he shook off everything that has happened over the years as a coincidence or the product of an active imagination, right up until he saw and heard those cupboards with his own eyes and ears. He was quite shaken up. He left again for work, and he did rent the house out to a few different people. He even warned them about the house, and there was only one of the renters out of the two who admitted to him that they too had heard and seen some pretty weird stuff. He never elaborated on what happened with the renters, but after the second one, he put the house up for sale. This was about five years ago, and I've always wondered what has happened in the house since. I also wonder about the stories the current owners could share. I don't know who they are, and I'm not about to drive up and tell them my story and ask them if anything has ever happened to them, no matter how curious I am. Although I have to admit, it's mighty tempting. This isn't about one creepy thing that happened. I didn't physically see an apparition, but promise me that you'll pretend to be in my shoes in each situation. I'm not telling this story to impress anyone. Rather, I just need to get these experiences off my chest. It's happened for years, ever since I can remember. The first thing I remember was me watching TV in the living room, probably in elementary school and I had just finished my bowl of chips. I placed it in the sink and went back to sit on the couch, and it was completely silent. I then heard the bowl tapping against my metal sink, like it was unbalanced, so I went to adjust it. When I got to the kitchen, it stopped, so I went to sit back down, but the noise started again. I shrugged it off and told my mom about it, but she said it was a coincidence. Moving on, I'm in middle school now and I've looked into the paranormal. I had to. I would hear footsteps on the stairs at night, but I chose to believe it was the house settling. It always had a creepy feeling of being watched and I would hear random knocks or bangs. I'm doing my homework in my bed with the door closed. All of a sudden, the doorknob viciously began shaking as if somebody was trying to open a locked door, but it wasn't locked. I jumped out of bed when it stopped and ran to my brother's room, which is right next door to mine, and swung his door open. I accused him of shaking my handle, but he was extremely confused and asked, why would I do something so stupid when I'm doing my homework? Still freaked out, I just went to finish my homework, but I was distracted glancing at the doorknob every so often. Some short points that didn't happen to me. My parents' closet is always closed, but one morning my dad found a small puddle of blood on a pair of new shoes that he never wears. But neither of them found cuts on themselves. My brother just saw the first Paranormal Activity movie, but my mom didn't because she hates that stuff. But a couple of nights later, she walks into his room and stands by his bed just staring at him. He freaks out and tells her to leave, but she stays there for five minutes and then walks back to her room. The next morning, she had no recollection. 
I know how fake this sounds, but trust me, I only wish I was making it up. After that, my mom was home alone and decided to take a shower. In the middle of her shower, the bathroom door flies open and hits the wall. She throws a robe on and runs out, thinking, of course, that there was an intruder. But nobody was found. I'm now a teenager, watching YouTube in my bedroom, when I hear a loud bang outside my door. I think my brother fell in the bathroom, which is next to his room. So I ran out into the hallway to laugh at him. But he's in his room, so I asked if he just fell, to which he replied no. Instead, he said, I thought you fell. We search around for something that has fallen, but to no avail. A couple months later in December, we're going into our attic to get the Christmas decorations. Our attic has all of our boxes lined up along the perimeter. When we peeked up there, there was a box on its side right in the middle. I think it's important to note that our attic is right above the bathroom. Nothing crazy has happened after that except for me and my friend hearing a car start in our garage but no car was running. We just thought we were crazy. But one day after school of senior year, I'm home alone and my boyfriend lives 10 houses down the street. So I planned on walking there soon. I'm sitting on my living room floor with our family dog and cat. I then hear the loudest, most distinct noise I've ever heard. Imagine having a two-story house with a very tall living room and dining room ceiling. I heard someone stomping and running in my room. I'm telling you, I heard it. My cat runs away, my dog jumps up defensive. I ran outside to look on my roof, but nobody was there. I ran around the whole house looking up there, but there was just the roof. I ran back in the house, grabbed my phone and my keys, and then ran to my car. I cried to my boyfriend and his family about it for an hour, but I still don't know if they believe me. At this point, I'm 19 years old, and my parents have divorced. I'm living with my mom in a small apartment with a tiny washer and dryer. My dad left for town on a business trip, so I asked if I could wash my clothes at his house and he agreed. I'm terrified of being there alone, so I brought my boyfriend and his older friend, Devante. Devante is 24. I told them the things that have happened and Devante says it's all in my head. I laughed and I said, I hope something paranormal happens to you tonight so you'll believe me. The dryer says it'll take 74 minutes, so my boyfriend and I go to play a board game, and since it's 10 p.m., Devante wants to take a nap. I told him he can go up to my brother's old room since my brother has moved out and nobody uses it, so he does. Ten minutes later, we hear a bang, and we thought he dropped his phone between the bed and the wall. The bed is pressed against the wall, connected to the hallway, so it makes sense that it would be so loud. About ten more minutes go by, and we hear Devante saying something upstairs, but we figured he was talking on the phone. Then he gets louder. My boyfriend and I look at each other, confused. Devante yells, Holly, come get your man. Now, more confused, I tell my boyfriend Anthony to run up there and see what's wrong. When he gets to the room, Devante asks, Wait, what? He's staring at him, wide-eyed. Devante says, No, did you just run up those stairs? Devante got up and exited the room and ran down to where I was waiting. He said, Tell me you didn't just run up there when I called you. Anthony and I were super confused, and Devante began freaking out and pacing. He said he heard somebody whispering, Get out, get out, get out. And it slowly got louder until they were yelling at him to get out. He thought my boyfriend was just messing with him. That's why we heard Devante talking. He was saying things like, Anthony, F off. And Anthony, stop it, I'm trying to sleep. Devante was so freaked out that we left that night, not finishing the laundry. We had to pick it up the next day. 
I laugh at this because it's such a stereotypical thing to have a ghost say get out in movies and on YouTube videos, but I've never seen him teary-eyed and so genuinely terrified as he was that night. That's the end of it all, I think. My boyfriend and I and my mom moved halfway across the country for other reasons. I think all of my paranormal struggles are over. Well, maybe. In our new house, a bang was heard in the sunroom, which freaked both of our dogs out. The puppy wouldn't even re-enter the room. Just tonight, we got Chipotle and ate in our bedroom. And that's when I heard the foil with the tortillas in it being dragged on my nightstand table. Yes, the fans were going, but not strong enough to pull the heavy tortilla and foil with it. I'm spooked out and decided to write down all of my experiences to make myself feel better. Again, it's not a one-time story, and it's probably not as entertaining as other ghostly things that you'll read here. But I needed this off my chest. If any of you have experienced these things, please let me know. It would make me feel so much better to know that I'm not alone. When I was a teenager, my family moved into a new house in Ohio. As soon as we moved in, my mother started saying that she felt that the house was haunted, that she could sense a presence there. She said that she heard someone call her name, and that she felt somebody put a hand on her shoulder. One time, she woke up with someone holding her feet down, and she couldn't shake whatever it was and started screaming. She also heard muffled voices. We didn't believe her at all until both my sister and I started experiencing strange things of our own. My first experience was when I was reading a book in my bedroom at 3 a.m. I'm a night owl, and it wasn't that unusual. Everyone should have been asleep, but suddenly I heard very heavy footsteps right outside of my bedroom door. They were too heavy to be my mom's or my sister's, so I just assumed that my dad was walking around checking up on us, I sprinted to the door, and when I opened it, I was shocked to discover that the hallway was dark and nobody was up. Our attic had several feet of fluffy insulation covering the entire area. There was nothing stored there, and at times, you could hear steps coming from the attic, running up to the side of the house with the driveway when somebody was pulling up to the house, as if they were trying to see who had arrived. It was almost cool in the daytime, but at night, it was terrifying. There was something always clicking loudly under my bed and in the closet at night. I always tried to convince myself that it was the air vents. However, all of the air vents were on the other side of the bedroom, and they never made clicking noises. I sometimes saw an outline of a person standing next to my bed, I would only ever see this if my head was covered with a sheet. When I pulled the sheet off, nobody was there. I heard sighs, as if somebody was standing right behind me. And one time, I heard a whisper say, Come play. I prayed a lot, and that usually helped. I'd also ask them to quiet down, and that seemed to help as well. One time, my boyfriend and I were doing homework in the basement. We heard the garage door open and the voices of my parents in the kitchen. We ran up to say hi, just to discover an empty house. Another time, my boyfriend stayed overnight in our house. He slept in the living room. In the morning, he asked if we were playing a joke on him last night, as he kept hearing a ball bounce on the stairwell leading up to the bedrooms on the second floor and in the kitchen but every time he got up to see what was going on, nobody was there. I don't think we even owned a ball, and we certainly didn't play with one in the house. One time, my mom heard a baby cry outside of our house at night. We lived in a safe and perfectly normal suburb, and there was no reason that a baby would be in our backyard. One day, a lid flew off of a cooking pot and got halfway embedded into the kitchen ceiling. 
It wasn't a pressure cooker. It was just a regular lid and a pot. Another time, we left for a family vacation and my boyfriend was asked to take our paper in. He said he was in the house and decided to make my bed for me. We had left at some ungodly hour of 5 a.m. or something, and I had never gotten around to it. He said that at first he got a juice and felt like somebody was breathing down his neck. He kept turning around to find that nobody was there. Then he walked upstairs and while he was making my bed, he felt something grab his legs from under the bed. He got freaked out and ran out. He refused to enter the house again and just diligently hid the papers behind a flower pot outside until we returned. My sister woke up one night to a black caped figure standing silently in her room. She said there was also a bright orb near her window. Her windows faced the backyard and trees and being on the second floor, there was no possible source of light from cars or anything else. She covered her head with the blanket, and when she looked out, the figure and the orb were still there. She went back under the blanket, and after some time, they were finally gone. Also, our cat disappeared without a trace one day. I'm not sure if it was related, but it seemed worth mentioning. My dad was one person who never experienced anything. No voices, no steps. No TV and radios blasting out on their own. He is hard of hearing, so that could have been a factor. But one thing he can't explain is waking up at 4 a.m. next to a lit tea light candle that he swears burnt out at midnight. The candle was right in front of his face, and he's extremely sensitive to light, to the point where he covers any electronic lights with napkins as they disturb his sleep, even the numbers on the clock. It eventually got so bad that I refused to sleep in my own bedroom. As I could feel someone move around the room at night, I slept in my sister's room instead. My dad decided to call a medium, and the guy said that there were five spirits in the house. A boy, an old lady, a couple, and a very angry man. He gave us a giant candle with a cross and said to burn it in the bedroom of the youngest child which now was also my bedroom, where I slept in a sofa chair. The candle was in a big glass jar and was hefty. All night it kept shaking, and the glass kept making clicking noises against the counter it stood on. We were also to tell the spirits that this was our house now and that they needed to go to the light. Things improved after the visit and shortly after, I moved out to attend college, where I slept for years with the lights on although I never experienced any paranormal activity in my apartment there. After college, I never stayed in the house for longer than a few days, always sleeping with the lights on, as the creepy feeling remained, although nothing notable happened anymore. Eventually, my parents sold the house, and I don't know what happened after that. I grew up in southern Idaho, and I moved to Eugene, Oregon around age 20. We moved into our newly built home in the countryside at the start of the millennium, literally months after my grandma on my mom's side, who I call Nana. I was about eight or nine at the time, and I lived there until I was 17 when my dad kicked me out of the house. After that, I went and lived with my grandparents about five miles away whose house was also haunted. They too had built their own home. To put things into perspective for some things that happened, our house was set five miles from any town in the middle of fields with only a few houses about a half mile away. One of those houses was my cousin's. My uncle had built his family's house there and my dad was really close to him, part of why we built there. It too had some weird things that happened that my cousins and I experienced. The first thing that was odd happened when we were moving our stuff from my dad's parents, the grandparents that I later lived with, into our new home. We lived in their basement, but it was a one-story house. I'm obsessed with Star Wars and had little ships that I played with as a kid. My favorite one was a TIE fighter. 
I was playing with it one day while the movers and my parents packed and moved things. At one point, I set it on a chair in my parents' room while I was alone downstairs. I ran out of the room, turned the corner, ran up the stairs, realized that I had left it on the chair, and immediately ran back. When I got there, it was gone. I had only been gone about ten seconds, if that, and no one had gone by me at any point. It was a small, narrow basement, so I would have had to have passed anybody who went to move it. I looked everywhere, and even emptied the entire room, but I never found it. The setting of our house was a two-story, three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath with an unfinished basement. My room sat directly above the garage, my parents' room above the living room, and the house was surrounded by one-and-a-half acres of lawn and about three acres of woods on one side, with fields on the other. My cousin's house sat between the fields and the forest, with a path leading between our houses. Growing up in our new home, we had some weird things happen every now and then that we all experienced at one point or another. Lights would turn on by themselves. We had security cameras and caught that several times. All of us would often hear the garage door open, a car drive in, and the garage door close. Then we would hear the door to the house open and close often when somebody was gone. Sometimes only one of us would hear that. Other times, two of us in different rooms would hear it. My parents were very rarely home, so it was always pretty much impossible that somebody was in the garage. I like to joke that I was an only child raised by five cats. My dad would often hear loud music with a strong bass line when home alone. He would come out of the room thinking it was me playing music, and sometimes the stereo would be playing music, and other times it wouldn't but every time, he was home alone. When I was around 12 or 13, I used to spend the night in our guest bedroom that we had set up as an exercise room for fun and watch movies all night. That ended one night when I woke up sometime in the night to the TV turning off and on rapidly, even though it didn't have a remote. I immediately ran to my parents' bedroom and I barely slept that night. Later that year, I went to a summer camp at a martial arts studio with just a few friends. We played hide and seek, but got freaked out after two different TVs started rapidly turning on and off on their own, even while we held the remote to both of them with the batteries taken out. Since our basement was unfinished, we stored things down there. My dad is a slight bit of a hoarder and had kept a lot of his art from art school downstairs. I admittedly went through boxes downstairs often, still looking for that Star Wars ship for years, but I never did find it. One time, my mom and I went to visit her dad in California. When we came back, my dad scolded me for taking all of his art out downstairs. I told him that I hadn't touched his art at all and actually didn't know that he had art down there, which was true at the time, as it was really buried under a lot of stuff. He said he'd gone down one night to find a lot of his paintings, drawings, and even a sculpture laying on top of boxes around one of the unfinished rooms, as though somebody had been looking at them. Even creepier was that while one sculpture was laying on boxes, another, mind you these were heavy plaster sculptures, was smashed in two on the floor. The downstairs always had a weird vibe, and after that, if you stood at the top of the stairs, it felt like you were being watched from the bottom. We had a few weird things that would happen outside our house, too. Since we had a massive lawn, we had a big sprinkler system that could run off the canal for the farms or off of our well water. One summer, our pump was sabotaged at the standpipe by the canal. At the time, we thought it was a farm's kids playing a prank, and we just switched over to well water. A few nights later, though, we went outside for some reason and we heard splashing water, almost like a geyser, coming from out of the dark. My dad went to investigate and found the test tap for our well full open, which was hard to do. We got it shut off, but for some reason our well pump seemed to be still running, so we needed to shut it off via a valve box in the ground. When we opened it, it was completely filled with dirt, and we had to dig it out. We asked around, but never figured out what happened. 
My cousin's house, like I said, was about a half a mile away, and I would often play with them. They said that they would hear screaming from their basement on occasion, and often heard footsteps coming up from the basement when no one was down there. On a couple of occasions, I would be at their house and see what looked exactly like a red laser pointer on the wall, as though someone far away was pointing it through the window, but then it would go up the stairs which was far above the window. Later, they moved out of the state, and it sat empty for a number of years. I would still wander around their house on occasion, and several times I saw this laser pointer. Mind you, like I said, we were out in the middle of fields and forest, with the next closest house at least a mile away. At night, lights in their house would be on randomly, and then off the next day or night. Growing up, we'd often visit my grandpa in Eugene, Oregon, he built his house as well, but it was a massive house that looked and smelled old. We'd stay on the second story in the bedrooms my mom, her sister, and brothers used to live in. I stayed in a small bedroom that had a walk-in closet with its own locking door. Weird, too, because it was locked on the bedroom side, and even had a latch for a padlock in addition. On occasion, I would wake up to find the door open and then go back to sleep and then it would be closed in the morning. Often I had nightmares in that room and would run to sleep in my parents' room. That stopped though because I would then have very vivid night terrors about their closet and wake up screaming. After that I just put up with the weird walk-in closet in the other bedroom. I'm pretty sure my grandpa's house was haunted because my grandma was an avid antique collector for the entire time she was alive. A lot of stuff gave off weird vibes. My dad says that he often felt a cat jump into the bed, even after the cat died in that house. Lots of people have heard footsteps and felt cold spots throughout the house, and sometimes you can hear whispering somewhere in the house but never pinpoint where. The weirdest thing that ever happened to me, though, was right before my dad kicked me out of the house. Keep in mind, I get really dehydrated super easily, and I can easily drink at least a gallon of water a day. It's always been that way too, I don't know why. One night I had a dream that was actually very pleasant. At one point though, I became extremely thirsty in the dream. I kept looking for something to drink but I couldn't find anything. Then this really kind, beautiful lady showed up and offered me some Skittles. I know that sounds really dumb, but I really liked Skittles at the time. I started eating them, thinking that it somehow might quench my thirst but I was still just so thirsty. Seeing this, the lady seemed concerned, so she kept giving me Skittles, and I would take them and eat them while just standing there smiling. She would give me more. This went on for a bit, but then I realized my hand was hitting something in real life, which started to wake me up. I woke up with my hand hitting the wall because it was reaching off to the side of the bed for the Skittles and hitting the wall instead. When I realized this, I looked up involuntarily, and standing there, smiling down at me, with a white glow, was the same lady. I just sat there for a moment, shocked, and then I bolted out of the room, ran downstairs, and drank some orange juice, and when I came back, she was gone. Over the years, I have felt bad for running out of the room, since it seems like she genuinely wanted to help, and she didn't seem malevolent at all. She looked to be maybe in her late 30s or 40s. I never saw her again, either. There were lots of little things, like stuff moving around and hearing it move at night. I would think it was my cats, but then I would find all of them asleep downstairs. Lights we thought we'd turned off when we left the house would be on once again when we returned, and doors would be opened that we thought we had closed. One cat that I truly considered mine and was close to had some strange occurrences around my parents. He would constantly try to get into my parents' bedroom where one of our cats took up permanent residence the entirety of her life. All of our doors were round knobs and my parents would lock their door at night. My dad has OCD and checks all of the doors and windows every night, so there's no way that a door isn't locked after he checks it. He'd often come back multiple times too and find them unlocked again even when my mom and I were both out of town. Anyway, my dad would often wake up in the middle of the night to see the door open, 
and my cat standing there as though he'd opened the locked, round knob door handle. It happened more than once, too. I never figured that out. My cat would also turn on faucets and flush toilets randomly. He was really smart. My cat died earlier this year, at the old age of about 20. On the night he died, I was asleep and felt a cat jump into my bed. I'm now living in Southern California, no pets, just a girlfriend that lives with me, and immediately come and cuddle up familiarly next to me. I even felt the warmth and was very happy. After a bit, it faded away and I came to my senses. I called my dad and said, he didn't die, did he? My dad said he had died just a few hours earlier. It hasn't just been houses that I've had stuff happen in either. On two separate occasions in two different apartments in two different states, I've been asleep and had an experience that I can only describe as attempted demonic possession. I grew up in an overly religious family, Mormons to be specific, but was never welcomed there. And I was often bullied for being the weird kid for, of all things, liking Star Wars and video games. Welcome to Farmtown USA, I guess. Around age 14, though, I stopped going to church, really, and became a staunch atheist. Around age 19 after college, I was still living in southern Idaho in my own apartment. One night, I woke up sweating, unable to get my body to move, but with my limbs shaking and flailing rapidly, almost inhumanly. It was extremely dark, and I couldn't open my eyes, but a slight slit before they'd close really tightly again. While all of this was happening, all hope and happiness seemed to drain, and I felt like I just wanted to die. Even being an atheist, I started to pray like when I was a kid. Within moments of starting to pray, everything went back to normal, and I was able to open my eyes. I let out a gasp like I hadn't breathed for minutes, and was sweating profusely. I got up and watched funny Netflix shows for the rest of the night. I experienced the same thing, but even more forcefully again years later. But this time in Eugene, Oregon. Once again I started praying, and again it receded after a few minutes. It's been five years since then, and it was shortly after that that my current girlfriend moved in with me. The last one I remember was at a work friend's house when I was 18. I'd gone over to fix her computer and was removing some viruses when I noticed that she was just standing at the door to her garage, staring intently at the door at the back of her garage. I asked her what she was looking at, and she told me that sometimes she gets weirded out by the door at the back of the garage. I went to look, and the moment I saw it, I felt like my spine had a current of electricity running down it. Having grown up with weird stuff in my house, I decided to investigate. The closer I got, the more intense the feeling. Standing in the frame of the door, it felt surreal. Almost like I was standing in some sort of otherworldly portal. Then, the moment I stepped onto the other side of the door frame, everything returned to normal and felt boring. I looked back through at my friend watching me, feeling kind of bored like nothing had really happened. The moment I stepped back through, though, the feeling of electricity flowing through me returned until I left the garage. These are all the experiences I can remember. I don't know if all of these houses are haunted, or my family's haunted, or I'm haunted. But what I do know, or at least what I think is interesting, is that everybody in my family built their own homes, yet they were all haunted. Maybe one of those things, or several of those things, followed me. I don't know, but these are my experiences. I have so many spooky things that have happened to my family and I that it's not even funny. But by this thing, I was the most creeped out. I used to live in a haunted house for two years. I moved to another city for school and moved in with my best friend as a roommate. The whole apartment building was built in the 1800s, 
And as far as I know, we lived in the servant side of the apartment building. That also kind of explains why there were always things happening there. Especially if we left a mess in the apartment. I really can't even detail all of the things. You would need a whole book for that, but I'll mention a few things that happened here. One thing that happened quite early on living there was that both of our tweezers went missing. We bought new ones the next day, and they're absolutely nowhere to be found. Of course, we argued about this, blaming each other for the missing tweezers, but went on to buy one pair to share, and the next day they were also gone. A few days went by and we were out shopping for a few hours. When we got home, the freaking five pairs of tweezers that by now we had bought and lost were lined up on our kitchen table, right down the middle of it. We slept in the same bed that night, we were so scared. My cat used to hate that place. He became very stressed out and had a lot of hair loss issues, which never happened before or after moving in or out of there. He would also wake up from a deep sleep to hiss at the same spot, many times. That spot was in a hallway in front of every door, and it was sometimes cold there. My roommate's clock would drop from the sofa, or from the table right in front of us, or completely turn around. We both saw that happen. One time, we were at the line to a bar, and my roommate noticed that she'd left her phone at home. We lived in the middle of the center of the city, so she went to grab it. She came back really quickly and was white as a sheet. She had an automatic lock on her phone, so that after, like, two minutes of nobody touching it, it would lock up. At that point, we'd been gone for about 15 to 20 minutes, and you would also need a password to enter her phone. She went home, and in the dark living room, her phone was sitting there, unlocked. Needless to say, we also shared the bed that night as well. We had numerous accounts of waking up at night to what sounded like somebody washing dishes, or walking upstairs. We also heard sawing upstairs, and we lived on the top floor. Above us was only the attic. There were many things, and I really wish I'd written them all down, but I was just trying to live there while I was scared as hell. I'm very sensitive to things like this, and I never slept there alone. Not even one night. I was too scared. I had sleep paralysis there so many times. And, interestingly, that never happened before I moved in or after I moved out. I'm sure that we were never there alone. And for everyone wondering, no one had a key to the apartment except my roommate and I. We only had one neighbor, a young couple who lived next door, and there were only business spaces in the apartments below. To this day, we don't have any explanation for the things that happened there. This happened a few years ago. I still remember it pretty clearly, because it's so strange, and I never really found an answer to what it was. It was during a visit to my grandmother in a small village in Mexico. To give some context, my parents and I visited for about a week, and during that week, my mother's cousin also passed. He was in a car crash, which I'll use the term loosely, the local government was deeply involved. Months later, it turned out that he was actually murdered by the local cartel there. That really is a whole other story in and of itself, but I decided to mention it because it did happen the same week that we were visiting. As you can probably tell overall, that entire week was tragic, and also extremely odd. Some background. It happened about a night before we got the news about the passing. My uncle lives on the same plot of land that my grandmother does, and he owns a farm of chickens and roosters. My grandma's sister, the mother of the guy who passed, is technically their next-door neighbor. They own a plot of land right next to my grandmother's. My grandmother's plot of land is actually adjacent to the local elementary school there. So her house isn't in the middle of nowhere, However, she does have a good-sized plot of land that's surrounded by concrete walls for protection. The streets around her land only really get foot traffic when school is in session. 
Given the climate at the time, any kind of foot traffic stops by sunset. The village itself is pretty poor, and everyone is familiar with each other there. They have a few rich, but no middle class. Most houses are about equivalent to shacks. My grandmother owns a concrete house that is decently sized, but otherwise plain. It was during the summer when my parents and I visited. I was on summer break, and so were the schools there. My parents and I were the only people there visiting my grandmother at the time. Every night, time is taken to make sure that all the doors are completely locked before heading to bed. There are three doors that lead to the outside. All are made of metal, with also a mesh frame door to keep the bugs out. That night, I distinctly remember asking my mom to help me lock the front door. It's a heavy metal door with a secured lock that I was having difficulties closing. We also checked to make sure the other doors were secured and locked. I'm going to mention the layout of my grandmother's house briefly since it is somewhat important. The first room you enter, which is the door I was having a hard time closing, is basically a room with a bunch of beds. To the right is what is referred to as the middle room, which is just another bedroom. It connects the first room to my grandmother's room. You can look into the middle room and also see the first room when both doors are left open. These two doors usually are left open because they're heavy and they scrape against the concrete floor very loudly. Before heading to bed, I plugged my phone in the middle room to charge, which is where my dad was going to sleep. My mom and I were sleeping in the same room with my grandmother. My mom and I shared a bed that was right next to the door that leads to that middle room. Right before falling asleep, I could see into the first room because the two doors were left open, like always. I had no recollection of any nightmares or dreams. I basically slept in pitch black until I woke up at an unknown time, completely terrified. My eyes basically shot open and I had this indescribable sense of fear. The first thing that I noticed was that the door next to me was completely shut. I didn't want to move, even in the slightest. I didn't really know what to think. I felt too scared to even close my eyes. I just laid there, completely still, for an unknown amount of time. I came to the conclusion that I would rather wait for the sun to come up than to close my eyes again. I was that scared. Eventually, I heard the chickens starting to make noise, so I figured the sun was going to come up in the next couple of hours or so. However, I noticed that the chickens were actually going crazy. It almost sounded as if they were afraid of something. This deepened my fear, but I was still too afraid to move. At this point, I was wondering why it hadn't woken up my mother or my grandmother, who were both extremely light sleepers. I was the heaviest sleeper in the family, yet the chickens weren't waking either of them up. Eventually, they all settled down, and there was no sign of any sunlight. I occupied my time just listening to the air conditioner in the middle room. It's pretty old, the kind that you have to use a hose to water down. It makes a continuous noise, and then occasionally sputters, but its noises are almost a routine, so they're somewhat comforting. I could also hear the bed in the middle room creaking around, which I figured was my dad moving around in his bed. Again, I couldn't see into the middle room. I found it odd that the door was closed. I'm a heavy sleeper, so I figured that there was a possibility that I remained asleep when somebody closed them. I remained still for who knows how long. But then I heard a noise that I had never heard before. It was extremely loud and it came from the middle room. The volume was just as loud as a large bird, but didn't sound anything like a bird. I was petrified and had no idea why it didn't wake anybody up. Again, I can't even really describe the noise. It's like nothing I've ever heard before or since. I still laid there, completely still, long enough to listen to this noise over and over. I wanted to think that it was the air conditioner, until that noise happened at the same time as this other one, and I knew it couldn't be. I wanted to think it was the creaking of the bed, but eventually those noises happened at the same time too. 
I didn't find it odd until later exactly how much the bed was creaking. Nobody moves around that much in their sleep. At this point, I felt like I was just going crazy. I still laid completely still, just stuck, listening to this noise. Eventually, a second noise started to emerge. It sounded about the same as the first noise. However, it was distinguishable, like when two people speak. It was as if they were conversing back and forth. I started to move my arm against my mom while whispering, Mom! Mom! Over and over, trying to wake her up. Like I said before, she's an extremely light sleeper, but it looked like she was in a deep sleep. It got to the point that I was basically shaking her and moving her around. Finally, her eyes shot open, and in that moment, she actually heard the last noise that came from the middle room. She looked petrified, looked at me, and the first thing she said was, That noise isn't from this world. After that, the noises completely stopped. My mom got up and tried to open the door leading to the middle room as slowly as possible, but it still made a lot of noise. The door opening woke my grandmother up. When we got into the middle room, there was nothing in there, and my dad was still fast asleep. I checked the time on my phone, and it was around 3 a.m. Apparently, both doors in the middle room were completely shut. When we started checking around the house, we noticed that all the doors were left open. My grandmother said she opened them during the night, which explains that. It was extremely odd that she would do something like that, to say the least, but she's old and can sometimes be unreasonable. We looked around and checked out the outside, but aside from the doors, nothing was out of place. All we could really do was close them again and go back to bed. The next morning, I woke up to my mom talking about the event to my uncle and some other family friends who came over to have breakfast. She concluded on her own that it was a brujera, or witch. I don't really know what it was. I only ever bring it up when a close friend talks about odd occurrences or aliens. There have been a few more unexplained events, but this one was the last and strangest thing to happen to me. And otherwise, my life has been pretty normal. At 16, I was responsible for getting my seven-year-old sister on the bus for school. I always had to get her dressed, feed her, and tie her hair up in a ponytail. One morning, I was sick, but I got her up as usual and got her off to school. I was super nauseated and laid on the couch with a trash can next to me. The TV was playing some cartoon on Disney, and I had my arm covering my eyes as I laid there. I was dozing off as I heard my sister come into the living room and say, Sissy, will you tie my hair up? Not really thinking about it, my eyes still covered. I held out my hand, waiting for her to place her hair tie in my palm. Whatever this thing actually was, must have realized that it couldn't give me what I was asking for. And right around that time, I realized that I had already gotten my sister up and on the bus that morning. So whatever was standing next to me, wasn't my sister at all. As I sat up, spooked as hell, the thing ran off. I could hear its footsteps running through the kitchen and down the hallway. I didn't see anything, no apparition, just sounds. I walked to my grandmother's house about a block away, and shortly after that I moved in with her because my mother and I couldn't get along. Weird things like that happened all the time on that property. What I didn't expect was for it to follow me to my grandmother's. Two weeks after moving in, I was in the room with the door cracked. I was home alone, and it was late. My brother, who was 15 at the time, was always at the neighbor's house and would stop in to shower, eat, and sleep. I heard him come in, go into his room, and fiddle around. I could hear him talking, like he was on the phone with someone. I called for him, and he didn't respond so I assumed he was just pranking me. 
I got up and left my room, and his bedroom door across the hall was closed and locked. I stuck my thumbnail into the keyhole and popped it open, planning to scare him. When I opened the door, his lights were off. His room was dark, and it was empty. I flipped the light on and started investigating. I opened the closet, looked under his desk, and assumed that he'd gone out the window and was going to come back in and scare me or something. When I checked the window, it was bolted down, something my grandmother had done to keep him from sneaking out. I was perplexed, and then spooked. I left his room to go check the rest of the house, and as I was walking down the hallway and into the living room, I heard someone running hard behind me. As I turned around, this nothing of a presence ran right through me and took my breath away. I fell to the floor, feeling like I'd just gotten socked in the gut. When I came to, I ran next door to find my brother passed out on the couch with his friends. It was an absolutely terrifying experience, and one that I will always remember. I don't know what that thing was, but it mimicked my siblings perfectly. Their voices, their footsteps, their actions, everything. My wife and I have been house shopping for several months now, so it's become a normal weekend tradition for us to meet up with our realtor and walk through houses. This past Saturday, a place popped up that was in a nice area and for a decent price, so we decided to see it the following day. We drove out to this place and met up with our realtor at about 10 a.m. on Sunday. We started our walk through, and as soon as we walked in, it was obvious that the place had been inhabited by somebody very elderly. Not only were there dated wallpapers and strange color choices, but there was also a stair chair, those powered chairs on a track, leading to the basement. We walked through the kitchen and bedrooms, and everything seemed pretty nice. Then we came to a room that appeared to be an old craft room, with built-in shelving and a desk. Once we'd seen all of the first floor, we decided to check out the basement. It's important to know that the lights in the basement did not turn on. I think there may have been some breakers flipped, because some other room lights didn't work either. The basement layout is such that once you descend the stairs, you must either go left or right. Left leads into an older, finished portion of the basement, and right leads to an unfinished utility area. The realtor, my wife, and I all go to the right initially. I'm checking out the water softener system and the shelving and storage when my wife decides to go check out the finished portion. After a second, I hear her commenting about how she just could not go into that room. I chuckled to myself, assuming she was just being cheeky because it was a dark old room. The realtor decided she would go check it out, but immediately turned around and made a similar comment. I was amused because I just assumed they were playing off of each other's fears and getting freaked out because it was a dark, creepy room. Armed with my phone flashlight turned up as bright as it would go, I decided that I would check out the room since they didn't want to go in. I walked in confidently, but only made it about a couple of steps before being frozen in my tracks by paralyzing anxiety. I felt chilled to the core and I physically tensed up and recoiled at the sensations I was feeling. I felt no apprehensions about going into this room prior to stepping in. Although my wife and the realtor had felt uncomfortable going in, I honestly had no reservations. I simply wanted to see the space. But in an instant, I knew that I was not welcome in that room. I had stepped into a place occupied by someone or something else and it did not want me there. I looked left and right into the darkness, a darkness that my phone light could not seem to penetrate save for the small window at the far end of the room, gently glowing from the overcast day outside. It seemed that no light could get into this room. I started to feel sick and decided to get out of there, quickly. I stepped back out of the room to the base of the stairs and suggested that we all head back up. 
As we walked outside to the backyard, we all felt the need to discuss what had just happened to us. My wife divulged that she actually felt a physical force push on her shoulders as she tried to walk in, as though keeping her out. As in, she literally felt something push her as she tried to enter, which is why she made the comment about not being able to go in. The realtor seemed to have a more similar experience to mine, with extreme anxiety and a feeling of not being welcomed. We walked the lot and headed back up to the house to close the shades and turn off the lights and all those things. As my wife walked up the stairs, our realtor noticed that she had a piece of yellow lace hanging off of her sweater. Normally, this wouldn't be alarming and admittedly, it's very likely just a result of static cling. But given the experience we had had, it just seemed more sinister. We went back into the house and our realtor grabbed the piece of lace and left it in the old craft room. We didn't want to take anything from that house home with us. We all left the house, locked up, and talked a bit more about it in the driveway. Later that night as I laid down for bed, I was in that space between sleeping and waking, and I had a brief dream. I was back in that house, but at night. I stood at the top of those stairs and looked down them when the electric stair chair started to descend by itself. I felt as though I was being baited back into the basement. I woke up pretty quickly, and thankfully I didn't dream about it again. I'm obviously open to the paranormal, but am generally a skeptic. I believe that most things have a reasonable explanation, and this may well have one too. But after reflecting on it for a couple of days, I'll suspend my reasoning and just talk about what I feel. I feel like there were actually two entities in that house, an old man and an old woman. I assume the former residents. The upper floor was her space, and she made it feel welcoming and light. I think she's the reason for the yellow lace on my wife's sweater. I think the basement room was his domain, and he did not appreciate the unannounced company. Not that he meant any harm, but more of a get-out-of-my-house type of reaction. No matter the reality of what happened, nor the intentions of any entities there, I don't think we'll be putting in an offer. My parents bought the house we're currently living in two years ago. It has four levels. Not stories, just levels. When you enter the house or main floor, to your left are the stairs that lead to upstairs, quote unquote. Next to those stairs are the ones that take you downstairs, and to the left of those are the basement stairs. We live in Arlington, Texas. We moved into this house in the summer of 2017. Before we moved in, we would stay the weekends and paint the house. We stayed in Fort Worth on the weekdays so we could continue school. After our first night of staying here, I had a nightmare that a little boy was in our house. He would follow me wherever I went and pushed me off a chair I was standing on. That's when all the nightmares began. After several weeks of living there, I was in the dining room cleaning. My back was facing the staircase that led to the upstairs. Once you go up the stairs, it's like a little balcony. I suddenly had the feeling that I should turn around. I slowly turned my head and in the corner of my eye, I could see what looked like a little boy. He was dangling his legs between the railing. I quickly turned my head all the way to see who was there, but nobody was. It was just an empty staircase. My whole family was downstairs in the living room too, so it wasn't any of them. I thought I was just seeing things, so I didn't mention it to anyone. The location where I saw this little boy is right outside my bedroom door. Some time had passed and I hadn't seen anything else. Out of the blue, my older sister had admitted to me that she saw what looked like a little kid standing at the top of the staircase close to where I saw him. My mom overheard what we were talking about and told us that she too had seen something. One day she was heading down to the basement. 
The basement is dark, and the lights take a few seconds to turn on. It's also dark down there, because there's only one window. She saw what looked like a hunched-over man run past the stairs and out of her view. There are closets on both sides of the stairs, so they block your view of seeing the whole basement. You can only see straight ahead. If you stood looking down the stairs, you would see the closet with some metal tank thing inside. I think it's for the air conditioner. You can't go in there. Although, in the closet, there is a hole that leads to under the stairs. You can't reach the hole because half of it is blocked off with wood. She saw this hunched over man run into that closet. After seeing that, she was too scared to go downstairs for the rest of the day. In our basement is also our laundry room. All the lights in the basement have a delay. My older sister told me that when she walked into the laundry room, she could see the outline of a man standing in the corner. She froze for a few seconds, and then the lights turned on, and there was absolutely nothing there. She was looking at the shadow when she turned the light on, and it just disappeared. Nothing to make a shadow look like a man was there either. My mother also said that she saw a man walk past our back door. He was tall, and all she could make out was his silhouette. We have a big sliding glass door. She went to investigate, and nobody was in our backyard. Our yard is pretty long, and our fences are tall. We also had our dog in the back at the time. He didn't like strangers being in our backyard, and he would bark like crazy and jump on them. One night while I was sleeping, my mom woke me up frantically. She asked me if I was humming. I told her that I wasn't humming, I was sleeping, and that I wanted to go back to sleep because I had school the next day. She proceeded to tell me that when she was walking up the stairs to go to her room, which is right across from mine, she heard humming. It was soft, slow humming, and it sounded like it was coming from my room. She thought she had caught me staying up late, so my mom slowly opened my door. She could make out what looked like a small child kneeling at the foot of my bed, watching me sleep. The humming stopped when she turned on the lights, and the figure disappeared too. I told her that I didn't hear any humming, but after that I was too scared to go back to sleep. I don't remember when this happened, but my brother-in-law and my older sister's bedroom is downstairs. He told me that one night, he randomly woke up and didn't know why. That's when he noticed the silhouette of a really tall man standing at the foot of his bed. He didn't really care though and went back to sleep. He told my sister in the morning what he saw and she freaked out. One night, when my mom was in her room alone, she heard knocking on her bedroom window. Our rooms are on the second floor. Her window faces the front of the house. The front lawn is on a steep hill. She opened the curtains, but nobody was there. Sometimes, out of the corner of my eye, I can see the silhouette of a tall man standing at the stairs that lead upstairs. But when you turn to look, no one is there. Heavy footsteps can be heard coming upstairs from the basement, but no one is ever there either. The kitchen faucet has turned on by itself twice now. Small things disappear, like utensils. What really scared me the most was when my baby sister, who was three or four at the time, randomly told me one night that there was a man under our bed. Not a monster, a full-grown man. Almost every single night I have a nightmare, and I'm always dying in them. My death is different in every single one. Sometimes I'm murdered, sometimes it's an accident, a natural disaster, natural causes, the list goes on and on. We have smudged the house numerous times. We put cinnamon sticks at every single window and circle the house with salt. The little boy has seemed to disappear. But now we see or hear the man more and more. We've asked our neighbors who have lived here previously, but they don't know. We're all new to the neighborhood. I've tried finding stuff online about our house, but I can never find anything. What should we do? Everybody is too afraid to be home alone. No one likes the basement. I'm scared to leave my room at night. I have a feeling that something is under the stairs. 
but I know that nothing can get under there. Nobody can fit. Except, of course, for maybe a child. This story takes place around 2004 to 2006. I was a really young kid at the time. My friend, who I'll refer to as Lance, lived with his mother, stepfather, two brothers, and younger sister. His family ended up moving into a nice, spacious home, which was actually in a pretty nice neighborhood. It was an exciting time for Lance and his family. Prior to this move, he and his family only lived in apartment complexes, so this was a real change of pace, a great transition. Initially, all seemed well within the first few weeks. That is, until one day, we all decided to play hide-and-seek throughout the house. While I was hiding in a room, I got a really strange and eerie feeling, like somebody was watching me. I then felt like something brushed across the top of my hair, and the whole room got really cold, and all of my hair was standing on end classic signs of a ghostly presence, I guess. When I told Lance, his family, and my friends about the experience, nobody believed me. Fast forward a few weeks later, Lance's mom was laying in bed. Her husband, Lance's stepfather, was at work. She was all alone. Everyone else was away at the time. It was late at night, and suddenly she heard the bedroom door open and it felt like someone crawled into bed with her. At first, she assumed that it was her husband, but when she turned over, nobody was there. The entire room felt ice cold, and then she heard what sounded like a female voice right next to her. This voice called her name, and that's when she saw the shadow figure standing in the corner of the room she said she ran out of the room as fast as she could, screaming like crazy, and went onto the front porch, waiting for her husband to return home. After that experience, Lance's mom believed me. Many other bizarre things started occurring around the home. Eventually, everyone started experiencing things that they couldn't explain, so at this point, everyone believed me. One of the spookiest places in the house was the basement. I had a really bad habit of leaving my shoes down there. Lance and I used to spend a lot of time down there because they had a small pool table. Whenever I had to go down there by myself to get my shoes, I always felt like I was being watched. It was such a creepy feeling. I actually just refused to retrieve my shoes a few times because it was that bad. The incident that really amplified everything was one night when Lance and his siblings were all asleep. Lance's stepfather and his buddies were in the living room watching a football game. Suddenly, a lamp in the living room straight up levitated off the table and smashed into a nearby wall. Everybody in the living room freaked out. Moments later, a speaker straight up fell over in Lance's upstairs bedroom for no apparent reason. That's two different poltergeist activities occurring in two opposite parts of the home at the same time. That incident got everyone's attention. One experience that truly creeped me out is when Lance and I were in his room playing video games. This was during the middle of the day. Lance went downstairs to get something while I stayed in his room playing GTA Vice City. I then heard a creaking sound coming down the hallway. The door to the bedroom was wide open. I then spotted a shadow of what looked like a little girl on the wall. At first, I honestly thought it was Lance's younger sister's shadow, so I called out her name, but there was no answer. Then the entire room got super cold, and I heard what sounded like a whisper right next to me. I straight up dropped the controller and ran as fast as I could out of that room. Shadow figures were a common occurrence within the home. That, along with moving objects, cold spots, unexplained voices, and constant footsteps. 
The upstairs level of the home was beyond scary. I felt bad for Lance that he had to sleep up there. If I lived there, there's no way I could sleep in that room. I never slept over at that house, by the way. I mean, sure, I would stay for hours on end, but I never fell asleep there. Ever. Lance's mom ended up going through family photos that were taken in the house. There were tons of pictures that had orbs, unexplained faces, and shadowy beings. She was absolutely horrified upon seeing those pictures. At that point, she seriously considered moving. One time, she called in a realtor to discuss selling the home. Out of curiosity and with an odd look on his face, he asked, Have you ever experienced anything unusual here? He was clearly aware of the activity in the home. Lance's mom told him briefly what they had experienced, and he then pulled out some documents detailing the history and previous owners of the home. Turns out there were a total of four deaths in the house. The first death occurred in the 1960s. Some guy was apparently drunk and fell down the basement stairs and broke his neck. The second death was an old lady who had a heart attack in Lance's mother's bedroom. The third death occurred in Lance's bedroom. Apparently, a lady lived there who was heavily involved with witchcraft. She used to conduct rituals in her home. Her death was a bit unclear. She apparently suffocated or experienced some random health problem, but it was pretty much still inconclusive. The fourth death, or deaths for that matter, occurred in another upstairs bedroom. Apparently, there was a violent domestic occurrence between a husband and a wife. The husband killed his wife and then shot himself. So at this point, Lance's mom felt confirmed that it was time to move. Another terrifying incident involved Lance's younger brother. His brother supposedly spotted a man standing at the top of the stairs, covered in blood, and who had dark blue skin and solid black eyes. His younger brother constantly claimed to see people and figures around the home. As a last-ditch effort, Lance's mom called in a priest to bless the home. This was by far the scariest and most paranormal event I've ever personally witnessed. When the priest entered the home, he immediately got a bad feeling, especially in Lance's bedroom. When conducting the blessing, things got intense. Objects around the home started flying all over the place, like something out of a movie. And then suddenly, a bright flashing orb reflected off of Lance's mom's wedding picture and hit her in the chest. She fainted upon contact with this orb. The entire night of the blessing was terrifying. The priest actually stayed the night. When he returned home, he claimed that the spirit followed him. So in conclusion, Lance and his family eventually moved out. The blessing was a total failure. The house was too creepy to stay in. I get chills just telling the story. To this day, I still drive past the house every now and again, and it still gives me the creeps. Someone else lives there now. I guess you could say I took a piece of the house with me, because I actually do own an original object from the home. They were found in the attic. There were three miniature statues, along with a book about the occult that Lance's mom found up there. She was about to throw all the items out. She threw away the book, but I took the statues. To this day, they're still in my possession, on a shelf, in my bedroom. Although, I've never experienced anything paranormal from them. Not yet. So, this took place around 2009, when I was around three years old. So, it might be a little bit blurry, but here goes. When I was little, my mom and dad moved around a lot, about seven times in three years. But this house really stuck out from the rest. It was an old Victorian house, which we found out later was a workhouse and an old cottage. It wasn't long until the paranormal activity began happening. 
I never slept in my room because the blinds would constantly shake with all the windows shut tight. The same thing happened in all the rooms, too. Like someone just went past and pushed them all forward and was gone. But the scariest moment was when my dad was sitting downstairs late one night. My mom and I were upstairs sleeping. My dad got the feeling that he was being watched, so he turned around and saw a tall, dark, smoke-like figure, as tall as the doorway it was standing in. So we're talking about six feet here. My dad thought he was seeing things, so he looked away, and then looked back, but the thing was still there, just standing and watching. My dad, obviously shaken, turned off the TV and got up, and that's when the figure vanished in front of him. My dad ran upstairs and didn't speak of it until later. My mom had a weird encounter when she went to use the bathroom one night. She heard somebody breathe directly into her ear. She screamed and thought it was my dad being a jerk, but when she got out, he wasn't there. So she ran upstairs, and my dad was next to me sleeping. I had a few weird things happen too, like the time, according to my dad, that I would point out a ghost of a little boy that nobody else could see except from the time that my cousin came down and swore that he saw a little boy peek around the curtain in the window when he was outside, and as soon as he looked, the boy disappeared. We would also hear childlike running on the stairs and the landing of the house, but we were never upstairs when we heard it. There was also a constant and strong smell of whiskey. When we had done our research, we found that a man who lived there previously and had died there drank cans and cans of whiskey, all day, every day. My dad went up to the attic and saw a dusty box in the corner. When he opened it up, tons of old Victorian battered shoes came tumbling out, so delicate that they apparently broke into a couple of pieces, such as the soles and the inside of the shoes. We later moved out, because when we called a priest over, he was so shaken up that he walked out telling us to get out of there immediately, because whatever was there was pure evil. The house is still up, but it's constantly up for rent or sale. I can't stop thinking about that little boy. He always seemed so sad, which is all I could remember about him. I hope he finds some peace. Okay, so this is weird. I was a skeptic for most of my life until I was around 23. A group of friends had stayed in an old house in southern Louisiana that was said to be haunted. The house was very old and there was a family cemetery in the backyard. The room that was said to have the most activity was the uppermost room. The maids of the house were so spooked by that particular room that they refused to clean it leaving the owner to tend to it. I really didn't believe in things like spirits or ghosts, so I didn't mind sleeping there. Well, things got weird, quickly. The first day, the only things that were off were the lights, flickering slightly, only in the upstairs room, and the alarm clock constantly having to be reset as it kept going back to noon, as if it kept getting turned off. We chalked that up to the house being built in the 1910s and having dodgy wiring. We went to sleep and slept well. The next day, we decided to check out the family cemetery, just a small plot of land with maybe five or six graves. We walked around a bit and that was that. Well, that night, I began to have the most realistic and haunting dreams I've ever had in my life. They were vivid, sexual, dark, and above all, terrifying. When I woke up, I kept passing out, as though something was blocking my airway. I'd lose, then regain consciousness, all while trying to get out of that room. There was a voice in my head, telling me to get out, and that whatever was on me couldn't get me outside the room. 
I crawled on my hands and knees, while trying to stay conscious, to the front door and down the stairs. About a third of the way down the staircase, I felt this relief, a massive weight removed that had been squeezing my entire rib cage. I could think clearly without interference. I stayed on the couch the rest of the trip. The next day when I went to move my things out of the room, I would begin to get dizzy if I stayed there for too long. When I'd go back downstairs, the dizziness would leave. I'm 32 years old, and this hasn't happened anywhere else since. So this summer, my family and I stayed in a house in Germany for a week. It seemed nice enough, but right away, there was just a strange feeling throughout the whole house. I don't know how to explain it, but you know when it just doesn't feel right? So probably the first thing I should mention is that there were noises coming from everywhere. Footsteps, banging, that kind of thing. I should also mention that none of us talked about it being scary until we left and were in the car. So on the first day when my mom and I were in my room and were hearing noises, Neither of us mentioned it, even though we both knew that it was nothing, right? The first really scary thing happened on the second night. My room was opposite the conservatory, and every night there was a noise coming from there. But on this specific night, a chair freaking moved. Like, what the heck? On one of the other nights, and this is probably one of the scariest things, my mom thought she saw my brother running between his room and the bathroom. But when she asked my dad why my brother wasn't in bed, my dad walked out of the bathroom and said my brother was in bed. So who was that person running in between rooms? We all agreed that my brother's room felt the weirdest. Luckily, my brother is a complete lead box, so he was fine with sleeping in there. So, you can probably understand why my mom did not want to sleep in there when my brother went in with my dad on the last night. I needed to use the restroom so many times that night, I don't know why. And before I went for the last time, I thought I heard one of my parents getting up for the bathroom because I heard footsteps and things moving around in there. But then, I realized that my parents' door had never actually opened. And when I asked them about it the next day, they said neither of them had gotten up. That same night, my mom was in my brother's room. She had put her Garmin watch on a book. She heard a noise and the watch was half off the book. She heard a shuffling noise and a thump. And then the watch was on the floor and the sensor light was flashing. She came into my room and slept in there because she was terrified. One more thing is that everybody woke up loads of times every night. Usually we all sleep pretty well. I really don't know what to make of it, but I'm pretty sure that house was haunted. I moved into my current house yesterday. It's a typical middle-of-nowhere farmhouse with thick woods surrounding it. It's a house passed down through generations, starting with my great-grandfather's uncle who helped build it. He died while repairing the silo, the grain suffocating him. In his will, he wanted my great-grandfather to own it. My great-grandfather then died from a heart attack at the age of 93 in the bathtub. My grandma was next in line, and within a month of moving in, died in a car crash a few miles from the house. My mother then temporarily moved in, and she said she would sell it. Nobody would buy it because of the history. However, she did see some people walking around in the yard. She would later tell me this after I moved in. I just assumed either it was the TV reflection on the windows or her dreaming. And if it was true, it was probably just some teenagers messing around. I wasn't too worried and had my dog to keep me company. The first night, I was sleeping on the floor, as I hadn't bought a mattress yet. 
My dog was sleeping next to me and hogging the blanket. I quietly got up to go look for another one when I saw someone quickly walk past to the kitchen. I was confused, thinking that maybe one of my buddies who helped me move in was trying to scare me. I walked to the kitchen and saw nothing. I must have been searching every corner and cranny for about an hour. I kept saying, that's really funny, but I need to go to bed. Eventually I gave up and grabbed a blanket and walked back into the living room where I'd been sleeping. My dog, who'd been peacefully sleeping, was in the corner of the room whimpering, staring over my shoulder. I got the chills and slowly looked behind me, only to find darkness. I did a quick search of the house, turning on the lights and whatnot, but I found nothing. I decided to keep the lights on and I went back to my dog, Reuben. I settled on the creaky wood floor and threw my blanket over me. Reuben eventually walked up to me and sat down. Just as my heart rate was returning to normal and Reuben was snuggled up next to me, I heard an explosion from the kitchen. I jumped up and stood there. Reuben started crying again and went back to the corner. I grabbed some scissors and walked to the kitchen again. This time, the kitchen light I had turned on was blown out, broken glass shards everywhere. Jokingly, I said, you're paying for that to who I thought was still trying to scare me. The moment I said that, an overwhelming dread came over me. I felt dizzy and out of breath. I noticed I was suddenly very cold. I chalked it up to the light being out. Must have made the kitchen colder. I quickly walked back to the living room to find Reuben staring at the wall. At this point, I'd had enough and I wanted to sleep at a hotel. I grabbed my phone and searched it up as I was unfamiliar with the area. Suddenly, Reuben snarled at the wall. I had never heard him do that before. I looked up, but everything was the same. It was just me and him. However, out of the corner of my eye, I saw movement. I turned and looked out the window directly left of me and saw a man in old attire walking toward the silo. He looked dirty and battered with a slight limp. I could see him because my mother installed a street light. Well, at this point, I decided I would confront him, thinking he was the man inside my new house. I opened the window and yelled at him. The moment I did this, he disappeared right in front of me. At this point, it was four in the morning and I was just done with it. I grabbed my blanket and Reuben and went to sleep in my truck. I woke up at 2 p.m. with several missed calls it was my mom and sister trying to check up on me. I got back to them, and currently, I'm debating what I should do next. My parents rented a house in a remote upstate area and we moved in when I was 16. I lived there until I was 25. I'm now 31. Slowly, my sisters moved out later than I did, and my parents just moved out like six months ago. Here are a few of the encounters we've had. Every night, my sisters and I would hear footsteps coming up the stairs and going into the bathroom. Every time, we assumed it was one of my parents up for a late night bathroom run since the only bathroom was in the upstairs area, where the rest of the bedrooms were, and my parents' room was downstairs. We eventually realized it wasn't them. Then we'd get up to use the bathroom and wait forever before knocking, only to find out that the bathroom was empty. My dog, who slept in my bedroom, would wake up at the same time every night, always around 3 a.m., and stare and growl at the dark area in my bedroom. My little sister and I, who shared the bedroom, could feel a presence, but we were too scared to look at the shadow. So, while looking at the floor, we would slowly pick up our dog, place him under the covers with us, and just pray that it went away. The main encounters happened in my bedroom. It must have been where it lived, 
or maybe there were multiple entities. But one time, my younger sister and I redecorated our bedroom and placed a new shoe rack right in front of our bed and lined up our shoes. We both sat down on the bed to look at it from different angles and see if we liked the placement, and a shoe came flying off the rack directly at us. We both booked it and didn't come back for hours. It liked to hide stuff from me, specifically me. I would be doing my makeup, and then after I used the foundation or lotion, I would go to put the cap back on, and it would just be gone from the vanity. It would happen right in front of me. Or I would spread out my outfit on the bed that I would plan to wear, shower, come to get dressed, and a piece of clothing from the outfit would be gone and nowhere to be found. Now, I'm sure you'll think maybe a sister, right? Since there were four of us. Well, I thought that too, except that it happened consistently for years. I got used to it. I'd leave a note sometimes in the bathroom for family before I went out with, for example, my foundation uncapped that said, the elf took my cap. If you randomly find it, please put it back on. That's what I always called it, an elf because of how mischievous it was. Later, I learned to give it gifts. I would place out my outfit or my engagement ring in its box or whatever else was really important that I wouldn't want to go missing. And I would loudly announce in my empty bedroom, I need this, please don't take it, but I've left you this, for example, an earring, for you to play with while I'm out or asleep or whatever it was. It worked. I read that online, by the way, as I tried to find ways of cohabitating, since financially we couldn't move out. One day, my sisters and I asked the landlord what was in the attic, since there was one that didn't have a ladder to go up to it. And he told us that he didn't know. He'd bought the house as is many years ago and had never been in the attic, so he had no idea what was there, if anything. So I got the bright idea of let's check it out. We got chairs, which we stacked on top of each other while my parents were out, and I was going to check while my sisters held the chairs for me to climb on. Well, I opened the attic door, and all I could see was pitch black. I wasn't even at eye level into the attic yet, just barely could see into it, as I'm pretty short. So my sisters got a flashlight. I turned it on, went to put it on the floor inside to climb in, and poof, it went out immediately. I figured, okay, the battery's dead. My other sister handed me a lit candle to put on the floor so that I could climb in while the other one went to get batteries. And as soon as I placed it on the floor, poof, it got blown out. At that moment, I flipped. I closed the attic as fast as I could, and none of us ever planned on checking again. These are just a few descriptions of our paranormal encounters. My parents either never believed us, or they didn't want to. They never heard anything downstairs and never noticed anything. Until, when we all moved out and they moved into my old bedroom, where my mom would swear that stuff disappeared on her all the time, that lights got turned on and off, the doors open and close and so on. Then the landlord lost the house to foreclosure, and my parents moved out into their own home about six months ago. The haunted house is now abandoned, as nobody has purchased it, and more haunted than ever, I'm sure. I wouldn't take any amount of money to go sleep there for one more night on my own. So, I work for my local authority's cultural service. I can work in any one of the cultural buildings across the city, but one that I work in, I believe is definitely haunted. The building is 300 years old, used to be a farmhouse until the 1860s, and then an upper middle class family home. There have been a few occasions where I believe I've experienced paranormal activity there. One time, I was covering a Sunday shift, if I covered a Sunday shift, I always made sure we got in a tea break before we opened. 
So the three of us sat in the canteen having a drink and a natter. No one else was in the building. I was the key holder, so anyone getting in before opening time had to get in through me. Something in the building went bang. A bang like something heavy falling over. It seemed to come from the corridor across from us, but nothing was out of place. The three of us heard it and the three of us searched the building to look for an explanation, but literally nothing was out of place. Another time, I was working on some admin in the office. I usually shared an office, but that day I had it to myself. The offices were the old servants' bedrooms. We had a volunteer working in the office opposite. She left to collect her things, ready to leave, just as her husband came up to collect her. I sent her husband back downstairs to meet her. Within a minute, I saw someone and presumed it was the volunteer come back up the stairs and go into the office. So I got up to tell her that I had literally just sent her husband back downstairs, but the office was empty. On a third occasion, I was in one room tidying something up. I heard footsteps walking toward me from the adjacent room. I was in the building by myself. Finally, again on my own, I was in what was essentially a gentleman's game room, polishing the glass cases. I had this overwhelming feeling that I couldn't explain the origin of, that I wasn't welcome in there, being a woman. Now whenever I go in there, I can't stop myself saying something like, I know, but I'm just doing some polishing and I'll be out, and the feeling subsides or doesn't come on at all. I'm not the only person that's come out of that room with an odd feeling. Two girls one evening while locking up went to switch the lights off, and they both at the same time came out feeling scared and crying, but they couldn't explain why. Every house I've ever lived in has been haunted. When I was three, I lived in an old trailer with my grandparents and my mom. I went into my bedroom, which was the computer room with a mattress on the floor, to get something. When I looked around, I saw a man in the mirror. He was quite tall, had on old Coke bottle glasses, and was in a dress shirt with suspenders. But my reflection wasn't in the mirror. I ran out of there so quick. I also had really weird dreams in that house. After a huge fight with my mom and my mama, we left to go live in my mom's childhood house. That house is where I've had the most ghost encounters and developed anxiety, so I absolutely loved this house. Anyway, I was around four when we moved and seven when I saw my first ghost in that house. I was upstairs, and from my bathroom mirror, you could see the shower. All of a sudden, I looked at the mirror, and I saw three fingers sliding down the shower door. I ran downstairs to my mom, and to this day, I don't go upstairs or take showers there. The second time, I was downstairs, and I heard a big crash in the bathroom, as though a bunch of pots and pans had fallen, but all over the house, nothing had moved. After that, I moved out with my mom. My mama still lives there. I still hear footsteps upstairs, and in the night, someone is watching me. Currently, I live in a different house with my mom and her boyfriend, and it's a little different. I haven't seen anything, but there's been more things happening to objects. My mom had a crown royal bag, and one day the strings got mysteriously cut. Also, the most recent, I had a friend over and we were about to go to sleep when I noticed on my Polaroid camera, it's an antique from the 70s, that the handle had been cut. This happened about two weeks ago. About a year ago, I was texting my now ex-boyfriend and all of a sudden an Avon compact that was sitting in the middle of my desk flew off onto the floor. It's still in our texts to this day. And that's all of my ghost stories. Except, of course, for the countless times that I've felt somebody watching me and other things like that. I'm not really sure what to make of it. My 
My old house was unbelievably haunted. That's what we've always thought. But honestly, I believe in my heart that there's something attached to my family. I have a reason to believe that, but that's a story for another time. Back to the house. My brother and sister were home alone. They were downstairs watching a movie when they heard a door upstairs slam shut. They ran upstairs to see what it was, only to find out that it was my bedroom door that had slammed shut. They opened the door and no one was there. My closet doors started subtly moving. They opened the doors to find out that my cross, which was inside of a shadow box, was flipped upside down. In case you don't know what a shadow box is, it's something that you put inside of a case with a big piece of glass in front of it, meaning that you can't physically touch the item inside of the box. So as to how that cross flipped over, no one will ever know. My family has always been kind of religious, so in that moment, they were both like, we're leaving, we are not staying here tonight. They went into the laundry room to get some things. In this house, our laundry room was in the garage, so they went to go back inside and the door slammed in their face. It was locked. They opened the garage door and went around to the front door. It was also locked. They checked the patio door and that door was locked as well. Not being able to get into the house, they made the choice to call a locksmith. The locksmith came, but you know, in our area at least, locksmiths drive big yellow vans. But this guy pulled up in some old car. He came to our door and unlocked it in seconds. And then he started hitting on my sister, asking her if she wanted to go out for drinks while he's on the job. So my brother calls the company to complain. And also this guy charged my brother way too much money. So he complains about that too. He calls the company and says, the locksmith you just sent was not following protocol, blah, blah, blah. And here's the scary thing. They responded and said, Sir, we haven't even sent a locksmith out to you yet. So who the hell was the guy that was just at our house? We never did find out. I was around four living in a house with my mom and my mom's boyfriend. It was around three in the morning, I think, when I had woken up because I had to pee. I walked outside of my room to see a woman in white standing in the stairway. My room was on the second floor. I ran into my little sister's room to tell her. She went out of her room and saw her too. We both ran back into my room and hid under my covers, terrified. This was 10 years ago, and a couple of weeks ago, she said that my mom and her boyfriend, now ex-boyfriend, had seen her too. For them, it was around midnight. They were asleep, and my mom had woken up to see a woman standing in her closet. She thought it was nothing, and her imagination was just playing tricks on her, so she went back to sleep. The next day, when my mom's boyfriend got back from work, he went and asked my mom if around 12, she had seen anything that looked like a woman in the closet. She and her boyfriend started freaking out. Now we know that the house next to ours was actually a Civil War hospital, and many people had died in that house. Other things happened in that house, too. When my little sister was a baby, she would always point to the glass and say, Look, woman. No one could see her but now we think it was probably the same person we've all seen. The other thing is, my mom's boyfriend and his cousin had gone into our attic with a camera and began to record. When they came downstairs and showed the tape to my mom, they could see tens of orbs floating around in there. Things like that happened all the time. And while it was interesting, I'm glad I don't live there anymore. When I was little, we used to live in a house where so many weird things happened. 
I know so many people probably won't believe me, but honestly, I saw so many things in that home. My dolls would move and talk to me at night. My brother was in the shower when all the tiles flew off the wall. I would see animals and weird objects move. And once, my brother and I even saw what we believed to be an alien. It was just insane. Anyway, I grew up and believed that it was all imaginary friends and stuff like that. My brother still remembers the alien. But for the most part, I thought we were just kids. Recently, my cousins, who lived two houses down, were telling us that the man who now lives there has gone insane and walks up and down the street at 3 a.m., saying things like, the devil is coming. He wasn't like that when he first moved in. I brought this up to my mom, and it turns out we moved because the house was haunted. My parents had experienced horrible things there too, and eventually did some digging to find out that the house was built over an old church and a bunch of other things. Anyway, it was so creepy. My parents bought a home when I was just two years old, and they owned it until I was 13. From the ages of two to seven, I had countless experiences of the paranormal. Figures, noises, things being moved, people whispering my name, singing, and in true Annabelle style, toys moving on their own while being surrounded in a strange blue light. The experiences above have nothing, and I mean nothing, on those I had later on in life. For a while, my parents were divorced, during which time I rarely stayed in the house, and I always dreaded going there. To my distress, when I was ten, my parents reconciled, and we returned to the home. This is when the true nightmares began. For those who have experienced the paranormal, there's something truly unsettling about feeling like you're not alone, but it's another thing to be touched. Yes, physical contact from something you cannot see, hear, or comprehend has to be the most terrifying thing. Not long after moving back to the house, I was home alone and practicing the piano. The house was a split level, and I was in one of four downstairs rooms. The door to the guest room, where our keyboard was, was closed, and there was a window that was near the ceiling. The window was at the ground level of the outside, so if I stood up on the opposite side of the room, I could see the front lawn. The piano was directly under the window, and there I sat playing some mindless scales to warm up. Not long after I started to play, I felt a sense of unease that, ironically, I was rather used to. Figuring it was just that eerie, home-alone feeling that every kid experiences, I kept playing and I didn't stop. Until I felt something touch my back. Too scared to turn around, I looked up to the reflection of the window, which I couldn't see much of from my angle, and I saw nothing. It was dark out, so the window was acting as my mirror, ensuring me that there was nothing there. My mind was clearly playing tricks on me, right? I kept playing. Then, as if I were at the barber, I felt all of my hair be lifted up and sectioned. I looked up again to the window to see the reflection of the tips of my hair floating. At this point, I'm completely frozen and ready to just succumb to my fate. I closed my eyes tight and kept my hands on the piano keys. Almost as quickly as the moment started, it stopped. Although I never felt cold, the room instantly began to get warmer, as if the temperature had been lower, and I reached my hands behind my head. At this point, I felt alone. I felt nobody behind me either, so I was starting to feel better. But when I touched my hair, my heart dropped. My hair was completely braided. Safe to say I dashed out of that room into my neighbor's house until my parents came back. That wasn't the last experience I had there, but it was definitely one of the most visceral. I 
have a pretty interesting story to tell about my childhood house. I lived in this house when I was around 5 through 14 years old. It was quite an old house in the Cornish town of Falmouth. I believe it was called the Tregenver House. I'm getting a little bit off topic, but I'll tell you what happened and why we moved. For around the first four years we lived there, we never experienced anything paranormal or weird, apart from stuff which everyone experiences, like creaking floorboards at night, things like that. I remember that it was a few weeks until my 10th birthday, and I was really excited, as every little kid is when it's their birthday. So one night I'm staying up thinking about the toys that I'm going to get. This was a while ago, so I mainly wanted Pokemon-related things. I heard some creaking and heavy footsteps outside of my room. I stepped out to see what was going on, presuming that my parents had gone to get something to eat, and I also wanted something to eat, so I wasn't suspicious of anything. When I opened my door, it's right in front of the flight of stairs connecting the first floor to the second, the sounds completely disappear, so I run into my parents' room to see if they're there, and they're both fast asleep in their bed. At this point, I'm scared out of my wits. I step out of their room, and at the end of the hall, to which all the rooms on the second floor are connected, I look down to the end where there's a spare room next to one of the bathrooms. The door is swinging slightly ajar. I bolt into my room and pulled out my Swiss army knife. I buried myself in my covers, preparing to defend myself from whatever the hell was in my house. Every Wednesday on the lead up to my birthday, I'd hear the same footsteps coming up the hall at the same time, give or take a half an hour. But after my first experience, I never went out again. I know this doesn't explain the reason for moving in and of itself, but many other things happened in that house, and we ended up moving because of it. Before this, I had never experienced anything ghostly, except some chills and some shadows, before I moved into this house with my cousin. We were both going through divorces, and she needed a house with rooms for her kids, and I couldn't afford anything on my own. We found a 100-year-old house to rent, with four bedrooms. It had a yard, and a garage, and it was perfect, and affordable. We moved in the day after the eclipse, and it was full of bright summer light, and I was excited. We couldn't get my cousin's bed up the stairs, so she spent the first night with her friend, and I was alone in the house. I couldn't sleep. I was paranoid somebody would break in. It wasn't in a great neighborhood, and the house had several entry points. I got up around midnight for a drink of water. I was looking through the kitchen window and could see a basement window. I saw a light flick on in the basement, and I froze. I locked the door to the basement stairs and I called the cops. Clearly, somebody was in the basement. The cops came, guns out of the holsters, apparently there was a nearby robbery, and searched the entire house. They found nobody. I wasn't too spooked at that point because it's a really old house, you know? Stuff creaks and cracks and shoddy electrical work was probably the culprit. The next week, I could hear my cousin upstairs when I woke up. My cousin was getting ready. I made some extra coffee and left for work without seeing her. I mentioned that she left the coffee pot on, and she acted surprised. Turns out she wasn't home. I would constantly hear footsteps upstairs when nobody was there. I hear them so clearly on the staircase that I think for sure I'll see somebody walking down it, but I never do. It was manageable during the day, it didn't seem that scary, but at night I was terrified. I would often be in the house alone, trying to sleep. I could hear all kinds of sounds, kitchen cabinets shutting, doors opening and closing, footsteps. Also just that intense feeling of being watched. About twice a week I would experience sleep paralysis. 
I would feel like somebody was standing next to my bed and I couldn't move to look at them. Then I would snap out of it after what felt like hours and I would just be drenched in sweat. This would happen to my cousin, too. I had my friend stay the night with me because eventually I just couldn't handle it. My friend had sleep paralysis and felt like somebody was next to her that she couldn't see. We got up and checked the house after we heard footsteps around 3 a.m. and again found nothing. One night after getting home late, I worked two jobs. I walked in and my hair stood on end. It was a full blood supermoon that night and my cousin was at her full moon circle so the house was empty. I hear something move behind me, and then a man's voice said, Hello. I know it sounds horribly cliche, but that's what I heard, and it was like somebody was in the room with me. I jumped out of my skin and ran from the house. It took me a while to go back. I spent a few nights at my boyfriend's house. My cousin was in the kitchen when a cabinet slammed shut right next to her. She couldn't recreate it. She heard something call her name while she was in her bedroom, and one night, she heard her daughter talking to someone, begging them to let her sleep. When she asked who her daughter was talking to, she said, the spirit. The sleep paralysis, the footsteps, the doors, the intense vibes all continued. The activity picked up with the moon cycle. I never believed in anything really, but after this house I have realized that ghosts are real, and I believe they feed off energy. I never experienced sleep paralysis before living in that house, and I haven't since. This sounds insane, but I believe that somehow the trauma we experienced during our divorces opened up some kind of door. I feel like I was constantly seeping out anger and fear in that house, and that I fueled something. I feel like I have figured out how to close that door. I'm aware of spirits now, but I don't acknowledge them. I just shut my door and let them pass. I had night terrors from age 3 to 11. I feel like the theory that the Insidious movie laid out is really not that far off. I'm an empath. I can feel other people's emotions in the room with me. Most people can, on some level. They just don't usually think that much about it. I feel like all of these things play together somehow. I know some of my friends don't believe me at all, and I don't blame them, but I am a little bit offended if I'm honest. I'm usually the planner, the one who's organizing everything, and I always have my shit together. I'm just wondering if anyone has ever experienced anything like this, or knows what I'm talking about. I love haunted walks. I've been on at least six or seven that immediately come to mind. I come from a long line of, let's say, paranormally sensitive women, so I've been experiencing the unexplained my entire life. Not constantly, but often enough that, hey, it happens. So when I go on a haunted walk, Usually the people I'm with are watching me as much as they're watching the dark corners of the room. A few years ago, I used to run a hotel. It was a vintage building that had been around since the 1800s, but I'm sad to report that nothing paranormal ever happened in the hotel. Despite its age and unique history, I checked every single room of that building every single day, completely alone and I never saw any evidence of the paranormal at all. No guest ever reported anything weirder than the crappy AC not working, because the owner was too cheap to replace it. Once we had a maid claim that the largest suite was haunted, and she refused to ever set foot back in there, but I honestly think she just wanted to permanently get out of having to clean the biggest room we had. So, I'm sorry to say it guys, but I have zero scary stories about the hotel. The point is that I used to run a hotel, and as a hotel manager, I would often get free or discounted tickets to events and tourist attractions around the city. 
These tickets were meant to be used by myself and our front desk staff, so that if a guest ever asked what fun activities in the city should I make sure to see during my stay, the staff could honestly recommend places that they'd definitely been to and give them a genuine account of how they enjoyed their experience. One October, I received tickets to the haunted tour that always appears during the few weeks leading up to Halloween. My front desk manager and I were the only two who were brave enough to go. I had already been on several haunted walks across our country, and she had heard a few of my spooky experiences, so she was very eager to come too. Plus, we had become best friends. It was great to hang out together outside of work. We'll call her Allie. My husband, of course, came as well, as he's always my sidekick during haunted walks. The tour we decided to take included a walking tour of haunted locations in town, and finished with an internal tour of the most famously haunted house in our city, possibly in our country. To protect privacy, I won't tell you the name of the house, but we'll call it the Governor's House. The walking tour before the big event was, as always, very awesome. Very interesting stories, but since we didn't actually go into any of the reportedly haunted houses, nothing truly exceptional happened. I do remember that I had the growing urge to pee. At one point, I actually swallowed my pride and asked our tour guide if we'd be seeing any haunted coffee shops so I could pop in to use the washroom. But much to my horror, she said, Oh, sorry, no, but uh, there's a bathroom in the governor's house, and the plumbing still works, so you can use that. I don't think the caretakers will mind. With a blank stare on my face, I looked at her and hesitantly replied, uh, That's okay. I'll hold it. But by the time we got to the house, holding it wasn't an option. She gave us a brief history of the house and a retelling of the reported paranormal events. Apparently, the governor and his wife lived in the house. They ran the city, until one day, an angry mob of townsfolk broke in, ransacked the place, and murdered them both. Since then, the caretakers who used to reside in the house have experienced a lot of unexplained noises, objects moving on their own and, worst of all, being violently shaken or slapped awake in the middle of the night, but then opening their eyes to see nobody there. Needless to say, they no longer live in the house. Absolutely bursting with urgency, the first thing I did when we got into the house was lock myself in the first bathroom I saw. It was absolutely tiny, very dark, and definitely the last creepy place I wanted to be without pants on. Not to my surprise, there was no line to use it. Half-jokingly, I said, Okay, ghosts, just hold off for a few minutes, let me have my privacy, and then you can do whatever you want after. I should really know better than to offer spirits a deal. When I emerged from the bathroom, everyone on the tour looked at me like I was crazy for going in there alone. Apparently, each of them would have gladly chosen to pee their pants. The guide gave us permission to walk around the house freely, as long as we were careful not to break or take anything. Allie was eager to have her first ever ghost encounter, so the first thing she did was make us go down into the basement. One of the stories that the guide told us about was a rocking chair that was known to rock on its own, so Allie was determined to find it. And, since nobody else was willing to go down into the basement, we had it completely to ourselves. Once we were downstairs, we saw three rooms. One was just a closet of mops and other cleaning supplies. To the left of it was an archway leading into a pitch black room. I thought it strange that this was the only room in the house that didn't have its lights on. And to our immediate left at the foot of the stairs was a kitchen, which also had its own archway to the dark room. We decided to explore the kitchen first, since we could clearly see in there. I loved all the vintage plates, but Allie was fixated on finding a ghost and made a dash, alone, straight into the dark room. I sighed and followed behind her. The room was so dark, 
that as soon as you entered it, you couldn't see your hand right in front of your face, which was weird because it was right next to the brightly lit kitchen through a large open doorway, but no light dripped in. You could turn around and see the entire kitchen, and you could see the faint street lights through the window, but the actual room itself was pitch black. Not wanting to accidentally bump into and break any priceless antiques, I took out my camera and started to aimlessly snap photos to get the light from the flash. It didn't occur to me until this moment that I probably should have used the flashlight app on my phone, but during creepy moments you're prone to make quick and odd decisions. Every time I snapped a photo, I got a blink into the room. It was a dining room with a large wooden table dead center, but it wasn't really the furniture that caught my eye. It was footprints. It's hard for me to really explain it, but every time I took another photo, I could see large, bright blue footprints on the floor, two at a time, making their way around the table, coming closer. After about four or five photos, I was pretty sure that I saw what I saw, so I backed up, back into the kitchen, back into the light. My husband and Allie looked at me. I never noticed Allie pass me to go back into the kitchen. They said my face was pale, and they asked me what happened. All I said was, I'll trick him, and I dashed to the other archway that led into the dark room from the hallway, expecting to snap a photo of the full body of the entity waiting for me near the kitchen. But I was so wrong. The only one that was about to be tricked was me, because when I took that last picture and the camera flashed, all I could see was a bright blue flashing right up in my eyes, only an inch from my face. He was right there, right in front of me, and he was smarter than I was, and wanted to make sure that I knew it. I stumbled back and went straight up the stairs, repeating, I'm sorry, you win. I'm sorry, you win. Allie and my husband quickly followed. Despite the weird encounter seconds earlier, we still wanted to see the rest of the house. So after I had had a chance to catch my breath and tell them what had just happened, we made our way upstairs to the bedrooms. Upstairs was uneventful. They were small rooms that were chained off to stop visitors from breaking anything. After that, we left and stood out under a street light out front of the house to recount our experience. While my husband and Allie chatted, I decided to take one last photo at the property, this time from outside. I didn't notice it at first, but while we were in the house, every light in the house was on, except for the dark room in the basement. But now, not two seconds later, looking into the house from the outside, it was reversed. Every light in the house was off, except for the dark room in the basement, where I could clearly see the rocking chair on the other side of the dining room table by the window. Another strange thing that happened that night was that absolutely none of the photos I took in that house were actually saved on my camera, not a single one. My husband had even worse luck as he told me that the moment he walked into his house, his fully charged camera just completely died. A flat, empty battery the moment he crossed the threshold but the most terrifying thing I saw that night was that picture I took from outside the house. If you had looked up to the second story window in the master bedroom, there are two distinct bright yellow eyes floating in the darkness of the house, staring directly at us down on the street below. When I showed this picture to my husband, he was so freaked out by it that he asked me to delete it immediately because he didn't want it in our house. Being sneaky, I remember saving it on Facebook before I deleted the photo from my phone so that I could share it with my friends. But after Halloween that year, I haven't been able to find that photo since. It's completely vanished, and no one I know can find the copies that they saved of it, either.
This is another story from my haunted house. This is about my youngest brother that I mentioned in part one. He's 10 years younger than me and has Asperger's syndrome. Everyone in my immediate family is 100% convinced that he's a medium. I think that's why our house is haunted, because I had a dream about that. I think they're drawn to him. Anyway, when he was maybe three or four, he was pretty developmentally delayed. He could speak, but he chose what he spoke about very carefully, and that was usually only his two special interests, Toy Story and the aliens that came to talk to him at night. There was a nursing home being converted into an antique mall in my hometown, and one afternoon, my mom went down there with my brother in tow to see about renting a space. The second they walked in the door, my almost nonverbal brother said, this place is haunted, and was totally fascinated. He wasn't scared at all. He took off running through the halls while my mom spoke with the owner about rates. He eventually found his way back to my mom and would not stop tugging on her until she acknowledged him. When she spoke to him, he started telling her and the owner about all the ghosts that were there. He said that they were all old people and that they were really bored. He said one old man was quite weird. The owner actually verified this by saying multiple contractors had quit because they said it was haunted. Another example. My mom loves yard sales and would sometimes have estate sales for people for a profit. She had trouble finding a daycare that would accommodate my brother so he was usually with her. She had an estate sale for a lady that was referred to her by an acquaintance. While preparing for the sale, she purchased a gorgeous bedroom set that ended up being my bedroom set. After their sale, she met with whom she thought was the homeowner to pick up the bedroom suite. They were standing in the bedroom chatting when the husbands were disassembling the furniture, and my then seven-ish year old brother comes running in, saying that the sweet old lady in the kitchen gave him some cookies and that they were very delicious. My mom looked at the lady, who then burst into tears. She said that this was her mom's house and that her mom had recently passed. The neighborhood kids always called her the cookie lady and would often ring her doorbell in hopes of receiving a cookie, which she was always happy to provide. Such a sweet little quip. There are also darker stories from this house, but always nice to end on a bright note once in a while. I grew up in a haunted house. I have so many stories, but this one was on my mind today. Sidebar. Most of the encounters revolve around my brothers. I believe that my middle brother has abilities, and I believe that my youngest brother, who is also autistic, is a medium. I'm a little sensitive, but nothing like them. One particular evening, my teenaged brother and two of his buddies were hanging out at my parents' house and nobody was there but them. My brother got a phone call from a girl, so he went upstairs to his room, leaving the two friends downstairs. When he came back down about 15 minutes later, he found the house completely quiet and totally dark. The TV had been turned off and the lights as well. He said that the only light was the last little bit of dwindling daylight trickling through the windows and the glass on the front door. He started laughing and calling for his friends, thinking that they were hiding from him and playing a joke. He walked through the downstairs room by room, but couldn't find them. He started feeling really nervous, so he began trying to call his friends, but they weren't answering, and he couldn't hear their phones ringing from where he was. He went and checked upstairs to see if maybe they'd snuck past him and were hiding, but they were nowhere. By now, he said the entire vibe of the whole house had changed. He was feeling very anxious. He ran down the stairs and exited the front door directly across from the steps on the front porch, leaving the front door slightly open. As soon as he stepped outside, the front door slammed, and something from the inside of the house started banging on the door with great force and intensity. It really scared him, and he was also getting irritated, so he opened the door to confront his friends. 
He was laughing, saying, oh, ha, ha, okay, y'all got me. But inside, the house was silent and still. It was at that point that he heard a car door shut in the cul-de-sac, and he turned around only to see his friends arriving at the house. They told him that they had left when he took that phone call and ran to the gas station. They swore on their lives that they knew nothing about the door. In Thessaloniki, Greece, several people consider a certain house to be very haunted. The house was said to have been the mansion of its previous owner, and today it has not been inhabited since it's dilapidated and the surrounding area has been transformed into a warehouse for building materials. It's rumored that those who have stayed there at night have heard terrible noises from ghosts roaming in the rooms, making them flee in terror. It is also said that the previous owner's building is accompanied by a curse that he put on it, and that anyone who lives there is in danger of going mad, and anyone who tries to demolish it is in danger of dying. In the past, two contractors decided to demolish it, but on the day of the planned demolition, they suddenly died. One died from a heart attack, and the other was killed in a traffic accident in Athens. I don't have any personal experience with this house, but I don't think I want any. About 10 years ago, my mom, two sisters, and I, and another small family that we were friends with, took a short trip to Northumberland. It's not too far from Alnwick Castle, where the first and second Harry Potter films were shot. My dad and the father of the other family had to work, so it was just our two moms and us seven children, aged between five and 15 years old. Because the other family was quite wealthy and we were not, they paid for the accommodation, which turned out to be an old country house built in the late 1700s. Newton Hall. It has since been stylishly refurbished into a wedding venue, but was then an eerie and isolated shadow of its 19th century preoccupants. I remember us all being shuffled through dark wood paneled passages into a large staircase lined with old portraits. We joked about it being like Hogwarts, the portraits' grim inhabitants with their eyes alive and moving, following us as we climbed the stairs. What was first a joke soon became a genuine concern in the following couple of days. As a side note, I'm still amazed at how we had the whole place to ourselves, me being young then and not fully appreciating what the cost must have been to rent it out. My mom still claims it was because there were no more holiday rentals available in the area during summer implying that this grand hall was a sort of last resort, but I don't think so. Anyway, in addition to the creepy paintings, there was a huge Native American-style totem pole with its garish peeling paint and beady eyes glaring from multiple heads. This stood watch on the landing of the second floor. In a so-called playroom were various animal heads mounted on the walls and in the tall corridors on the ground floor were benches, their legs fashioned from a brutal mesh of deer antlers. It was the benches that were the first cause for alarm. On the first morning, upon waking up, we noticed that one or two of these benches had moved a few inches from their proper placement at the wall's edge. However, this strange but subtle event was not given any thought, at least until the next morning when it happened again. I remember distinctly that the blame was put to the eldest of the seven children, Michael, who had a sort of mischievous manner about him, but he denied it. This physical disturbance in the already extremely scary house was enough to make us sleep in pairs. I remember that my older sister and I were taking turns sleeping on the side of the bed that faced the wall, rather than be exposed to anything that might come in the night. 
Only one other thing happened that seemed poignant enough for me to remember now. Three of the girls developed some kind of rash while we stayed at the hall. The doctor diagnosed it as empedigo, an infectious skin rash which explains the coincidence. However, the cause still remains completely ambiguous and was never discovered. I don't know if it was a natural infection or something more sinister. Either way, the home was the scene of one of the creepiest things I've ever experienced, before or since, and I genuinely hope to not experience anything like that again. I've had many paranormal experiences, but I thought I'd share this one in particular. My mother-in-law died quite unexpectedly during Christmas in 2013. She was in a coma for about a week before she died. She lived in a senior living community in Southern California called Laguna Woods. While my mother-in-law was in the hospital and following her death, my husband, one-year-old son and I stayed at her place. At the time, we lived in Texas, but we're from Southern California, and all of our family are here too. One of my first experiences was in the middle of the night. I picked up my son out of his pack and play because he was crying. I held him as I walked to the living room to sit on the recliner and rock him. I didn't turn on any lights, as there was enough ambient light to see. Just as I was about to sit on the recliner, I was startled, because it looked like someone was already sitting there. I immediately stood back up because of my natural reaction of thinking somebody was already there. It sure did give my heart a jump. From about then on, I felt a presence. It didn't scare me, but I was definitely aware of it. I don't believe it was my mother-in-law. I believe it may have been a previous owner. I felt that it was probably a woman, but sometimes it felt like a man. So my mother-in-law's death brought together some of my husband's family who had been estranged. My husband's uncle has an adult son with whom they had a falling out for several years. Word of my mother-in-law's passing got to the estranged son, which is a cousin of my husband, and he showed up at the memorial and surprised his family. They had a positive and emotional reunion. He only stayed for the memorial and then left for home. After the memorial, my husband's side of the family and I went back to my mother-in-law's house for an after-party visit sort of thing. They stayed for several hours and it was a great reunion. We ordered pizza and I called my sister, who lived in the neighborhood, to come over. She came and socialized and it was nice. Nothing remarkable happened until the next day. So my sister calls me the next day to catch up and see how we're doing, and we talk about the previous day and night's events. She commented on how nice it was to see my husband's family, and how great it was that my husband's uncle reconciled with his son. She added that it was so nice that the son had come over to the house afterward. I said he didn't come over. He went home immediately after the memorial. My sister said, really? I could swear he was there. I explained that the only men present were my husband, his uncle, and an older cousin. My sister said she saw a man, maybe in his early to late thirties, wearing khaki pants and a sweater vest standing between the living room and kitchen. She said she made eye contact with him a couple of times and he smiled. She said he looked like he was listening and observing the conversations that were going on in the kitchen and living room, but he wasn't talking to anyone. She said her intention was to go and chat with him, thinking that it was the formerly estranged son, but was caught up in conversation with other relatives. She said that when she was finally free to go and chat, she couldn't find him anywhere. She didn't think anything of it at the time, she figured he just left. Since I already had an experience with the recliner sitting person, this made my blood run cold and honestly gave me the chills. Eventually, my husband had to return to Texas to work. My son and I stayed in California for a few weeks to clean out my mother-in-law's house. It was during my stay that more weird things happened. 
One night, I was lying in bed reading when I felt someone watching me from the hallway. My body had its own reaction to the presence that I couldn't control. I felt anxious, but not scared. Just that I knew someone was in the house besides me and my son was an eerie feeling. I finally made a deal with the ghost or ghosts. I said, listen, I know you're here and that's okay. Just don't scare or harm me or my son. Otherwise, you're welcome to stay. I can't recall the exact timeline, but one morning I found my one-year-old son completely unclothed in his pack and play. He had never, ever removed his clothing before this, and he's never done it since. Even his diaper was missing. At the time, I thought it was some new phase with him taking off his clothes, but he never did it again. Not even a sock. I truly believe some entity was responsible. It was just too out of his character to take off all of his clothes. Again, I reiterated our commands to the ghosts. You're welcome here, just don't scare or harm me or my son. I had help from my family packing away items that we wanted to keep. During this time, another sister of mine came from the hallway and said that she smelled perfume strongly in the hallway like Chanel number no. 5. There were only three of us at the house that day and all of us were working together in the kitchen. No one had been in the hallway other than to pass through to get to the restroom. I smelled the perfume a couple of times too on different occasions. My mother-in-law had all kinds of aversions and I never knew her to wear perfume so I didn't think it was her spirit. Also during this packing day, I was packing up her china from the china cabinet and I suddenly got an overwhelming scent of body odor. I even did a pit check of myself, and it wasn't me. I did a covert sniff of my sister and friend helping me that day, and they didn't smell like it either. I was hesitant to tell them, but then I just had them come over to the china cabinet area and ask if they smelled anything. They both said B.O., and it wasn't any of us. I just chalked it up to another spirit encounter. Another time, I was getting ready to host the estate sale in the house. Everything was prepped and ready for a 7 a.m. start time the next day. As part of the setup, I had my mother-in-law's shoes neatly displayed on a shoe rack in the master bedroom just a few feet from the side of the bed that I was sleeping in. I got up that morning and showered. Nothing was amiss. When I came back into the room, the racked shoes were on the floor next to the bed that I had just woken up from. The rack was still in place properly. It's just that now all of the shoes were on the floor. I froze in place when I entered the room and saw the shoes. I was like, what the hell is going on here? There's no way they could have just fallen over by themselves and then been neatly placed there. They had been squarely placed on the rack the night before. I would have had to step over them to get out of bed. Additionally, some of the shoes were far from the rack. Even if they had fallen, there's no way they could have rolled that far. And it wasn't my son because I immediately checked on him and he was still sound asleep in his pack and play in a completely different room. Fast forward to later in the day of the estate sale. Another couple of friends came over to help me. After a busy morning, we had a lull in the afternoon. We tidied up a bit and put things back in place that had been handled by shoppers. We took a break and sat on the porch and chatted while we enjoyed the lull. I recounted to my friends about how I thought the house was haunted. One friend was really spooked when I told her about the perfume. She said that she too smelled it in the hallway earlier that morning. She said that she was walking behind a man in the hallway and she had an overwhelming scent of perfume. She thought it was odd that a man would be wearing such strong women's perfume. I said, well, you've met my ghost. Now for the really freaky stuff. So after I recounted all the incidents above to my friends during our break, I did a walk around of the house just to double check that things were in order for the next round of shoppers. I go into the master bedroom and the frigging shoes are on the floor again. I screamed this time. My friends came running to see what happened. They saw the shoes and they were like, you're messing with us. I said, I swear to God, I'm not messing with you. These shoes were not on the floor before. When we tidied up, I re-racked all of them. And the shoes 
were almost in the same exact position that they had been in that morning when I found them on the floor after my shower. Freaky, man. We eventually sold the house. I asked the realtor if there was a disclosure law for haunted houses. She said she's never heard of such a thing. I told her about how I thought the house was haunted, but she probably just thought I was crazy. Either way, I definitely experienced some paranormal activity there, and I would be so curious to find out if the new owners did as well. As a kid, I was a huge fan of the paranormal, mostly due to my love for movies like Ghostbusters, but never in my life did I think that I would live in an actual haunted house, or in my case, a haunted mobile home. This all started when I was around four years old. We lived in a pretty nice mobile home. Growing up, my aunt would babysit us, as both of my parents worked crazy hours to support our family of five. Before we went to sleep, my aunt had a habit of telling us ghost stories. One night, as my paternal grandmother was visiting from Puerto Rico, my parents moved my twin and I to the living room as my grandmother claimed our room for the night. I was already creeped out about sleeping in the living room, which was pitch black. What made it worse was that they decided to put the cup with my grandmother's dentures next to the sofa. Having a very overactive imagination, I started to scare myself with ideas of what those teeth could do to me in the night. I struggled to go to sleep as my youngest sister, who was about three months old, was getting fussy and not wanting to sleep herself. On what took my mom a while, she finally got my sister to sleep before 10 p.m. I was relieved, and then I went back to trying to get some sleep myself. As the night progressed, I was sound asleep until I was awoken by the noise. I didn't know what it was at first. And then I realized it was a girl laughing. Scared out of my wits, I hid under the blanket. I heard the laughing get louder and closer. I shook in fear and attempted to look up, but I heard the girl run away from me and start running all over the living room and into my baby sister's room. It was then that I heard my baby sister crying hysterically. I heard the laugh through all of the crying. I just laid on the sofa trembling in fear as I heard both the laughter and the crying. Merged together, it was truly eerie. A few moments later, I heard running, and this time it was my mom getting up to get my sister and take her to the master bedroom on the other side of the trailer. I don't know how I did it, but I did manage to go back to sleep. The following morning, I asked my mom about it, and she told me she was getting that trailer blessed by a priest. A priest did come, and all of the activity stopped, or so we thought. After the first incident, I started elementary school. I became a very avid reader, as my now late maternal grandfather had gotten us to start reading at a very young age. I would read books on ghosts every chance I had, which I actually still do. Nearly two years after my first encounter with the ghost, my little brother was born. Everything had been okay. And that's when it started again. Around this time, I wasn't sleeping in the living room, but I could still hear the running from my bedroom. The reason being that the nursery was in the room next to the room that I shared with my twin. I started sleeping with the radio on just so I could avoid hearing that ghost running and laughing. One day I was told to shower as I had gotten pretty dirty from jumping into all the puddles outside. I heard my mom say that she was taking my siblings with her to the store and she'd be right back. The store was just two blocks away, so I figured it would be about 10 to 15 minutes to shower. I was singing in the shower and then I heard that laugh. It scared me as I had only ever heard that laugh at night and when one of my siblings was around. I immediately shut off the water, got a towel and went for the doorknob. I kept trying to open the door but I couldn't. It was jammed. I started crying and the ghost started pounding on the door and laughing at me. It seemed to have gone on for a while until, as suddenly as it started, it stopped. I then heard my mom call my name. She very easily opened the door 
and saw me on the ground sobbing. I had told her what happened, and she yet again called another priest to come and bless the trailer. Nothing happened there after that last blessing, since we moved about six months later. I don't know what's going on there now, though. The whole experience is a big reason that I usually shower with my door open halfway now. I also recently looked up the history of that neighborhood. As typical as it sounds, it seems that the area where I lived was at one point a makeshift cemetery before our city had an official cemetery. Our trailer had been positioned on top of the grave of a little girl. The whole neighborhood is known for a lot of hauntings. Sometimes I wonder if they removed the bodies or not, but I'll never know as it seems the trailer I lived in was moved and it's now a garden and parking spot for a house that was built on the lot next door. I've had some crazy things happen to me at my house. My neighborhood sits on top of a Native American burial ground. There are even some ruins and a burial mound in my friend's backyard, literally. Also, there was a revolutionary war battle about a mile down the street. Fun stuff, right? Ever since I moved into that house with my parents about 13 years ago, I was four, my little brother was around one, now I'm 17 and he's 14. A lot has happened. My brother, who was six at the time of this story, used to run around the house claiming to be chased by a monster. My mom and I were sitting on the couch one day and he was standing in front of the TV, but then he started shaking and ran to my mom and sat on her lap. He said that a lady tapped him on the shoulder and asked if she could speak with his father. You could bet my mom picked up both of us like footballs, got in the car as fast as possible and went to my grandma's. For the longest time after that though, things had been quiet something happened, it was very minor. Within the last five years, however, things have really kicked up again. For example, once I was standing in the kitchen at around age 13, I was staring out the window and I heard my name whispered in my ear really softly. I remember saying, yeah mom, only to look and see her fast asleep on the couch in the next room. Another time at around three in the afternoon, while I was home alone with my brother who was napping upstairs, I heard a knock on the door and a couple of kids giggle pretty loudly. I answered the door right away, too fast for them to have run off, but no one was there. My mom heard a loud crash once and a little kid giggle while in the living room. She ran into the kitchen to call my dad and tell him about it. While she was in the kitchen, the garbage can lid started swinging. My dad, who's never experienced anything paranormal until last month, was working in the garage. The cap that keeps the air inside of a bike was thrown at him from across the room. I don't know why all of a sudden these things just started happening, out of nowhere after all these years of silence. My mom runs around the house with holy water after every experience because she's scared that it's going to hurt someone. I kind of doubt that. It's never hurt anybody before. It's only given us inconveniences and scared us, but I guess anything is possible. Does anyone have any explanation? My girlfriend landed a gig where she has to watch this eight-year-old and she decided to bring me along as well. When we got there, the mother was running late, so we sat in the living room and talked to the kids. The little girl that we were babysitting and also the teenage daughter were in there. So as the conversation naturally runs its course, the little girl mentions the ghosts that she's seen and met and even felt. I'm a pretty happy-go-lucky sort of dude, so I edged along the topic of these ghosts, to which the little one happily obliged. However, I noticed that the older sister started to get a little nervous or anxious, and tried to talk over her younger sister. This intrigued me. The girl went on to describe all the ones that she has seen and felt, explaining that there are good ones and bad ones. 
So whatever, right? Just a silly kid's imagination running wild at night. Apparently they had already had somebody come in and cleanse the house though, meaning that it was a reality for the family after all. On a final note, the little girl also mentioned that she thinks they missed one. The cherry on top is that the most active room in the house was right beside where we were sleeping in the basement. Fast forward to the nighttime, and when we were trying to fall asleep, my girlfriend and I started to feel a bit nervous, and that feeling kept multiplying until I started conversing in my own mind with whatever was in the room with us. As I finished my sentence, saying something like, I know you're here, I felt ice-cold chills run from my left side to my right side, and as they took over my body, I stood up and said, Hello? Right to my girlfriend. Safe to say we spent the rest of the night upstairs. I don't know if it was just nerves or my mind playing tricks, but it was definitely weird. So this happened around seven years ago, in 2012 or 2013. I started high school, and the place I attended was in a different city from my hometown, so I stayed in the school's dorm. The place was on the outskirts of the city. It was a large area with two school buildings, two separated PE buildings, a study hall, a kitchen and cafeteria, and the dorm. It was a custom for freshmen to stay in the big bedrooms, the ones that could host up to 12 people. In the room that I was staying in, there were only seven girls, including me, throughout the whole year. Seven is a bad number in my country, similar to how some people don't like 13. Through the school year, we experienced really weird things happening. Every month, we gathered a handful of screws that weren't missing from anywhere. We found weird candy wrappings, old-style ones that nobody had had in the room. Once, three of us had to go home during the week because all of us had had some sort of accident. One time, our lock broke, which locked half of the group out and the other half in. The room was separated into three sections, and all three had double windows. One time, the middle inside window broke during the day and there were just a lot of other small things that happened. We usually joked about them, even though we were all a bit uneasy, because they were happening so often. And because they were so frequent, we just shrugged them off. Then, the scariest thing happened. It was March 13th. I remember this vividly, because we have a national holiday on the 15th, and that meant a long weekend. One of my roommates was a sleep talker and she usually fell asleep before everyone. We had a habit of making fun of her a bit because it was always gibberish to us. Well, not that night. She fell asleep pretty early and talked about her boyfriend in her sleep. We silently laughed at her and after a while, the others went to bed. Three other girls and I were sleeping in the last section, far from the door. We pushed together three beds and slept cuddled up most of the night. I was sleeping on one end of the beds, and the sleep-talking girl, Henriette, on the other end. There were two other girls between us, Yvette and Ata. I almost fell asleep when Ata let out a small scream next to me. I quickly sat up and saw that Henny was pulling Yvette's ponytail and was choking her. We quickly get her hands off of Yvette and cuddled up on the bed, trying to stay away from her while calling her name hoping that she would wake, but she didn't. Then she started to talk to us about, quote, the people who were locked up in the attic. She was talking about how they were free now, and they were getting closer. She told us that these people would kill us all. By that time, everyone in the room was freaking out. The girls in front kept telling her to cut it out, but the people in the back, where I was, we feared for our lives. I'm not a religious person anymore, but I was back then. So at one point, I started to quietly pray, hugging the two sobbing girls. 
I didn't even say two lines when Henny said in a menacing voice, Don't pray. That won't help you. One of the girls in the front screamed and turned the light on. It took us five minutes at least to wake up Henny, and when she woke up, she seemed terrified and started to cry and kept asking us what had happened. I left that school at the end of the school year, but that night still haunts me. A few weeks ago, I was talking to my mom. It was a Monday night, and she looked pretty tired, so I asked her what was up. She told me that the night before, at about five in the morning, she was woken by the sensation of being watched. She had her back to the wall, but she felt as though someone was behind her, laying in the bed with her. She felt a cold chill and was paralyzed with fear. After a few minutes, she finally convinced herself to look. Of course, there was nothing there, but it took her quite a while to fall back asleep. The funny thing is, at the same time in my room in the basement, which is nowhere near her, so her moving would not have woken me up, I was awoken by a sound, so I sat up to look, and there was a man standing at the end of my bed. Of course, it scared me so much, within a second I flung my covers off to sit up, but he was gone. There's a chair at the end of my bed, with no space to stand, and he couldn't have been that tall while sitting. We were both spooked. Today, I was sitting alone in my basement working on homework, and someone ran their fingers through my hair. I'm pretty sure our house is haunted. My story is from when I was growing up at my parents' house in Burton, Michigan. Since I was about seven or eight, all the way up until I moved out, I witnessed several odd occurrences. My dad was an over-the-road truck driver, so I was home with my mom most of the time. Weird things that have happened include tapping on the walls, voices, being touched, feeling like you're being watched, and even a full-on person that disappeared in front of me. There have been several instances where I, and my friends who I have never told this to, have heard chunks of conversation coming from other rooms or downstairs. When I went to investigate, it would immediately stop. I was home alone, the TV was off, and the windows were closed. There have been a few other events, such as tapping on walls, doors shutting, and very clear footsteps walking along the hardwood floors. Once, they even went past me so close that I could feel it in the floorboards. The creepiest thing was one day a friend and I were down in the basement, which consisted of a large family room, a laundry room, and my dad's workout room. The door to the workout room did not have a doorknob since they were refinishing the house. There was only a hole in the door for one. I don't remember why, but my friend and I looked through the hole and clearly saw a man sitting on a weight bench. She thought it was my dad. We didn't think anything of it until shortly after at dinner when I asked my dad why he wasn't at the table. I then learned that he was a few states away out on the road still. I had thought he came home. I told my mom and she immediately called the police thinking that there should have been someone in the house. She said she heard commotion in that room earlier in the day but she thought it was us. There was no sign of anyone being in there. Another creepy thing happened in the basement. Some friends and I were in the family room playing Nintendo 64, and clear as day, a man walked right past the double sliding laundry room doors. The room is like 30 by 8 and has a set of the bifold closet doors as an entrance. Almost all of my friends saw this. The man walked past, and right before he was out of sight, turned toward the wall and made a motion like he was opening a refrigerator door and putting something in. He then walked out of sight. We went in there to see who the hell it was and there was nobody there. 
I've been living on the other side of the state for three years, but my mom still lives there and is most of the time alone with the dog since my dad is still on the road a lot. She says that she still hears the conversations and the footsteps quite often and has seen the guy in the basement twice. I'm skeptical, but honestly, I don't know what to make of it. There have been multiple witnesses and I've tried to debunk everything, but I just don't know how to explain it. When I was in my late teens, early 20s, my dad moved into an old house, one of the oldest left standing in my town. Our town has a rich history with battles and rebellions. Through some research, I figured it was built for an earl back in the day. The house was split into two apartments. When he first moved in, I didn't experience a whole lot, just an overall feeling of strangeness there was a staircase that led to a solid wall. Hollow walls with no doors going into them. Certain rooms that were just freezing cold. It just always felt as if somebody was watching. After a few months, I experienced the first thing. What I thought was sleep paralysis. I had fallen asleep on the sofa watching TV. I woke up to feel somebody breathing on my cheek. I could clearly hear the breaths right next to me, and I was frozen. After what felt like an hour, I managed to move, and at that exact moment, a distorted face came flying out of the corner toward me before disappearing. Maybe a month after this, I woke up in bed, and I could hear footsteps on the balcony outside my bedroom. I thought maybe somebody was trying to break in. It went on for maybe 10 minutes, I didn't investigate, but the next morning I asked my dad if he had heard anything, but he hadn't. We went outside to see if anything was disturbed, and there was a huge handprint, bigger than either of our hands, on the condensation on the balcony door. I freaked out, but my dad played it down. He's a massive skeptic. The next night he heard somebody on his balcony and ran out to see who it was. As soon as he got outside, all of our bins under the balcony were fallen over, but no one was to be seen. Another day I was in my bedroom. I had a guitar in the corner, and out of the blue it made a noise, as if somebody had strummed the strings. There weren't any windows open, and it wasn't just a breeze or something. I ran, but my dad again tried to explain it away. The next day he was in my room putting away clothes or something, and it happened again. He ignored it, and it happened again. He said something along the lines of, F off, I don't believe in ghosts. And he said that it sounded as if somebody hit the guitar. There was a bang and it fell over onto the floor. This was the first time he genuinely couldn't explain away what had happened. I think it actually rattled him a bit. A few weeks later, I got home from work at approximately 4 a.m. Nobody was home. I walked in, turned the three living room lights on and the TV, and turned the hall light on and went into the bathroom. I come back out and looked up from my phone, and all the lights in the living room were off, and the TV, but the hall and bathroom light were still on. I instantly started texting my friend to come get me, when boom, all the lights turned back on, and the TV too, at top volume. I put it down to some electrical issue. I was naturally scared, but I tried to rationalize. Again, I fell asleep on the sofa, and I woke up to the door handle of the sitting room door, slowly turning. It was loud since it was an old house, and I got out of there. It took me a while to go back to the house after that. When I eventually did, I brought a friend to stay the night. We were sitting in the living room, and the neighbor in the other apartment came onto our landing, just outside the door, and started screaming, like full belt, high-pitched screaming, then just started loudly pacing back and forth on the landing, talking and chanting to himself. 
We couldn't figure out what he was saying, but it was absolutely terrifying. From speaking to my dad afterwards, he said that the neighbor had just started doing this one night a week or so prior, every single night. Numerous other events have happened. My dad's CD player turning itself on, leaving a room to come back and seeing a door that had been closed was now open, things going missing and appearing somewhere else, weird sounds at night. My dad has since moved from there, but everybody that I've talked to that has been in that house has mentioned that they just feel uneasy there, that there was something else there. I don't know, maybe it's all in my head, but I think something legitimate was happening in that house. This is a story about a house I lived in a year ago near my IT campus in the west of Ireland, which I believe was haunted. To begin, before living there, I was always pretty skeptical of haunted houses, and for good reason. As a teenager, we would often visit haunted houses in our locality, which never proved to be so, at least while we were present there. A few days after moving into our new college house for our final year of college, my friends and I went out to do some shopping and get food. Upon arriving back, we noticed that someone had left the oven on. We each denied it, but we knew that someone had to have left it on because it was on. Looking back, this was probably the first unexplained incident, as thinking about it, nobody even had food to put in the oven. Over the following few weeks, we started to notice odd things happening. Creaks, groans, and movements from out the corner of our eyes. At this point, two of the housemates were convinced of a haunting. However, myself and another were still not so convinced. It was soon only me that was left unconvinced, as one day while the other non-believer was home doing study, they looked up to see a face peering at them before vanishing. It finally clicked for me when I woke up one night just before Christmas to see a very large man, or what I believed to be a man, staring at me from my wardrobe. Then things started to get really strange. Boot prints started to appear on the ceiling, making tracks across the roof by the year's end. And one of my friend's girlfriends swore she saw him upstairs in the room when he'd been downstairs with me all along. Our shower, for which there are three switches that you need to turn it on, would come on in the middle of the night. And one room off the kitchen would send shivers down our spines any time we went in there. There was one night in particular which really scared me. I always locked my door before going to bed, and I distinctly remember doing this that night. When I awoke in the night, I could see the large man again, this time at the end of my bed. I shut my eyes telling myself it was just a dream and went back to sleep. The next morning, my door was wide open, and so were all the doors in my wardrobe and the guys had told me it sounded like I was dragging my school bag from one end of the room to the other all night. So many other things happened in that house, but this has gone on long enough. I just decided to tell this story after telling a Galway person about living in the estate without saying which house I lived in, and he told me of a creepy haunted house at the back of the estate, which a family he knew had moved out of a few years prior. When I told him what number it was and how I knew, he almost fell out of his chair. At least I know I'm not alone. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. We all got out of the house unscathed, but it really made believers out of all of us. My story is about the house I lived in until I was five. My dad lived there after the divorce, and I visited often. It had been a family house on my dad's side of one kind or another since the late 1940s. It's also a house that's haunted. The whole family has ghost stories, most people more than one, 
and most of them involve the staircase that goes to the second floor. It's the first thing you see when you walk into the house. The staircase has been replaced six times, and I'm fairly sure that that's not normal in any house. Family legend says that the house, which was built in 1920, was the site of a murder side in the early 1940s. Supposedly, the owners right before my grandparents told them that the owners before them were a young man and his new wife who were hoping to start a new family. The story goes that the husband came home from work early one afternoon and went upstairs looking for his wife. One of the bedrooms has a door that opens directly to the top of the stairs, which was also my bedroom as a kid in the 70s. As he comes up the stairs, he's treated to an ever-expanding view of his wife and the neighbor guy having a good time in the guest bed. Instead of yelling or anything, he quietly goes downstairs into the back room, grabs his hunting rifle, and then goes back upstairs where he kills the wife and the neighbor. Then he calmly gets a length of rope from the garage and hangs himself from the second floor banister in the stairwell. The house sat empty for a while. The next family, the one selling the house to my grandparents, got the house for dirt cheap. They redid the stairwell, staircase number two, and supposedly lived there 18 months before deciding to sell. My grandparents didn't really think much of it, mostly because they were pregnant, had three kids, the house was cheap, and they were poor. They went on to have nine total kids, and every single one of my aunts and uncles has stories about ghosts in that house. I have over 40 cousins, and they all have stories about ghosts and unexplained events in the home. Most of the stories involve seeing a hanged man, or a dark shape in the stairwell, a young nervous woman on the second floor, or an older woman that tends to sleeping children. Some experiences involve strange occurrences, like furniture and items that move or break when no one else is in the room. Some of the stories are scary, some are nice, but everyone has at least one, and usually they have several. After graduating high school, I was in and out of college and in and out of jobs. For a short period of time, I lived in this house during a summer when I was between jobs. My grandfather and my dad technically lived there, but stayed with other family members and girlfriends and were almost never home. A friend of mine was with me on the night that some weird things happened. She didn't officially live there, but she was basically living with me. I had told her about all the ghost stories and paranormal stuff, and we decide to dig out my grandmother's old Ouija board, the same one that I have now, and try to contact the spirits. We get everything out, put our fingers on the planchette, and nothing happens. The planchette doesn't want to move. So we set the mood, get out the incense, light the candles, and nothing happens. By now, I'm bored, it's 3 a.m., it's summer in New York, and it's kind of stuffy and hot inside. So I decide that I want to go to the back porch where it's cooler. My friend agrees and we get up, leave the board on the bed, and as we're grabbing shoes, we hear something fall off the bed. It's the planchette. We both jump up and then laugh because it was obviously on the edge and just fell, right? Except, we were both pretty sure the planchette hadn't been anywhere near the edge, and had in fact been in the very middle of the bed. We try and nervously shrug it off, and then we're like, ooh, maybe it wants to talk to us. Being silly, we decide to ask one more question before we go out. This time, the planchette wants to move, and starts circling as soon as our fingers touch it. Before we finish the question, what is your name, it goes to, no. We laugh. Okay, alright, you don't want to tell us your name. How old were you when you died? Planchette slips quickly across the board to, no. Fine, alright, alright, what message do you have for us? Again, it goes straight to no. Now I'm figuring by this point it's my friend pushing it, 
because this is not any weak tentative moving around the board. It's forceful, and she is known for kind of messing around. So I basically grab the planchette and half jokingly, half seriously, throw it next to her on the bed. I was a little bit miffed at her for pushing it around and not giving it a chance. Besides, if you're going to be so obviously pushing the planchette, you should at least make the answers interesting. I say, I'm done, that was fun, but let's go to the back porch and smoke. As soon as I stand up, we hear the sound of a door slamming downstairs so hard that the windows rattled from the force of it. There are only three doors downstairs. The ones to the front door and back room had been closed and locked for hours, and the bathroom door was a piece of crap that could barely close, let alone slam. My dad and my grandfather were out of state visiting relatives, so I knew it wasn't them coming home. Neither of us wanted to go check on what had made the noise, but we left the room and we went to see that the stairwell was oddly dark. It was like all the shadows had just collected there. Like that part of the room was way darker than the rest. It was just so pitch black in that stairwell that I couldn't see beyond the first step of stairs. The rest of the landing is lit normally by some moonlight coming in the lone window on the second floor landing. But it just seemed as if that bit of light stopped at a wall as soon as it reached the stairs. The dark cloud in the stairwell seemed to move and shift a strange inky blackness that looked thick. At this point in time, the stairs are a wrought iron spiral staircase that my dad had put in. This was the fourth time the stairs had been replaced. They weren't very safe to climb down even when you could see. So I inched to the center of the room and pull the light switch so we can see what we're doing and not break our necks on the staircase. And of course the light pole comes off in my hand. No light. I looked to my friend thinking, okay, the roiling pitch black shadows in this stairwell must be my imagination. She can probably see just fine, so I would just follow her down. But no, she's staring at the stairwell with wide eyes full of terror. She turns to me and says, why the hell is it so dark? At this point, I realize that she can see it too. So I push her back into the room and slam the door shut behind us. I had one of those push button locks, so I quickly locked it. I turned back into the room and my friend is stock still staring at the floor by the bed. The Ouija board and the planchette are sitting perfectly centered on the floor. The planchette on no. And that would normally be fine, but we were sure that we had left the Ouija board in the middle of the bed with the planchette a good few feet away from it. I have never done a room cleansing and protection and closed a Ouija board so fast in all my life. We went on the rest of the night chain smoking, huddled in a corner, twitching and just trying to tell each other happy stories. Morning comes and of course everything is fine and normal and we laugh at ourselves because it was probably just the nerves and staying up too late. By the time the coffee was done brewing, we had all but convinced ourselves that everything that had happened was due to overactive imaginations. We go to the backyard to check the vegetable garden and hang out on the porch drinking coffee. We find some crushed tomato plants next to the tree by the porch. And then we find some cigarette butts in a spot behind the tree where you can see my bedroom window, but can't be seen in the dark. I guess it's a good thing we didn't go out at the witching hour. Coincidence? Overactive imaginations? Still freaks me out to this day. In a weird way, it was like the house was protecting us. Like it knew that we shouldn't go outside. I've looked for years trying to find any shred of truth to the murder side story. I was able to find that the house was built in 1920. And although I can't find any paper evidence of specifically a murder side, a search of the county coroner's records do show gun murders and hanging sides in that town in the 1940s. In town, the story was common knowledge. Everybody in the family knew it. The neighbors knew it. Was it true? I don't know. 
I would think that there would be more records of something as sensational as that, especially in the early 1940s. However, while researching the history of the house, I did find another true tale that's even older, from a regional newspaper dated March 16th of 1896, which is coincidentally the same day I found the story. It read, killed a woman and himself. Thomas P. was enraged because Minnie M. scorned him. Thomas P. killed Minnie M. this morning at the farm half a mile north of here and then killed himself. Both were in the employ of Mrs. M. He was infatuated with her, but she gave him no encouragement. He threatened a few days ago that he would kill her. The farm mentioned in the article is where my house was built and the street is named for the family that owned the farm. We moved into our first home in February of 2016. It was an old home built in the early 1900s in the historic part of town. I loved it. All the hand-carved woodwork and glass doorknobs with skeleton locks. It was exactly what I wanted, and it was perfect for myself, a 22-year-old female at the time, and my husband, 27-year-old male at the time. I was three months pregnant with our first, and we were so excited to start our family. As we got settled in, we noticed that the house was very noisy. I rarely have my home quiet due to having tinnitus, and we always need some kind of background noise to drown it out. On the rare occasion that the house was quiet, there was always lots of creaking and mostly moving coming from the loft-style attic we had. We shook it off as the house settling and being old. At least that's what my dad told us. So we moved on. Spring came and we were scrambling to get ready for the baby. The house needed a lot of work, but we were determined to get it done. The first major encounter was on a beautiful spring day. It was the weekend and my husband and I were spending our day off working on the house. I was cleaning the kitchen and he was working on my car in our detached garage. The way this home was built you could see the detached garage from the window that's above the kitchen sink. I would glance out every now and then and see what he was up to. A little time passed, and I hadn't looked out at him. I started doing the dishes, and I heard him walking into the living room toward the kitchen. I could feel his presence there, so without turning around, I said, Hey, babe. No answer. Wondering why he didn't answer me, I looked back over my shoulder, only to be met with the dark silhouette of a man standing between the living room and the kitchen. In the blink of an eye, the figure was gone. Unsure of what I had just seen, I yelled through the window for my husband, who was still in the garage and had been the whole time. He came in and I frantically told him that somebody was in the house. He immediately went to grab his weapon and checked all over the house but nothing was there. In all of the years we lived at that house, not once did my husband see our little roommate, but I, I saw him all the time, out of the corner of my eye, peeking around corners. But more than anything, I saw him looking into the living room from the staircase that led to the attic. In the beginning, he frightened me, but after a while, I just kind of got used to him being there. I even spoke to him sometimes, telling him that I'm okay if he stays in the attic and asking him to leave my baby alone. He seemed to have agreed since in the last five years my son lived there and he never saw him. When we went to sell our home, the realtor brought us some historical information she had found regarding the house and our neighborhood. We found out that our house and our neighbor's house was built by a brother and sister. Our home was the brothers. Their last name was the same as our current neighbor, so I figured he was most likely a descendant. I asked him one day, and he told me that the sister was his mom, and his uncle owned our home. 
He said that he was a kind man who lived alone and died in the home many years ago. I asked him about the attic, and he said that that was his uncle's favorite place in the whole house. He kept all of his trinkets and projects up there and would just spend hours working on things up there. I didn't tell him I believed my house was haunted. He didn't seem like the type who would believe me. Our home was listed and it sold within the same day. Sometimes I wonder about the man in the attic, if the new owners are nice to him, or if they've even noticed his presence. I do hope they'll give him his space, as they are only passers-by in his home, like we once were. I used to live with my mom and her ex-boyfriend in a really big house. It was around 6,000 square feet, and it gave me bad vibes from the very start. Whenever I voiced it to my mom and her ex, they would just brush it off and tell me that I was imagining things. They were always traveling and going places, while I had to stay behind because of my job. I was okay with this. I enjoy being alone. I was about 19, and after my friends had left for the night, I did my nightly rounds throughout the house. I would always check to make sure that all the doors were locked and all the lights were off. Once I made sure of that, I went to my bathroom to get ready for bed. My bedroom was the only one on the main floor. It was a four bedroom house, meaning that there were three upstairs, one being directly over my room and bathroom. My room and bathroom are separated by a small hallway, which can be closed off by a sliding door meaning that there was a door to my bedroom and to my bathroom, which I always left open because I could close off that little hallway, so it was still private. I start washing my face, and as I'm doing so, I hear what sounds like footsteps directly above me. I freeze in place and listen. They stop. I shrug it off and continue. It's late, and I'm just hearing things, so I go back to washing my face. Then it happens again, but this time a little louder. Again, I freeze. I know that I'm not just hearing things, but what can I do? They stopped, and so I went back to washing my face. Then it happened again. I stop again, and then I hear and actually feel one of the loudest bangs I've ever heard in my life. It was like a 400 pound person jumped off of a bed onto the ground. That's what I heard. I felt the rumble. If that wasn't enough, right after that, my bedroom door slammed shut. I'm freaking out at this point, and I run into my room to grab my machete. I thought that somebody was in my house, so I run to the kitchen yelling, whoever's in here, I'll kill you. I still have soap like dripping down my face onto the ground too. Seeing that all the doors are still locked, I run back into my bathroom and rinse off my face. I packed a bag and called my best friend. I told him what was happening and he says, get the F out of there. So I keep him on the phone as I finish packing a bag and get outside into my car. As I'm pulling out of my driveway, I notice something upstairs. Every single light is turned on. And I know for a fact that just 20 minutes before when I had checked everything, they were off. I didn't even think twice. I just kept reversing and didn't look back at the house. I've seen enough scary movies to know that there would have been a figure in one of those windows staring at me had I looked back. I'm sure of it. I went back the next day to see if somebody actually did break in, but there was no sign of forced entry. All the doors were still locked. Nothing was missing. All of the light upstairs had also been turned back off. Fast forward six months and we move out. My mom then tells me that the house was turned into a hospice after the original owner from the 1930s was widowed and got lonely. She turned the house into a place for those who didn't have any family to die peacefully so they wouldn't be alone. That explains an awful lot.
All of these things happened at my now ex-boyfriend's house. I would spend a lot of time at his house overnight as his neighborhood had more things to do and his bedroom was more private than mine. We were both 19 to 21 during this time period. First, I should mention that his family practices the Yoruba religion and would leave water and offerings for individual deities. They were very in tune to that aspect of the universe. I had also felt growing up that I could feel things and spirits. Not necessarily communicate, but I could feel them and acknowledge them if I didn't think they were dangerous, and was generally chill and not really scared as long as I knew that I wasn't doing something to upset them or vice versa. Whenever I encountered these things, I just sort of had this thought of like, oh, that's a ghost, and then I kind of moved on. In his house, his bedroom had a door that led down a flight of stairs into the backyard, and also into the basement. Basically, you come down the stairs, do a U-turn, and bam, you're looking at the basement. If you go straight just a couple of steps, then you're in the backyard. He has a washer dryer down there, and there was also some storage. It was dark, damp, and had a concrete floor. Not really a place you want to hang out in. Occasionally, we would go down to get the laundry, and I always found myself looking into the back of the basement, and just knowing that I was not welcome to pass any farther than the dryer. Even at the dryer, I can only explain it as clear words popping into my head. You're not supposed to be here. It was in my own voice, but it would always leave quickly. And sometimes, just in case, I would give a nod of respect toward the back of the basement. I avoided going down there as much as I could. Additionally, sometimes when in bed late at night, I would hear creaking on the stairs. At first, I summed it up to an old house settling and changing with the temperature. But over time, I could not deny that it was the distinct sound of footsteps. It would always stop by the door to the basement, and I would stare at the door, waiting for it to open. But it never did. One day, we were sitting at the kitchen table with his mom and dad, and I don't remember how it got brought up. But I mentioned that I always felt unwelcome, and like I wasn't supposed to be in the basement. I also mentioned that the words, you're not supposed to be here, would repeat in my head. His mom and dad shot a wide-eyed glance at each other. I said, what? Very matter-of-factly, his mom says, there's the ghost of an old man who stays down there. I immediately felt validated and got chills, and described exactly where I felt unwelcome. She confirmed that he does hang out in the very back of the basement. She also told me that sometimes she'll leave a shot of whiskey for him when his activity picks up. He's apparently cranky by nature, but that seems to calm him down for a few weeks. She said that he was harmless, but I already felt that. He just didn't like me in his space. She left some whiskey for him the next day, and I think spoke to him and somewhat told him who I was. The feeling of unwelcomeness never left, and I would still hear the creeping on the stairs, but I made sure to acknowledge him whenever I went to the basement, and I never went into his space at the back. Bonus, his sister's room is on the same level, and when she was a kid, she used to have nightmares of a girl crying in her room and swears that as she got older, she has seen her curled up in a ball on her floor when she wakes up in the middle of the night, and she'll hear a random cry if she's in her room alone during the day. All in all, a very strange experience. My house has always kind of had weird, unexplainable events happening in it, but nothing worthy of really telling. I've heard sudden scurrying footsteps, slight banging in the kitchen, stuff like that. 
I don't know where it comes from or why it happens, but I usually just figure it's a ghost. Today, though, another weird event happened, except that it was way worse than anything else. I was home alone while my dad was at work. I slept very late the night before, so I was still asleep late into the afternoon. I woke up at about 12.30 p.m. to my dog barking. I sleep with her in my room, so it woke me up instantly. She was on the floor in front of the bedroom door. I went over to comfort her to make her stop barking. I didn't really think much of it. I figured she had just heard a noise outside. So I picked her back up, checked the time, laid down, and turned over to try to continue sleeping. I was slightly worried because her barking usually means that she heard something loud. But I tried not to think about it and went back to sleep. I suppose it's also worth noting that I was facing the window next to my bed when I fell asleep. About two or three minutes later, I heard loud footsteps in the grass outside. My dog started barking again, so I tried to silence her out of panic. It sounded like it was right by my window. A big black silhouette sprinted past the window. My window has blinds over it, so the details were obscured. The window is about four feet tall. If you were five foot tall and stood by the window outside, your head would barely be visible. But this silhouette covered the entire window top to bottom. So given the height of the window and all that, and based on what I could see, I figured this thing had to be like 10 to 11 feet tall. It was also about as thick as a third of the window. Whatever it was, this thing was huge. It basically looked like a tall rectangle running by. There was a small crack in the blinds near the bottom where you could peek out and see outside. I only had time to glance at it, but I saw the color black, probably part of that figure. Another thing about the footsteps, I didn't hear any footsteps indicating that somebody was approaching. The sound of the footsteps basically just appeared next to my window and quickly faded out as soon as the thing passed by. There was no sound indicating that it had run off either. It just stopped. It was like it only existed to pass my window and then vanished. I heard some leaves crunching when it ran by, so I definitely would have heard it if it had approached or departed in the same way. This all happened in the span of one or two seconds. I was scared, so I picked up my dog and stared at the crack in the blinds for about a minute, expecting to see something happen again. Nothing did, so I just went back onto my bed and decided to call my dad. I asked him if he could come pick me up and take me to his work since I didn't want to be home alone anymore. I tried to whisper and tell him everything that had happened. He agreed and began to drive to the house. It took about a half an hour. I just sat on the bed, trying to calm myself with phone games. I occasionally looked over to see if anything happened, but luckily, nothing did. Eventually, my dad came home. I left my room to go talk to him about what had happened, and apparently something else happened that I didn't know about. Outside, on the porch, we have a big umbrella pole placed inside of a hole in the wooden table so that it wouldn't fall over. It's been through extremely windy nights, but it's never fallen over. The umbrella is practically embedded in that little hole, so it's very sturdy. My dad told me to look outside. The entire umbrella was on the ground, as though somebody had pulled it out and then tossed it there. The wooden table was still oriented upright, so the umbrella wasn't just knocked over. If it were, the table would have fallen with it. The only thought that I have is that the weird creature I heard is what knocked over the umbrella, or rather took it out and threw it on the ground. And that's when my dog first started barking and woke me up. I probably just didn't hear it since I was asleep. I left to my dad's work and I'm still there telling this story. I honestly don't know what's happening. I don't know if it's haunted. I don't really know what's going on but I definitely feel unsafe at home.
My friends lived a few houses down in an old house they were renting. They often talked about the house being haunted. They said that things would move by themselves or disappear, only to reappear later. They mostly talked about this pair of jeans that was set out when my friend was getting ready for work. When he went to go get them, they were gone. He figured he must have forgotten and just set them down elsewhere, so he started looking around. He couldn't find them, so he just got a different pair and then went to work. When he came home, they were folded up on the kitchen table. He asked his wife where she had found them. She said she hadn't seen them. They went to the kitchen and she claims she has no idea how they got there. One time I walked over to their house and I was going in the side door. As I reached for the doorknob, I saw it twist and open up just a few inches. I thought it was them telling me to come in. So I waited for them to say something. After a few seconds, I opened the door and went in. I said hello and waited. Then I went into the house looking for them and calling them. That's when I realized the house was empty and they weren't home. I got this really funny feeling and then I started to leave. And that's when I heard a baby crying in their bedroom. I thought, what in the world is going on? But I walked into the bedroom and the crying stopped and there was no baby. I got out of there as fast as I could. They later told me that that was the kind of stuff they put up with all the time, but they did move shortly after that. I was 13, soon to be 14, when I moved into this house. I was always very connected to the spiritual world because my mom was a very strong believer, and I was very curious about this topic. Everything was quite normal when we moved in, even though I had a weird feeling about a corner in my parents' room. That corner gave me a feeling of fear. Whenever I came into my parents' room, I got this unwelcoming feeling and an urge to leave, but I didn't think too much of it until I started to feel like I was being watched whenever I was home alone. The first time I really thought about the house being haunted was when my mom told me that for a second, she had felt like time stopped and she heard a male voice asking for help. At first I thought she was just trying to scare me, but she was genuinely very concerned about it. Even though that was pretty scary, my mom and I decided not to pay attention. We thought that if we just ignored it, it would stop and go away. A few months passed and nothing happened, at least nothing like what my mom had experienced. I still felt like I was being watched and I just couldn't stay in my parents' room, but the energy was really off. I was really depressed and my mom and dad started to fight a lot. My mom and I started to fight too, my mom was also feeling depressed, and our life just took a downhill turn since we moved. Everything got worse when one of my cats died. After my little buddy died, I started to feel the strong smell of cigarettes and men's perfume and a masculine energy around the house. It wasn't the perfume or cologne that my dad used. My mom came to me asking if I had started smoking. And I said, no, of course not, but that I had smelled the same smells as well. Then my mom told me that she had started to have these weird dreams about a man. I have to admit that while I felt very afraid of what was going on, I also felt this weird excitement to know more. And I started to do more research about paranormal activity. Now, I don't know if that triggered it to get worse or not, but boy, did it. I was now constantly feeling observed and oppressed. Then, one afternoon, when I was home alone, I was talking to my friend on the phone, when I suddenly heard a loud noise coming from the front door. My dog started barking like crazy, and I immediately thought that somebody was trying to break in. I slowly went there to see what was going on, and I quickly discovered that there was nobody outside. I really started to freak out. I went back into the living room and continued to talk to my friend to calm down. I hear another loud noise. The door of my parents' room had just closed itself. 
I opened it to see if the window was open, trying to find an excuse for what had just happened. But the window was closed. At this point, I was losing it. When my mom got home, I told her what had happened. She told me to just ignore it. That if there was something in the house, it was just trying to scare me. And that if it was bad, it would feed on my fear. I thought that what she said was just a little too Hollywood, honestly. But I still followed her advice and played it cool. A little bit after that, on another afternoon, I fell asleep on the couch. I woke up with a loud A in my ear. It was the voice of my mom. And I swear to this day, I can still hear the voice of my mom in my head, crystal clear. I even thought that my mom was already at the house, but it turned out there was no one there. Then another cat died. Two years at the house and two of my cats had died. If I'm being honest, all I could think about was how in horror movies, the pets always die. I was terrified of the house. I avoided it at all costs, and I didn't like to be home alone. I just couldn't handle the fear at this point. I constantly felt watched. I couldn't even go to the bathroom at night. It's like I wasn't even living in my house. I just felt extremely unwelcomed there. Then my mom started to have dreams about all of us being dead, and we always died in the worst types of ways. I was also having very vivid dreams. Some of them I remember clearly to this day. My mom then decided to do a cleansing to the house and everything calmed down for a while. Then my mom told me that when she was trying to put my little sister to sleep, she made a gesture like she was offering her pacifier to someone. And when she asked her, she told her she was offering it to the lady. My mom completely froze and didn't say anything. I wasn't sure what to think anymore, and by now, those things just started to feel really normal. I was scared, but curious, and I wanted to see something, not just hear it or feel it. Through the whole time that this was going on, I felt excited to see something. Even though I wasn't sure how I would react, I still wanted it. Well, that day came when I was trying to sleep in my room. Everything was dark and I was facing the ceiling just whispering the lyrics of a song to try to get to sleep. I wasn't thinking about anything paranormal. And the funny thing is, in the moment when things were happening, I was never even thinking about the paranormal as a cause either. But I saw this light come from the corner of my room. I quickly looked and faced it, and I felt it looking back. Even though it was just a light, I could feel some kind of presence in it. When I processed what it was, I gasped, and it moved fast to the left, then to the right, then disappeared. When I tell this, it seems like it lasted minutes, but the truth is it only lasted for a couple of seconds. It was super fast. I can't really explain what I saw. It was like a lantern, but alive. I don't really know. It was white, and unlike the other things that happened, this one actually didn't make me feel scared. I did a little Google search after that, and I found out that what I had seen is typically called an orb, and the color white meant protection. At this point, I was very confused, but I had this feeling that the thing that I had seen was not the thing that was scaring me. I thought of my uncle who passed away when I was seven. Maybe the orb was him protecting me from whatever was in the house. Maybe not. All I know is that after that, everything calmed down. This was the last event that I can remember, and it happened in the very last year that I lived in the house. Shortly after all this, I moved. But now and then I think about that home. Why could I never go into my parents' room? Who was the man that asked my mom to help and appeared in her dreams? Was it him that made everything smell like cigarettes and cologne? Who was the lady? I never got any answers to these questions. One month after I moved, I had a dream. I was in my bed, and I knew I was sleeping, but I could see my room perfectly, and I remember thinking that a bad entity was there. Then I saw a very bright light that covered my vision, and I woke up feeling very protected. I think that was the last time that I felt like something was with me, at least at my house where I still live until this day. 
I have a lot of weird stories that have happened to me. But anyway, I moved to the haunted house when I was almost 14 and left when I was almost 18. And never for a second did I think I was crazy, even though nobody believed me other than my mom. And I get it, it sounds like scary movie stuff. But I hope you'll feel differently and actually believe my story. Because it did happen. And I still really miss my cats. The ghetto where I'm from is divided by a golf course. One side of the street is project housing, and the other side is nicer homes built in the 30s to 90s, before the projects were there. I lived in a 1934 two-bedroom house, bright yellow tile. I was 26, and I lived with my girlfriend who was 24. After living there a few months, my girlfriend started saying she felt uneasy in the hallway which was very small and had a crawl space in the ceiling. I brought my dad over to get up there and take a look because, you know, could be something scary up there. He found nothing except insulation. A while later, I took a nap for about two hours. My girlfriend was in the next room folding laundry after work. She comes to wake me up, shaking my shoulder. She asks how long I'd been asleep. I said a couple of hours. She said, so you didn't just walk through the house? I said, no. She said, but I just saw you walk through the hallway. I asked if she was sure and she said yes. I told her it wasn't me and there's no one else in the house. Fast forward a year. I'm trying to quit smoking and I lost my vape. My buddy had been staying at my house for a couple of weeks and he's helping me look for my vape. I walk out to the car and I get in the driver's seat. I'm digging between the seat and the gear shift and suddenly something or someone is talking into my ear, not whispering, speaking right into my left ear. There's that SOB right there, it says. I'm frozen. It's the dead of night. Nobody is around. My buddy is still inside. After about a minute of complete silence, I finally open the car door and go back inside. I tell him what just happened. That's when he goes, huh, probably the same person that calls my name at night. What? He'd been hearing somebody say his name from behind him on the couch he slept on at night ever since he started staying with me. I'm creeped out, but not enough to move. The rent was great and I was not easily shaken. Fast forward a few months. My mom comes over to pick me up and to go shopping. I throw on a shirt in front of the hallway and say, hey, how does this look for today? My mom turned around and her eyes go over my head. She starts to back up and tries to adjust her eyes. I said, what? She said that a black shadow had just gone up the wall behind me into the room behind me. I thought, oh, so now there's that. Fast forward a few months more and I'm watching TV in the living room with my buddy. We hear a loud bang. We go into the kitchen and all the cabinets are open. A single jar of Nutella is on the floor and a huge hole has been punched in the wall beside the refrigerator. Interesting, but I'm still not leaving. Fast forward a few more months. My buddy moved out my girlfriend and I broke up and she moved. I was living there alone for the first time. I go to lay down one night. My bed was freshly made, so the covers were tight. I cut the light and laid my head back. Suddenly, there's pressure on either side of my feet, like someone has one hand beside each side of my foot and is pressing down, as if you're looking over top of me. It lasted all of 30 seconds before I sat up and turned the light back on. Nothing there. Still not moving. Fast forward. I get a new girlfriend. She starts staying over. She says she sees faces in the mirror in the hallway. I'm like, yeah, weird things happen here. Nothing has ever tried to harm me, so I stay. This goes on for a couple of months, until one day I come home to my girlfriend on the porch. 
It's dark. She says she will not go back in that house while I'm gone. She convinces me to move. I'm in love. I want her to be comfortable. So we're in our new house and I'm on my laptop, going through old photos and videos that I took at the old house. I find videos of myself being recorded from my laptop, but I'm not pressing record. It was videos of me watching TV, working out, leaving my bedroom and walking through the house. It stops all on its own. All of the videos were about a minute or so long. I went to the courthouse and found records where the owner and also the town sheriff had died there of old age. And the community seems to believe that there was some kind of brothel there at some point, due to a red light on the porch. I'm sure that was just a rumor. One of the neighbors said someone had shot themselves in the house, but I couldn't find a record of that either. I wish I could go on about other instances at the old haunted house, but I've gone on long enough. It was 2009 to 2013, rent was 625, and honestly, I wish I had never left. I bought my first house nine months ago. It's a huge accomplishment for me. On the evening after I closed on the house, I had a little champagne toast in the new place. I invited my boyfriend, my sister, we'll call her Jenna, her four-year-old daughter, we'll call her Mary, my best friend, Aunt T, and my son and brother who live with me. It only lasted an hour or two. I gave everyone the tour. My best friend and Jenna wanted to stop in every room and talk about my plans for it. I ordered pizza. Like I said, we had a small champagne toast. My niece, Mary, had a great time running through the house. She and my sister have a 700 square foot apartment, so my place seemed huge to her. Mary loved my room. I have a closet in my room with a built-in pedestal kind of thing, so we sat her on it and joked that it could be her room. All in all, it was a good time. Everyone who didn't live there headed out at about the same time, starting with Jenna and Mary. It was a school night after all. Not even five minutes after Jenna and Mary left, my sister calls me, still driving home. She sounds shaken, and I was worried for a second that her car had broken down or she got into an accident, but no. Jenna said that she had asked Mary if she'd had a good time and if she liked Aunt Dee, that's me, and my new place. Mary said, yeah, I had fun with Aunt Dee, Aunt T and the little girl. My sister said she actually pumped the brakes on the car because her instinct was to stop the car in its tracks. The thing is, there were no other children in the house that night, just Mary. Jenna's not trying to scare Mary, but she wants to know more. So very gently, she asks, Oh, what little girl? Mary says, The one that was standing behind Aunt Dee all night. My sister presses her a little more and asks Mary what the little girl looks like. Mary says she has long black hair and she had on a pretty blue dress. My sister asked if the little girl had spoken to her. Mary said no, she was really shy, but they had fun chasing each other through the house and the little girl was sitting in her house, AKA my closet, when we opened the door. Mary hesitated to walk into the closet at first and I didn't know why. Now I know. So apparently I have a little ghost girl in my house. She likes my closet and me. My house was built in 1900, so it does have a long history, but I haven't looked into it yet. I haven't heard or seen a thing in this house since I moved in but I did not sleep well for the first few nights. Back in the 90s, my parents would often move from house to house. Before I was born and they were pregnant with my sister, they moved into a new house, complete with a lake in the backyard. 
It was pretty old, but still comfy. My parents thought it was all fine, until some strange things began to happen. For starters, they said that when taking showers, the radio would often switch to random static noises, the lights would flicker, and hair dryers would just shut off suddenly. All right, no big deal, just an old house, nothing strange at all. Of course, my parents started speculating some strange things were happening after living in it for a few months. One night, they had some friends over. This picture of a little boy was hanging on the wall, overlooking the living room. My parents joked around and talked about how it was evil or something. Just as they did that, all of the lights turned off, as if on cue. One night, both of them were sitting in bed, trying to fall asleep. My mom told me that while sleeping, this weird blowing noise blew right in her ear. She said something like, stop doing that, thinking that it was my dad. He said, I'm not doing anything. They both felt this weird blowing noise in their ear, like right next to their ears. I would honestly be terrified too. Then, finally, after having crazy and terrifying experiences, the last thing that happened was their breaking point. When getting home with groceries, the magnets on the fridge were strangely arranged differently than they had been before. Not only that, but while getting all of the bags out of the car, my mom swore that she saw a shadow flash by in the living room. My dad looked over and said that he saw it too. They both called the police thinking it was an intruder, but when the police arrived, they couldn't find anything. They ended up living there only six months. That was the last straw. When they moved out, there were some rumors going around that supposedly somebody had died in that lake behind their yard. When they came back to see the house a little while later, it had been condemned. I grew up in southern Pennsylvania, not far from Gettysburg. When I was eight years old, my parents decided to build a house on vacant property, surrounded by fields, and it was beautiful. I lived with both of my parents and my two older brothers, who were 15 and 17 at the time. Though I grew up in the area, we only stayed in this house for four years. My first night there was not what I expected it to be. I was laying in my bed and had just closed my eyes. Then I heard a voice that sounded like a soft whisper about six inches from my face say, help, help, over and over, just repeating the same word until I finally fell asleep. I tried my best to forget about it because I thought there was no way the house could be haunted. It was brand new. Certainly I was just tired. About a month goes by and I'm sitting on my bed doing what I used to love doing most, which was read. I glanced up and looked at my doorway because I had seen something out of the corner of my eye. At that moment, I had officially seen a full body apparition of what appeared to be a soldier from the 1800s but he didn't see me. He was just walking by my room very slowly. I still remember every detail of his appearance 20 years later. He was covered in blood and looked like he'd been shot or stabbed. This lasted for about five seconds. Still being creeped out, my curiosity got the best of me and I walked out of the room and searched all over the house, but I found nothing unusual. About a week or two goes by, and I'm in my bed, trying to fall asleep yet again, only to be disturbed before I even had the chance to close my eyes. This voice was very deep and masculine. I couldn't understand a word it was saying because it was speaking in a different language. It sounded annoyed and angry. It happened every night at the exact same time for two weeks before it suddenly and inexplicably stopped. After that, I had a night terror. I am absolutely terrified of spiders. I had woken up in the middle of the night and I could see what looked like a tarantula crawling on me in bed. 
I swear it was there. I definitely saw it. I was panicking. My dad came in the room to check on me and found that everything was okay. No spider. Before I could fall asleep though, I heard what sounded like two men laughing right next to my bed. At this point, I was getting used to all the messed up things that were happening. One summer, I stayed up late every night so I could watch Hannah Montana at midnight. One night, when the clock struck midnight, I heard my back door downstairs open. Then I would hear a woman say my name, as if she was calling for me or looking for me. I'd hear the door shut, followed by footsteps, and then there would be silence. This happened every night for almost two months. It never failed. It didn't even bother me at this point. I knew it wasn't my mother because she worked 12 hour night shifts at the hospital almost every night. There were no other females around, but one night it too stopped altogether. I was up at midnight and nobody had called my name. I went to sleep and everything felt peaceful for once. I woke up to the sound of someone knocking on my bedroom door. I looked at the clock on my cable box. It was 3 a.m. I assumed that it was one of my brothers and I told them to go away. But then the doorknob started turning, but it wouldn't open because the door was locked. I have always slept with my bedroom door open, always. And I definitely wasn't the one who locked it. The knocking and doorknob rattling went on for what felt like forever. And then it stopped. A few minutes later, I hear what sounds like scratching at the door. I think to myself, what the heck? Is it my cat? But then the knocking, scratching, and turning of the handle start happening at the exact same time. No way in hell my cat could do all three at once, let alone the knocking and turning of the doorknob. It would happen for about 30 seconds, and then it would stop. It happened at least five times. Sometimes the knocking would be so hard it sounded like pounding and my whole door was shaking. Whatever was on the other side of that door really wanted to come in. It got so bad that it woke my dad up. He heard all of the commotion and as soon as he opened his bedroom door, it all stopped instantly. He called out to me, but I was too afraid to say anything. He went back into his room and closed the door but the same scenario repeated itself three more times. My dad made me sleep in his room. We never spoke about it, ever. Things seemed to be fine for a while. Then whatever was in my house struck again. My brother had gotten up to go to the bathroom. He turned the hallway light on, noticed that my bedroom door was closed as it was across the hall from the bathroom. He comes out of the bathroom and the hallway light is off and my bedroom door was wide open. He looked inside my room and saw me still sleeping. Everyone else in the house was sleeping. He woke my dad and brother and told them what had happened. They searched the house for a possible intruder but found nothing. More months go by and we are all awoken by our smoke detector going off in the middle of the night. We all go downstairs in a panic just to find out that the stove was on, full blast, big flames on top of the stove, in the middle of the night. What the hell? One day, it was just my father and I. My mom was at work as usual. My oldest brother was at work and my other brother was at baseball practice. I'm downstairs, but I hear what sounds like somebody running upstairs. Forgetting that both of my brothers aren't home, I go up the stairs and see somebody run into my brother's room and slam the door. It was loud. I thought for sure it was my brother, and I wanted to go in there and see what he was up to and why he would be running around like that. I opened the door, and nobody was there. I watched the door close right in front of me. I felt sick to my stomach just standing there, realizing that the only other person that was home was my father and he was in the shower. I continued to see weird things all the time. One day, in the middle of the day, I saw my German Shepherd run upstairs full blast as if she was chasing something, but I never saw what she was chasing. 
whatever it was, went under the bed, and she was viciously growling at it. At first I thought it was my cat, until I saw him sitting on top of the bed. It appeared that he had been sleeping until we burst in and woke him up. One night, my cousin was spending the night. We were walking through the living room when she saw the reflection of another person on the glass of our big bookcase. Another time, we were in my backyard, and she told me that she saw somebody looking at us through the window. I guess this happened on a few occasions, but it wasn't anybody we knew. My brothers almost never had friends over, so that was not a possibility. I remember one day I was walking down the basement stairs. When I got to the bottom of the stairs, I saw what looked like another apparition, except the apparition looked exactly like my older brother, but it also didn't look human. It was almost white and blue, and his eyes were pure black, like something trying to be him. When he saw me, his eyes got really big, and he looked terrified, and ran away and went into the crawl space. I ran upstairs to find out that my brother wasn't even home. I never went back down there after that. A few months later, I was with the same brother, and we were in the living room watching George Lopez late at night. I'm into the show, but he muted the TV. He looked at me and said, Did you hear that? I told him no, I hadn't heard anything. We sat still for a minute, and then I did hear it. Together, we both heard footsteps coming up the basement stairs. My brother grabbed a baseball bat, and we went to the basement to investigate, but to no avail. The rest of our family was sleeping upstairs. The next night, my mom was up late at night sitting at the dining room table, doing whatever it was she was doing. Around 3 a.m., the shelf in the dining room flew off the wall and put a hole in the wall that was adjacent to it. We looked at the nails in the wall that had held the shelf in place, and they were still perfectly straight. We moved out of that house when I was 12. I still experience paranormal things, but nothing that comes close to what I dealt with in that house. I believe there were a lot of spirits there, and I'd love to know about what happened there previously to cause so much activity. We were a regular church-going family, so I'm sure if there was anything demonic there, that probably pissed it off even more. But I don't know. What do you think it could have been? Ghosts? Demons? Poltergeists? All of the above? What's your story? I live in a small town in Canada, and my house was built in 2007. Before that, it was farmland. My great-grandmother and her kids immigrated here from Ecuador in the 70s. Throughout my family's bloodline, every woman in the family is believed to have had some kind of sixth sense. My great-grandmother's sister was a powerful medium. My grandmother's older sister is also a medium and reads palms. My mother does tarot readings and informs me on her past experiences with ghosts when she lived in Toronto with my grandmother and great-grandmother. Ever since I was a baby, I've been seeing ghosts everywhere. My grandma told me that I would point to the corner and talk to it like somebody was there. I'm 16 now, and I've been living in this house for the past 15 years. Paranormal experiences have happened to me here for as long as I can remember so it's just a normal thing now. My mom doesn't encourage me thinking about those things, though. She tells me it's all in my head. A month ago, my dad's parents came up from Texas to renovate our basement. On their last day, my grandpa told me that he thought our basement was haunted because of all the voices he was hearing near the cold room. I told my mom about this, and she lowered her voice and told me that she had lied to me. She had said that it was all in my head, but she'd been telling me that to protect me. It wasn't all in my head, and that I had been seeing ghosts. She used to keep me in her room as a child and pray to God to keep the spirits away from me, because she saw them too. So far, I've noticed one ghost or entity or something 
that keeps reappearing in different places. I first saw her when I was eight or nine. My cousin and I saw her in my closet. She had pale skin, long blue-black hair, and wore a deep blue dress. The most notable feature is that her nails were painted a shiny metallic blue that glistened in the dark. She held out her hand to us and we ran away. The second time was when I was 11. At the time, I had a loft bed that was up near my ceiling. My bedroom is on the second floor. I was lying in bed after coming home from school and I saw that lady slowly walk by my window. Her nails were still painted that shiny blue. It was the most notable ghost I've ever seen. Ghost in quotations because I'm not really sure if that's what she is. Apart from that, my younger brother and I, Lex, both saw a glass cup on our table slowly slide over to the other side of it. I always see figures in my room and hear music in the shower drain. My entire family hears people talking in our bedrooms. My brother and I have started to wake up with long scratches all over us. The house was blessed by a priest when it was made, but I don't think it worked, or maybe it wore off. I'm getting scared, and I don't know what to do. Update. We had a priest from our local church come to bless our house again, but I don't think it was effective. A few weeks ago, I had the house to myself with my brothers while my parents and grandparents were out. Lex and I were watching TV in the living room when we saw our youngest brother, Michael, age 10, sprint out of the washroom and into the dining room, which isn't visible from where we were. We didn't think anything of it until Michael came out of his bedroom on the second floor to get snacks. We were absolutely terrified and retreated upstairs. Maybe I'm just doomed to live in a house with ghosts. I live in a relatively old house in Scotland. I have always felt another presence at home, and I have believed in the paranormal since forever. It all started when my sister and I heard the floorboards creak in the middle of the night. When she went to check, nobody was there, and the entire family was fast asleep. A little while later, I woke up and I saw a little girl in my room just looking at me, before literally jumping and never seeing her again. Until recently, I always thought that I had tricked myself into imagining her as I remember dreaming about a child and playing with this girl. The other day, my sister heard a little girl giggling. She's the only girl in the house now. When she told me, I instantly connected this to seeing the little girl. But perhaps this could explain more occurrences as well. My sister once told me a while back that sometimes when she looks out of the corner of her eye at the doorways, she would see a shadowy figure darting from room to room. I didn't really believe her. Well, until it happened to me. I was sitting in my parents' bed because I sleep in a closet-sized room with no Wi-Fi, and I glanced up to see this shadowy figure skip into the bathroom. I immediately went to check to see if anybody was there, and to my surprise, the room was empty. But nothing will ever scare me as much as what happened about a year ago. I woke in the middle of the night or early morning, which is very unusual for me. I should mention that I sleep facing the wall as I hate being open to the rest of my room. I laid on my back for a brief second or two before hearing three perfectly synced and identical claps. At the time, I assumed some robber or burglar was checking to see if I was awake, so I bolted under the sheets and faced the wall, lying motionless as I was terrified. My brother and sister were away at the time, so I was home alone with my parents. In the morning, I asked them if it was them, and they said no. My parents have never been sleepwalkers or anything of the sort. After doing some research, I found out that apparently ghosts clap to communicate sometimes. My biggest regret is not looking to see who or what 
was clapping. My whole family believes me, though, excluding my skeptical brother. Can anyone explain this? Or has anyone experienced anything like it? I'd love to know. In 2006, I was 18 and had moved to Victoria, BC with my best friends. We were working as construction laborers for said friend's father, and he had put us up rent-free in a very old home close to downtown. Not directly related to this story, but from our living room, we could see Beacon Hill Park. It was literally 50 feet away. And the father's favorite local watering hole was the James Bay Inn pub which we frequented often. Both, I realized afterwards, were places of numerous accounts of paranormal activity. The Beacon Hill doppelganger is a well-known, well-documented, unbelievable story, and I suggest Googling it. The James Bay Inn pub was formerly a care center in the 1940s, and a national treasure of ours, Emily Carr, passed away in a room that is now the men's washroom for the pub. I did not experience anything at either location, but I'm just emphasizing that Vic is supposedly one of the West Coast's most haunted cities, and the proximity may or may not have had something to do with this, but I digress. The house we were in was very unsettling right off the bat. Holes in the upstairs drywall, like a previous tenant had thrown their entire body at the wall. The unfinished basement had two by four framed walls, no drywall, isolating several bedrooms, which were pieces of plywood on four cinder blocks for a bed. Squatters had been there. It had windows with no panes of glass anymore, only wrought iron to block intruders. Just a place you only go to use the laundry machine or dispose of trash. The trash is important. The kitchen was obviously old had faded green linoleum floors and a big spot in the middle that had been sanded down to the wood subflooring and we thought nothing of it. Being in our first place with no supervision, we were typical semi-responsible guys and treated the house with a decent amount of respect. After a few months of working and partaking in nights on the town, as well as drinking a fair amount, we grew lazier and more careless in maintaining our space. For some reason that I can't totally recall, we had begun to throw our bags of trash into the basement, as it wasn't being collected by the city. This became increasingly easier and easier to do. We had two puppies living with us, a Chihuahua and a British Bulldog. One day after work, I was taking a shower and the Chihuahua was mulling about in the bathroom. The door had no handle, just a small chain lock so it could sway three to four inches open or closed. A very distinct three knocks occur and I see the door move. No biggie. I just say, almost done, assuming my friends needed the bathroom. The dog is now trying to get into the tub or shower with me. I finish up and towel off and go tell my buddies that it's all theirs, but nobody's home. I call them and they're all at the gym and have been for a while. I grab the dog and leave immediately and we drive around the city as my mind races. I return later and my story barely shakes up my very macho friends. Maybe a week later, I'm in bed and I have a floor lamp with a dimmer and an indicator LED on that dimmer to let you know that there's power to the light. The light is fully on like every night so I close my eyes and the light is now off, but the LED is on, so I know the light has power. After I get done checking that it has power, I think nothing of it, close my eyes and the light goes back on. I say a few prayers, sleep, everything's okay. But something had adjusted the dimmer in that room. Next week, I find myself home alone with the dog sitting on the living room couch. We had a set of flimsy sliding double doors that we kept closed and they were directly across from me. Out of nowhere, the doors shake 
as though somebody had punched them as hard as they possibly could. It was loud and extremely aggressive. So again, I grabbed the pooch and beeline for the front door, exiting the living room. I remember preparing myself to see something down the hall as I leave the front door, but I see nothing, and I drive around town for a few hours. After this, my friend and the bulldog would sleep on the floor of my room every night, and the other friend would start sleeping in the living room right beside us. They had smaller encounters, like faucets and lights switching on and off, but neither was the type to talk much about it. But my macho friends were all sleeping as close together and to me as possible. They were freaked out. I never saw an apparition and those stories were as scary as it got. Upon having enough of the job in town, I informed the friends and the father that I would be moving back to the mainland. Months later, word got back to me that their dad never told us the previous longtime owner of the home had passed away in the kitchen and hadn't been found for three months, hence the scrub down linoleum. As he said it, the gentleman had almost melted into the floor and the dad knew that we wouldn't want to live there with that knowledge. As months went by and I thought more about it, it dawned on me how much we disrespected his home. We had a five foot tall trash mountain in his basement, which we never went down to anymore, just threw the bags down the stairs. And the house in general was just a mess. I concluded that he was manifesting his energy to, in a sense, tell us to clean up our freaking act and rightfully so. I never had any sense of malice or ill intent upon me. I truly believe he meant us no harm. I don't think he wanted to terrify us either. It's just that he was part of that house and wanted some respect. So this isn't anything too crazy, but I do have a little story about my childhood home. It was the summer of 2012. Life was good, and I was up at 2 a.m. watching Teen Nick in my house's den. The whole house was always fascinating to me. One of the first houses built in our small town in Kansas during the Prohibition as a moonshiner's illegal party house. The whole house is a colonial style full of Victorian features. From the outside, it looks like a two-story, but there are actually three floors and a half a basement. The architecture was always confusing as to how this was accomplished, but wedged between the top and main floor is a log cabin themed room, our family room and den. It was a glorified bar room fitted with a monstrous fireplace an Alaskan moose head from about 1920, and a salvaged chandelier from the former Douglas Opera House. I always hated being in that room at night because I always got a weird sensation, like someone standing over me when I would try to sleep on the couch after a long night of TV. My best friend and I also felt like this from time to time, sleeping in my own bed, which used to be the master suite. Never could get the cat or the dog to hang out in the den, though. Its door was an inch thick of solid wood and had a very complex lock that remained tucked inside its latch since no previous owners had the key. We never bothered to close it. It would get stuck in the frame because it was so heavy, designed to keep the police out if someone tipped off a booze party. There was a nursery on the top floor that shared a wall with this room. It was sold to us with no doorknob to the small 4x10 room. It became our home office. There was a brand new computer and an all-in-one printer and fax machine that remained unplugged, rarely used. My bedroom was right next to it and I always slept with my door open. In the middle of the night, I could often see the computer light up and paper would cycle through the printer. The unplugged printer. I could never get myself to check it out until the morning. Whenever I looked on the sheets, there was nothing on them, and we would just load them back inside. It was my sister and I's favorite place to pirate scary movies. 
We would close the door so as not to disturb mom and dad since it didn't latch. But one night, she left me in the room to go get a snack. And when she came back, she couldn't open the door. I was trapped inside. My mom had to use a butter knife to force the handle. I was kind of shook given the timing. But back to the den. I'm minding my teen Nick business when out of the blue I get a call from my friend. She tells me that she's doing a Ouija board session, which I've always done my part to stay far away from. She says that her presence told her to call me. She informed me that I was wearing a black shirt, which I was and I only own one. I hung up the call and immediately went to my bedroom to wait out the next few hours to daylight. That same summer, my mom, grandma, sister, and I went on one of our late night drives where we would blast oldies cruising the back roads. As we were driving, an unidentifiable creature ran in front of our car and across the road. None of us agreed on what we saw. We thought that it was a very large white rabbit or cat or small dog. It was moving unthinkably fast for any of those animals though. It made it across the road in two hops. At the time, we joked about it and kept on our way. When we got home and stepped into the foyer, heavy work boots start down the upstairs hall and down the stairs. They stop at the den level. From the foyer, you can see the part of the staircase that leads to the den, and no one is there. We're all looking at each other, waiting for my father to continue his trip down the stairs. Then he comes up from the basement, followed by our dog. The cat is chilling in a window on the main floor. We sent him upstairs to investigate. He checked everywhere, even the attic, and there was nothing. Could all be a coincidence. When we moved into an apartment that fall, nothing else strange seemed to happen though. I'm tempted to ask the family who lives there now if they've ever experienced anything. The original owners are buried in the morgue just down the street. And sometimes I think they make a trip to their old home. All the homes in my neighborhood were built in 2009 or 2010, seven homes in all. One of the homes across the street was purchased by a single female with two boys and a child on the way. Her boyfriend did live with her, but didn't help purchase the home, and he was not a good guy. They fought all the time. I'm pretty sure he was on meth, and he cheated on her constantly. He even tried to approach me. So, I reiterate, not a good guy. Toward the end, he started getting abusive. She had him locked up, but let him come back when he got out. One day, an ambulance showed up at the home. We were all told that he had committed suicide, had gotten high on meth and shot himself in the bathroom. All right, this was believable. After his death, she asked me to help her watch the home as his friends and family were accusing her of killing him and were pulling up into her driveway and then leaving and basically just trying to harass her. I thought this was suspicious, but whatever. As a single mom, she had to work all the time. The oldest boy would watch the little one while she worked. He would always come down to my house to stay, but wouldn't tell me why. But I liked the kid, so no worries. About four years went by like this and she told me she was moving. I was kind of shocked because these were really nice homes and fairly cheap, but I figured it was just because of what had happened previously. Finally, she told me that they were moving because of the paranormal activity in the home since his death. The little one was the most bothered by it and that's why he stayed at my house all the time. She proceeded to tell me what really happened. They were in a fight and he had a gun in his hand and was threatening to shoot her. They had a struggle over the gun, resulting in him shooting himself behind the ear. He fell to the ground, crawled down the hallway, and died in the living room. The little one said that he could see him at night, crawling down the hallway. 
The doors would open and close on their own, and they would hear disembodied voices and feel negative energy, stuff like that. She said her guests would see and hear stuff too. She wouldn't go into much detail, and I understood why. I didn't press the issue. The boys were struggling in school, and she wasn't doing so well either. They moved, and the house sat empty for about a year now. Well, my daughter and her husband have decided to purchase this home. I asked them what they would do if they saw him crawling down the hallway at night. They joke about it, but I mean, come on. That would be some scary shit. If you've never really experienced anything paranormal before, or hell, even if you had. My son-in-law is a huge skeptic, but my daughter has had some experiences. I wonder if it's still active or if he moved on when they left. A morbid part of me can't wait to find out. In order to set a little background, this took place in Western Wyoming. It was a small town, and at the time it had maybe 2,500 people. This was the first home that I lived in during the time that I spent in Wyoming. We moved here because of my dad's job. The family and I weren't very enthusiastic because we loved our home in Oklahoma. My dad and mom went up and looked for houses without us so that we could finish school and wouldn't have to stay in a hotel. The housing market wasn't doing so well, and the choices were very limited. In fact, it came down to one choice. The house that we had to move into was built in the 1930s, and it was rather different from the house we moved out of. It was single story with a large basement. The staircase to the basement was immediately to the left when you walked into the front door. No door at the bottom, and the steps were steep. It was fairly dark without any lights on. We move in within three weeks of being told that we're moving. My dad spent the first night there alone and never told us what he experienced until years later. We were about eight to 13 years old between my brother and sister, so he didn't want to scare us. He decided to sleep in the basement because the TV was down there and the basement was fairly large. He said that it was late around 2 a.m. when the TV turned on to static by itself. He's not bothered too much by it, but then he hears a door creak open and some footsteps. After doing a little investigating, he lays down again but doesn't sleep much due to weird noises. Jumping forward sometime, this would be my first odd experience that would make me a believer later on in life. Every night, my sister and I would pick a VHS movie from a large bookshelf in the basement. Since I was too afraid to sleep in my room in the basement, we slept in a bunk in my sister's room. My mom tells us that it's time to put in a movie and go to bed, so we agree to head downstairs. My first choice was one of my two favorites, which was The Land Before Time. I asked my sister, without turning around, Does Land Before Time sound good to you? After about a minute, I get impatient, and I say, well, how about the Lion King then? Not much more time passes and I get upset, and I tell her, fine then, if you're not gonna say anything, we're gonna watch my movie. As I slowly turn around to address my sister, I see that nobody is there. Here's the real kicker. I look back to the large bookcase and see two shadows, plain as day my shadow, which is to the left, and a smaller shadow that clearly looks like a little girl on the right. This is when I realize something is not right and I freak out. After screaming and starting up the stairs, I take one final look back to see that the little girl is moving down the hallway to my room. Well, at least her shadow is. There was absolutely nobody in the basement to produce that shadow. The shadow disappears into my room, and then to top it off, the light comes on. So I'm screaming bloody murder at this point, and I run to tell my parents. They tell me that it was just my imagination. 
So then I ask where my sister is, and they tell me that she's been in her room waiting for me to bring up a movie. Again, years later, I get told that they had both seen a little girl in the house too. They knew full well that it was not my imagination. The last thing that happened was to my brother. He had a room in the basement, but he wasn't a chicken like I was. One late night, he was woken up to his door creaking open. He thought it was me because sometimes I would get scared and come sleep with him. After a few moments, he said a small head peeked through the door. He said, what's wrong, buddy? Can't sleep? The door slowly shuts and he hears footsteps down the hall to my room. He decides to get up and come see what, who he thought was me, was doing. After leaving his room, he sees my light is on and my door is open. He walks into the room and every single toy from my wooden toy box is out. This is very unusual for me because my parents were quite strict and would kick my butt if I left my room like that. He asks me the next day what I was doing down in my room so late and I had no idea what he was talking about. My mom vouched that I was passed out in her room after we all watched movies. To sum up this story, my brother and I both had recurring dreams about a little blonde girl being stuffed into my toy box in the closet. Another dream that we both had was this kind of tall old man beating us in the basement bathroom. We've come to think that maybe a kid was killed in that house and the negative energy manifested because of that. Something I forgot to mention, all the toys were cleaned up the next day and were meticulously placed, all standing up in an odd order. Nobody in my family ever placed them like that, and no one had been in the basement aside from my brother, and he said that he certainly didn't do it. In any case, I'm really glad we don't live there anymore. When I was a young child, about 10 or 11, I moved into a small country town. I've been there before and my parents grew up there. Everyone who lives there knows that the whole town is haunted, from the school and even the church hall to everything else. And once it goes dark, most people who live there go inside because you can see spirits walking in dark places and that's pretty much the extent of it. But the house that I lived in had a spirit who likes to mimic voices, specifically of your loved ones, and even likes to look like them. It would only target me and my older sisters, and only when we were home alone. I would wake up with bruises and scratches, same as my sister. One time I was home alone and heard my older sister call out for me from our room. I got up and saw her walk into our room just slightly, but I could tell it was her. I called her name, but she didn't answer, so I followed her in. I entered our room and saw that it was empty. I thought that she was messing with me, but she's pretty tall, so there wasn't really anywhere she could hide. Then suddenly I heard the front door open. I went and saw my older sister with the rest of my family coming home. She hadn't been there. This wasn't the first time that something like this happened, and it certainly wasn't the last. Fortunately, I moved out of there about two years ago, and I've never woken up with a random bruise or scratch ever again. My family friends lived in a small coastal town in California, and it has really old buildings there, including the original state capitol. They lived in an older house built around the 60s or 70s, and it was a single-story home. I was small, maybe two to four years old, and my parents never let me or my brother go there. My uncle and auntie didn't really let anyone else go there either, because of, well, all of it. 
It was haunted by a little girl or something. They would see a shadow, ironically the dog's name is Shadow, down the hall, hear a laugh, doors would slam shut or suddenly open, and they would hear footsteps running around. The dog, Shadow, would stare down the hallway and start to growl and bark, and even start to whimper after they found scratch marks on him one time. After this, they didn't want anyone to go to their house, especially not kids. The daughter, who is the same age as I am, came crying to her mom, saying that the little girl with black hair and white threw a toy at her. The oldest brother had his lights flicker, his dog barking and his door slamming shut all the while. It scared the crap out of everyone. But one night, another one of my uncles had to drive by their house to pick up my uncle and auntie to go to a party. He saw a girl that looked like the daughter crouched on top of the van with her hair over her face, just tapping on the windshield of the car. He called my uncle to ask if their daughter was outside, but he said, nope, all the kids are at their grandparents. But as soon as he got off the phone, it was gone. In the morning, they saw a small handprint on the driver's side window and small scratches on the front windshield and a dead mourning dove on their porch. They moved about five months later. My family never really had money. My mom was a cleaning lady for the majority of my life and occasionally cut hair on the side in our basement. My dad was the get-rich-quick type who never wanted someone like a boss to answer to, and his ego, unfortunately, got in the way of making a living. At times, he did make some big money, but it was always in lump sums, which he spent as quickly as he got. In 1998, he invented and patented this newly engineered golf club and partnered with a few investors, and money was coming in frequently. He was even doing interviews on the local news about it. It caught some major buzz locally and then nationally within a couple of years. Finally, he was bringing an income into the household. We always rented. I lived in three houses I know of by the time I was eight years old. Around my 10th birthday in 2001, my mom and dad told us they were looking for houses in a nicer area to buy. About a week later, my mom brought my brother, two sisters, and I to see a house not far from the house that my parents rented. We pulled up, and it was huge. Well, huge for us. We walked into the front room, and it was wallpapered with, well, the only thing I could use for reference would be Snozberry's wallpaper from the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory movie. The carpet was mint green and had two white French doors going into the dining room. The previous owner's son, who was a middle-aged graying man, didn't exactly greet us with a smile. He almost looked frustrated, like we were late, but we weren't. My siblings and I looked at each other as if my mom was crazy for wanting this weird-ass house. Then we saw it. He showed us into the kitchen. The kitchen was huge, with high ceilings, it was half of the first floor and all knotty pine. The walls, the cupboards, the walk-in pantry, shelves that rounded the entire kitchen. That was the selling point. It was beautiful and something you don't see much of in humble old colonial homes. Two small bedrooms upstairs with barely a hallway, both knotty pine as well. A little overkill and also creepy for a bedroom that isn't in a cottage, but hey. My parents opted to make the whole semi-finished basement into their master bedroom. My mom was dead set on buying it and persuaded my dad. We still talk about how all of us felt this pull into this house. We moved in a couple of months later at the end of summer. My job that afternoon was to attempt to put mine and my brother's bed frames together with the headboard. I didn't know what I was doing, so I started stacking all the nuts and bolts to see how high I could get them before my dad finally came in to do it for me. 
My mom promised my sisters, who were directly across the hall from me and my brothers, that if they got the smaller room, they could paint it. So my brother and I got the bigger room, with one built-in dresser and a little small door that went into a huge attic, which was another room in itself. I haven't dared to go into the attic, or even wanted to open the door, though. The door looked like it was meant for children, though, almost like an entrance to a treehouse or a door for a Keebler elf's hut, like on those cookies. I didn't like that, and I definitely didn't like that I had to sleep next to it. As I'm sitting there stacking nuts and bolts, I hear a woman clearly say, no. I look into my sister's room thinking that it's one of them, or my mom, but it wasn't. I would have heard somebody coming up the stairs and hit the hallway. So I turn around in my sister's doorway and I feel the air get thick, like I could almost feel the body heat from someone standing too close. I can only explain the feeling as almost like that feeling when you can't focus because someone keeps fidgeting and moving around. I ran down the stairs and out the back door where my mom was smoking a cigarette, talking to our new neighbors. To them, I just looked like some kid running around the new house, but I was terrified. Fast forward to winter and we're all settled in. My godparents came over to give me a gift a couple of weeks before Christmas. I opened it and it was a lime green comforter that had football helmets of every NFL team. Cool, if I ever cared about football at all. It was big and warm, so it quickly became my favorite thing in the world. They left late and we were told since it's Saturday, we can watch TV in our rooms until whenever. So I brought my new comforter to bed and turned on a nick at night, quickly falling asleep. I wake up and the TV is still on. Mind you, mine and my brother's twin beds are right next to each other, and both are against a wall with a gap in the middle to get out. I look over at my brother and his back was to me. Then I go to look at the TV, which is directly in front of us on the built-in dresser, and I adjust my eyes. I see a woman sitting on the edge of my brother's bed, dark long hair, what looks like a dark purple cardigan and a dark floral skirt. The only light source was from the TV and it was illuminating her features. I couldn't put into words or reference how she looked until recently when I watched the movie The Knowing, which is a horrible Nicolas Cage movie. But in the movie, you couldn't quite see all of the alien's face just a silhouette of the light and darkness. That's the best way I could describe it. I see a ring that appears to be catching light on her finger. I have no clue if it was on her finger or if she was holding it. She just sat there on the edge of my brother's bed, head down and admiring this ring that was catching the light off of my television screen. She didn't seem to notice me. I tried to sink into my mattress and slip my head under my new comforter, and I just laid there, in shock. I waited until I heard my mom start the coffee pot to run to the kitchen and tell her what had happened. I even drew her a picture. She believed me. My dad, not so much. Almost the exact same experience happened again two years later, with my sister, when we switched rooms because two teenage girls obviously need a bigger space. There was nothing paranormal that we noticed happening in between those experiences. It happened and we would never bring it up. My dad's new and improved golf club had one little problem. There was a defect. The head was flying off left and right on numerous orders. My dad was back to being broke. You'd think a mortgage, a wife, and four kids would give him a little pep in his step to get a steady job, at least in the interim, but nope. Back to the drawing boards, and back to us kids helping clean banks with my mom on the weekends for extra money. The fighting started, the divorce happened, dad moved out, and mom stayed in the house with us. By this time, I'm 14, my first year of high school, and finally I could go out with my friends, even the ones who had cars. My mom started drinking heavily on the weekends around this time and would frequently call whatever friend I was with that had a cell phone 
and spout out her Taco Bell order because she knew we would end up there at some point before I came home. My sisters worked doubles together at an Italian restaurant every weekend, so my mom would always be home by herself having a pity party and getting drunk. My mom calls my friend and I tell her not to answer. I told her that I would just get the regular Supreme burrito with no beans that she always orders. I get home and she's in the living room and she starts telling me about a man she was talking to. He looked like a young Elvis, she said, and he sat in the chair across from where she laid on the love seat. She was drunk. I didn't pay it any attention. She was just rambling about a dream, I was sure. The next day, the friend who my mom had called came over and told me that she wanted to play the voicemail that my mom had left her when she called the day before. My mom had said, hey, I just wanted to see what you guys were up to and if you go to Taco Bell, could you get me the regular thing I ask for? Then the phone stays connected. She never hangs up. At first you hear nothing, then a conversation between her and a man. At points, she interrupts him, wondering who he is. You can't really tell what he's saying, only bits and pieces, but my mom's voice is clear. Then he told her at the end, as clear as day, please lay on your side just in case you get ill. I got instant chills. My friend was visibly disturbed, even after already hearing it, and I felt sick. We played it for everyone, and they all had the same reaction. My mom remembers none of it, she doesn't remember telling me about the man, and she doesn't remember the incident. We forgot about it, and we never talked about it anymore. My dad got sick of living with his own mother, and the house was in his name, so he legally kicked my mom out, and at this point my older sister moved in with her fiancé, and my other sister moved with mom to a house that they rented a few minutes away. My brother and I stayed behind because my mom got a job as a caregiver for that winter in Florida. As soon as my dad moved back in, things took a turn. He did not believe in ghosts. He was a huge skeptic. Until around 2007. He sat up in bed late at night and was smoking a cigarette. He had a big solid oak sleigh bed and it had a huge headboard. He started hearing knocks and felt the vibration on the headboard because his back was resting on it as he sat up. He stood up and it stopped. He sat down and relaxed his back, back up against the headboard. Something started knocking, then pounding hard on the headboard. He stood up and came to the basement stairs and called us down there so that we could witness this, trying to make us believe in something that we already knew was there. A couple of days later, Christmas lights flew across the room like somebody had yanked them. A couple of days after that, loud sounds of what sounded like scraping metal across concrete came from the attic. A week later, my brother's sleeping and gets punched in the face. A couple of days after that, my dad's girlfriend sees a hand appear over him in bed. That upcoming weekend, the kitchen chair moved into the hallway while we were all in the living room watching movies. Coffee teaspoons and hairbrushes would disappear and reappear. Sounds of people going up the stairs. Friends who knew nothing about any of this would see what looked like someone walking back and forth from the upstairs bedroom. It got bad. We were all terrified. My dad was screaming into the void. He couldn't protect us or beat the ass of whoever was doing all of this. By this time, my dad was working, probably just to get out of the house which meant he had to take plenty of business trips. While coming home from Virginia, Bate had it that at the airport, he met Jason Hawes and Grant Wilson from the sci-fi show Ghost Hunters. They were coming to investigate a haunted prison for the show. My dad just started watching their show because of all the things happening in our house and only went over to them with the sole intention of getting help for what we were going through. They set him up with contacts to a paranormal group that they knew well for our area. They came, they saw, and they told us that it was definitely paranormal activity. The psychic said that there was a man who liked to hang out in the basement and the living room. A greaser type, with slick back hair and cigarettes rolled in his sleeve, kind of like a young Elvis. Also, he loved my dad's new car. 
A woman who was reserved and quiet who liked the attic and the naughty pine bedroom was there too. An impatient and angry old woman who paces around everywhere and likes the living room was also there. The team set up cameras, tripods, and microphones around the whole house before shutting off the lights. The only things eventful that happened the night of was a camera and a tripod were thrown to the ground in the attic and everyone heard that metal against concrete scraping sound. It was so loud it sounded like it was in the middle of the room. They left and when they came back a few days later, they had evidence. A woman's voice was caught saying no before the camera and tripod flew forward in the attic. The investigators, while bending down to go through the attic door to set up the tripod, said that one of the cameras in the naughty pine room caught a woman saying, crawl out, you have to crawl out. There were growls. There were snarky remarks said in the basement and a man's voice saying, where is she? The investigators did the whole spiel. You're dead, it's time to go to the other side. It was a lot to take in. My dad, who was raised Catholic, asked if they could set up a home blessing, which we got that afternoon and we all had to take part in. It did definitely settle down after that. There are a lot more things that went on in that house, but I'm writing a novel over here. This house somehow sticks with all of us in my family. My friends still talk about the house. I dream about it all the time. It sounds funny, but there's a definite trauma that lingers when you spend your adolescent years living in a place like that. I think it's so strange, like it still has a hold on all of us. Everyone's pins, passwords, and top secret codes are the numbers of that address, still, and we haven't lived there since 2010. The weird pull that we all have to this house, telling each other when we happen to drive by it, the way we weirdly miss it, it's just strange. I am a 27 year old female and my sister is 26 with a husband who is also 26 and a nine month old baby girl. They got married coming up on two years ago this summer. Just before they got married, they started to build a new house on a plot of land that's essentially in the woods on a dead end road with most of the 16 acres going uphill. The road itself is pretty quiet with maybe 10 houses total, pretty spaced out new houses. They only have one next door neighbor. This is important. So, as I said, they just built this house not even three years ago. The thing with the property, though, is that they found at least one, and maybe another, partial house or building stone foundation. Now, our dad, being the history detective that he is, had found an old property map that basically said that there used to be a farmhouse right where their now backyard is, hence the stone foundation. My dad has gone there to do metal detecting quite a few times, and he's found some neat stuff. Some was just the typical metal containers, cans, trash, and junk that he found at the foundation, tossed in by who knows. But a few neat things were a belt buckle, what appears to be, according to his treasure hunting online forum, either a woman's or a child's sword or knife guard, and that dates to when the farmhouse was there, in the mid to late 1700s. Now for the spooky stuff. So I've stayed overnight there a few times, in the guest bedroom, over a year ago at least. My sister and I went out drinking, and I just ended up staying overnight. I was alone in the guest room, snuggled in bed, when I felt like something, or someone, was watching me. So much so that I pulled my blankets over my head and tried to sleep. Then I had the urge to close the closet door randomly. I eventually fell asleep and thought nothing of it after the fact. I never mentioned it to her or her husband, 
since they're both highly Catholic and participate in church and stuff, so I didn't think they would get me. That's the only experience I've had, if that counts. Fast forward to now. She sent me a photo on Sunday, which sparked our conversation. The picture was of her side entrance door that goes into the mudroom. In the top corner window, there is what appears to be, I haven't seen it in person, a smudged handprint. At first, my thought was, okay, maybe the builders did it, or maybe it was something there when the door was being made or put on. So I told her that, and then she texts back that it's not on the inside or the outside of the window. It's between the panes. Weird, right? My sister said that it was definitely not there before, since she's basically a neat freak and has washed the door windows before, many times. My second thought was we've had some rain and humidity recently, being almost summer and all, so maybe it was some moisture of fog and stuff like that that was between the glass panes that just looked like a handprint. It literally does look like a handprint, though, after looking at the picture for a while. I'm studying the picture, and I start to get this weird thought of maybe it's somebody scoping the house, but it's on the top window, facing downward, and it's as if they, or it, had their left hand pointed down, pressed from the outside. I tried to recreate how it would look or feel if I did it myself, it's an extremely awkward position, especially if you're peeking into a door or window from the top pane, like six feet off the ground. She was thoroughly freaked out, I think. I usually try to eliminate all of the obviously logical reasons of what it could have been. A raccoon? A person? Moisture? I ask her if she's had anything weird happen, out of curiosity. This was her actual text message back to me. Quote, I was running on the treadmill a couple of months ago at night. My husband was gone, and I got a very forceful tap on my left shoulder, like someone wanted my attention. End quote. Obviously, I've redacted her husband's name. I think it was probably a muscle twitch or something, but she was freaked out after that. Then she goes on to say, Quote, and I hear voices sometimes. My husband thinks I hear the neighbors, but when I'm inside, it literally sounds like a man and a woman on our porch. End quote. It was a super quiet area. Like I said, they only had one neighbor. It could have possibly been her neighbors with sound traveling or something, but still. I asked about the baby, and she said that she does look off into random corners like she's watching something, but that doesn't seem that odd to me for a nine-month-old. Nothing really with the monitors, either. I'm going over today after work to see my niece. I meant to mention to her to maybe check on her carbon monoxide detectors, just to be safe. So, I'll tell her tonight. It's one of those situations where some of the stuff is pretty weird and other stuff could possibly be explained. I was hesitant to even tell the story, since nothing super or overtly paranormal has happened yet. Just feelings and weird things. But I wanted your thoughts. What are your suggestions? What do you think is going on, if anything? This happened in 2021. My family and I were living in a pretty old house at the time, like really old. There was mold, wood creaking in the middle of the night, and when the wind would blow, it sounded like the windows would shatter. I have three different things that happened at this house. My dad and I were driving back from a spirit Halloween store for Halloween decor because it was around that time of year. When we were walking up to our door, we heard a loud bang on the window, near the bottom right corner. We had cats at the time, but they never really jumped at the windows, and we checked. Two of them were asleep upstairs, and the other one was outside, nowhere near the window. 
My thought was maybe something had fallen and hit the window, but nothing was laying next to it. If you take the palm of your hand and you slap it on your window, it sounds exactly like what we heard. The second thing that happened to me was a little creepier. There were wooden floorboards that led from my kitchen to my living room. The kitchen had a tiled floor and the living room had carpet. Whenever you would walk through these wooden boards, they would make a mind-numbing creaking noise. Now, I've had my cats walk over these boards and they won't make a sound. And my cats are decently large and heavy. When I was home alone and sitting on my couch, I heard the floorboards make a noise. I've heard them make noises before, but this one sounded directional. I was obviously hesitant to go check, but eventually I did and there was nothing there. The third thing that happened is almost impossible for me to explain. I didn't see this one, but my dad did, and I didn't know this up until today. He walked into the kitchen and passed the countertop. As he walked, a small glass moved about four feet across the countertop, almost as though somebody had slid it. There was nobody in the house at the time except for me, my mom, and my dad, and we were not there, in the room. The windows may have been open, but even if they were, the wind couldn't have been enough to slide that glass across the table. This one is kind of a bonus, but not necessarily that creepy. I have a habit of speaking in my sleep. I've said really weird things before, like get the shovel or run. But my parents said that in this house in particular, they heard me scratching my wall in the middle of the night. My bed was pushed up against a wall, and apparently my hand was in the air clawing at the wall. Another creepy thing happened too. My room is hallway adjacent to my parents. Apparently in the middle of the night, I sat up and blankly stared into their room. My dad looked over and asked me if I was all right. I didn't respond, but I put my hand up and waved, kind of like Forrest Gump in that one gif. I'm not sure if my house is haunted or if I'm possessed or both, but weird things are definitely happening here. My mom bought a house when I was in the second grade. It was built in 1856 or 1857, I'm not entirely sure. The guy who built it was a prominent doctor. He had a few kids, but I don't know a whole lot about him. I do know that over the years, a couple of people died there, mostly him and his kids. But we got the house because the woman living there had lost her sister and she wanted to move into a nursing home. The house was not used to treat patients, so far as I know. There was a hospital built maybe 80 yards from us, where I'm fairly sure he did most of his work. I know that place is very haunted, but nothing malicious as far as I know. Anyway, I feel like that's enough background on the house. We lived there in the early 2000s. I was six or seven, and we moved out when I was 13. We didn't live there a very long time, the house just seemed to be bad luck. We had a dog named Snowball. He was an American Eskimo dog, 20 pounds, fluffy, and white as, well, snow. He would just stare in dark corners a lot, as would my cat. I'd hear my mom call for me a lot, but when I went to look for her, she wasn't even home from work yet, or hadn't called me. A few times, we would be in the kitchen or the living room, and we would hear something digging through my shoe boxes full of Polly Pockets. My bedroom was directly above the living room and the floor was thin. When we would go upstairs to look for the cat or the dog, they were usually right there in the living room with us. The cat liked to stay under the couch, but when we would investigate, all my dolls and accessories would be thrown about my room and the door was closed. Snowball liked to chew on my dolls, as he had a gum disease and I guess it felt good. But he really didn't like being alone, and his favorite spot was on the green couch, where he would look out and watch the street. 
He was also old, and only went upstairs when it was cold. And we would all sleep in one room, because he liked the heater. Otherwise, he was downstairs. My cat did the same thing. She was often very close to us. She liked the spot on the red couch where she could watch TV. None of the pets liked going upstairs unless we were there. I spent a lot of time outside, but I also liked to sit in the office. I would play Neopets, RuneScape, and watch videos on various sites. I'd feel like somebody was watching me all the time. I'd turn around, but I was alone. Sometimes when I was outside, I know that my mom was still at work, but in her bedroom, through the window, I would see a man looking down at me. I don't remember being afraid of him, just kind of got used to seeing him. My mom would always say, oh, that's just Dr. Green. I would wave to him and he would just vanish. One night, I woke up and somebody was sitting on my bed and it was freezing as they were pulling my blanket down. I woke up mad and then panicked because pulling at my blanket was the man in the window. Then I could smell it. Something was burning. I woke my mom up and we found that the microwave was shorting out and had burnt through the cable and was on the verge of catching fire. After that, I made my grandmom take me to his grave and I'd leave flowers for him there all the time. Dr. Green was a nice ghost. He would just appear and he only woke me that one time to warn us. Then there was Luke. Luke was malicious. He terrorized the pets. It's why they wouldn't really go upstairs. He always appeared in dark corners and I could never bring myself to walk past him. It felt like if I did, something bad would happen. He was more active too. Cabinets would fly open, things would fall off shelves, and he would throw things at us. In the dead of night, you could hear heavy boots slowly climbing the stairs. Sometimes the TV would randomly flip channels. You'd hear groans, and he actually attacked us. I regularly had nightmares, and I would wake up with strange bruises and cuts and scratches. This was also happening to my mom. We know his name is Luke because my mom used to record QVC and this sewing channel on the VCR. I think it was QVC and they were doing some craft thing, but they asked the caller what their name was and very clearly in a masculine voice, someone says, Luke. Then the woman who was actually the caller and was live on the show goes on to say her name and go on about the product. We were only guessing that the friendly ghost was Dr. Green as the man always appeared in similar clothing to the photos that we had of him, very nice suits and a hat. Luke was dressed in ratty looking clothing and he wore huge boots with spurs. I can still hear his boots clanging up those squeaky steps. Lastly, there was the ghost dog. I love animals, but I hated this dog. It was huge, black, and made me feel sick to my stomach whenever it would appear and it appeared everywhere, outside the carport, downstairs, upstairs, and especially the cellar. I could hear its toenails clack on the hardwood, and I would hide under my blankets. The hair on my arms and neck would raise, and I could hear it sniffing me. It makes my skin crawl to think about that dog. If you looked at it, it would growl and vanish, but I only saw it twice. I heard it all the time, though. I would also have nightmares about this huge black dog following me around. It was a recurring dream that scared me so much as a kid. I'd be in the yard and there was a creek that ran through it. It went under the road and there were those huge steel cylinders that let the water pass. I could crouch and walk through them, but I'd see the dog there and it was guarding what looked like a kid's body. It would immediately wake me up. I never thought to look up and see if a child had died there. I was a kid and it scared me to even think about it, but I still see that dream vividly. I own a big black lab, Great Dane Mix, and sometimes he gives me flashbacks to that dog. I could go on and on about the odd things that happened. More happened to my mom and she has weird pictures, videos, 
even called a priest to cleanse the house, but I don't think it ever helped. It may have, but the people who live there now have fixed up the house a lot. I've been tempted to knock on the door and ask them, but I feel like that would be weird. I drive past the house every time I go visit my grandparents. Also, stepping back on the property makes me feel uneasy. When we were moving out, I was packing my things. Something knocked over my corkboard, and I was frustrated because it broke. I told whatever it was to leave me alone, that I was leaving. I turned back to what I was packing, and then I heard a voice behind me very clearly say, If you come back, I'll kill you. I don't want to take my chances with the paranormal. With a threat like that, I don't want to mess with it. Especially as this voice was very different from Luke's. It hissed. It made me feel sick and made the room very cold as well. Whatever this thing was, I don't want to get to know it. And I don't want to tempt fate. A few years back, one of my best friends and business partner was, and still is, a single dad. His ex-wife was in and out of mental institutions for years, and he had sole custody of his two kids, a boy, age 10, and a girl, age 14. My friend had to travel to New York to oversee the multimedia setup for the auto show for the Ford display. I was back at the office with the programmers during the day, and I would stay with the kids each evening. Their house was a new two-story rental in the Woodlands, Texas. The development was built in a heavily wooded area just north of Houston. Weird stuff started happening the first night I was there. I was watching TV with the kids. The den lights would go off. The light switch was on the other side of the room. I went over and the switch was turned off. I thought it was a problem with the breaker, or there was another light switch. But if there was another switch, who turned it off? I flipped the switch on, the lights came back on, and I went back to sit down. The lights went off. I walked back, and I found the switch flipped back down to off, manually. That disturbed me. This went on for a while. I asked the kids if this had happened before, and they told me that every now and then, the lights would go off. So now I'm trying to act unconcerned in front of the kids. Suddenly, there was a loud crash in the attic. I, we, went upstairs and opened the attic door to check. There was nothing in the attic. It was completely empty, and thus we had no explanation as to what had made the loud noise. I'm thinking that there's someone else in the house. Their mother had shown up unexpectedly before at their old house, but she was in jail at the time and supposedly didn't know this address. Things quieted down and it was eventually time to go to bed. I let the family dog in, a lab, checked all of the doors and made sure they were locked, and then I went up to the guest room, which was between the kids' bedrooms. I left my door cracked, and I had just turned the bedside lamp off. As I was laying down, I saw the silhouette of a boy crouched down between the cable box and VCR lights on the other side of the room, and myself. I thought the sun was getting ready to try to scare me, so... I turned the bedside lamp on and said, Gotcha! But there was no one there. Then there was another loud crash in the attic. This woke the kids up, and now they were scared. We then heard a door slam downstairs. I told them that it was a new house, and noises happen. I also told them that I would sleep in the day bed out in the hallway. I made my rounds again, and we all went back to bed. When I woke up the next morning, 
the kids and the dog were all asleep on the floor next to my bed. I still had four more nights to go. The next day, I got to the house as it was getting dark. The wind was starting to pick up and all of the tree limbs were swaying. There was thunder in the distance. However, the kids seemed fine. I helped them with their homework and made dinner. No, we're not going to McDonald's again. And we all finally sat down to watch TV. The storm was worsening and there was more thunder and lightning. The den in the house was huge, with large floor-to-ceiling windows, and the walls went all the way to the rafters. There was an interior balcony on the second floor that wrapped around three of the walls. There was an exterior balcony facing the backyard. You could see through the upper windows out to the lower part of the outside balcony. So now, the rain is coming down in sheets, the wind is blowing, and bursts of lightning are happening everywhere. Suddenly, the daughter says she sees something moving out on the balcony. I look up, and it looks like a pair of legs in dark pants scurry past one of the windows. I'm thinking, do I get the gun out of the master bedroom? But that opens up a whole new can of worms. So instead, I run up the back stairs from the kitchen to the second floor hallway and out through the balcony door. The wind is blowing cold rain right into me, and I get soaked, but I don't see anyone on the balcony. I go back downstairs and tell them there's no one outside. Shortly thereafter, I tell them it's time for bed. The son goes right to bed and goes to sleep. The daughter is afraid of storms. The dog won't go into her bedroom and her cat is nowhere to be found. I tell her that I will sit with her until she goes to sleep. I bring a chair into her bedroom and set it on the left side of her bed. We talk about storms and I tell her about being in a tent in the army during really bad storms and how nice it is to be in a house for this storm. We both fall asleep. There's a loud clap of thunder, a flash of lightning, and I see a dark figure about five feet tall standing in the far corner of her room. I jump to my feet, but now I don't see anything. I don't want to wake her up, and so I carefully walk around her room and check the hallway. I slowly sit back down. I eventually doze off again. Later, I hear a noise and I started to look around. The cat is curled up on the foot of her bed and the dog is starting to lay down at my feet. The storm has passed and looking outside her bedroom window, stars are shining up above the tree line. I go lay down in the day bed out in the hallway and just as I fall asleep, I hear a door downstairs slam shut. It sounds like the kitchen door to the garage. I go downstairs. The kitchen door, door to the garage, and front door are all shut and locked. I start to walk over to the master bedroom suite, but something tells me not to go there. I head back upstairs and lay back down. What seems like seconds later, the alarm goes off and it's time to start a new day. I have to get breakfast going and it's my turn to drive school carpool. Most of the days in that house went about the same. All I know for sure is that something was wrong with that house. When I was a teenager, my family moved into a new house in Ohio. Well, it was new to us. As soon as we moved in, my mother started saying that she felt the house was haunted and that she could sense a presence there. She said she heard somebody call her name and felt somebody put a hand on her shoulder. One time she woke up with somebody holding her feet down and she couldn't shake off whatever it was, so she started screaming. 
she also heard muffled voices. We didn't believe her at all, until both my sister and I started experiencing strange things. My first experience was when I was reading a book in my bedroom at 3 a.m. I'm a night owl, so this wasn't that unusual. Everyone should have been asleep, but suddenly I hear very heavy footsteps right outside my bedroom door. They were too heavy to be my mom's or my sister's, so I just assumed that my dad was walking around, checking up on us. I sprinted to the door, and when I opened it, I was shocked to discover the hallway was dark and nobody was up. Our attic had several feet of fluffy insulation covering the entire area. There was nothing stored there, but at times you could hear steps coming from the attic, running up to the side of the house. They always ran up to the side with the driveway, as though they were trying to see who arrived, and this happened almost every time that somebody would pull up to the house. In the daytime, it was almost cool, but in the nighttime, it was terrifying. There was always something clicking loudly under my bed and in the closet at night, and I always tried to convince myself it was the air vents. However, all the air vents were on the other side of the bedroom and they never made clicking noises. I sometimes saw an outline of a person standing next to my bed if my head was covered with a sheet, but when I pulled the sheet off, nobody was there. I heard sighs, as though somebody was standing right behind me. And one time, I heard a whisper that said, Come play. I prayed a lot, and that usually helped. I would also ask them to quiet down, and that helped as well. One time, my boyfriend and I were doing homework in the basement, and heard the garage door open, and voices of my parents in the kitchen. We ran up to say hi, only to discover an empty house. Another time, my boyfriend stayed overnight in our house and he slept in the living room. In the morning, he asked if we were all playing a joke on him at night, as he kept hearing a ball bounce on the stairwell leading up to the bedrooms on the second floor and in the kitchen. But every time he got up to see what was going on, no one was there. I don't think we even owned a ball, and we certainly didn't play with one in the house. One time, my mom heard a baby crying outside of our house at night. We lived in a safe and perfectly normal suburb. There was no reason that a baby would be in our backyard. Another day, a lid flew off of a cooking pot and got halfway embedded into the kitchen ceiling. It wasn't a pressure cooker. It was just a regular lid and pot. Another time, we left for a family vacation and my boyfriend was asked to take our paper in. He said that he was in the house and decided to make my bed for me. We had left at the ungodly hour of 5 a.m. and I never got to it. He said at first he got a juice and felt like somebody was breathing down his neck in the kitchen. He kept turning around to find nobody there. Then he walked upstairs and while he was making my bed, he felt something grab his legs from under it. He got freaked out and ran out of there and he refused to enter the house again. He just diligently hid the papers behind a flower pot outside until we returned. One night, my sister woke up to a black caped figure standing silently in her room. She said there was also a bright orb near her window. Her windows faced the backyard and trees, and being on the second floor, there was no possible source of light from cars and things like that. She covered her head with the blanket, and when she looked out, the figure and the orb were still there. She went back under the blanket, and after some time, they were finally gone. One day, our cat disappeared without a trace, and we never did see it again. Not sure if that was related. My dad was one person who never experienced anything. No voices, no steps, no TV and radios blasting out on their own. He is hard of hearing, so that could be a factor. But one thing he can't explain is waking up at 4 a.m. next to a lit tea light candle that he swears burnt out at midnight. The candle was right in front of his face, and he's extremely sensitive to light, 
to the point where he covers any electronic lights with napkins because they disturb his sleep. It eventually got so bad that I refused to sleep in my own bedroom, as I could feel someone move around the room at night, and I slept in my sister's room. My dad decided to call a medium, and the guy said that there were five spirits in the house, a boy, an old lady, a couple, and a very angry man. He gave us a giant candle with a cross and said to burn it in the bedroom of the youngest child, which was now also my bedroom where I slept in a sofa chair. The candle was in a big glass jar and was hefty. All night it kept shaking and the glass kept making clicking noises against the counter that it stood on. We were also to tell the spirits that this was our house and that they needed to go to the light. Things improved after the visit and shortly after I moved out to attend college, where I slept for years with the lights on, although I never experienced any paranormal activity in my apartment there. After college, I never stayed in the house for longer than a few days, always sleeping with the lights on, as that creepy feeling remained, although nothing notable happened anymore. Eventually, my parents sold the house. I live in a three-story, four-bedroom new house. Prior to it being a house, this plot of land was a residential home, and before that, I have no idea. My partner, our young children, and I have lived here since it was built, nearly six years ago. I've never felt anything bad or good in this house, except for the bedroom on the top floor. That bedroom was our youngest child's bedroom. It was her bedroom from about six months old until about two years. She never slept well, ever. She would always wake up during the night, sometimes crying uncontrollably. We just put it down to her being a crappy sleeper. However, sometimes if we couldn't settle her back down, we would bring her into our room, which was directly next to her room. She would just sit and stare into the hallway outside and would refuse to be put down near the doorway and if we tried to carry her out into the hallway to show her nothing was there, she would freak out. She no longer has that room as her bedroom. She shares with her older sisters now. The middle child, a boy, now has that bedroom, and he claims to feel fine in there. However, when it was our youngest daughter's bedroom, she would wake in the night, and my partner would go downstairs to make her a bottle, and I would go in to comfort her. While comforting her with my back to the door, I would always feel like there was something or someone watching me, so much so that I would feel forced to glance back over my shoulder. That's the backstory. During a conversation we were having as a family tonight, myself and my partner were talking to the eldest child, 15 years old, and she just so happened to sleep in her brother's room last night. He was at a sleepover at a friend's house and she wanted to escape the two younger ones. We asked her how she slept. Totally normal question, and we certainly didn't lead her answer in any way. She said, eh, not so great. I felt on edge, like somebody was watching me from the doorway. I wasn't scared, I just felt anxious. How she described her feelings was exactly how I had felt in the past when I would often be in there comforting our youngest. Neither my partner nor myself have ever spoken to the children about this before so there's no way she was just regurgitating what we've said. I felt a shiver go up my spine when my stepdaughter said this tonight because it was so accurate. My partner immediately looked at me as if to say, wow, that's exactly what we've said. A friend recommended we invest in some selenite to place in and around the room, and we might do that. But I just wanted to share this story and see if anybody else can relate. I know that there's something in my house. When my husband and I bought this house, we were told that the woman who had lived here previously walked from the bedroom to the kitchen, collapsed on the kitchen floor, 
and passed away three days later in the hospital. Apparently, she collapsed on a Wednesday. Our bedroom is the same bedroom that she had. This summer, we were sitting out on our deck enjoying an evening breeze when I see a shadow walk past my front window through the blinds, coming from our bedroom and headed to the kitchen. I freaked out thinking that somebody was in our house. Our son was staying with his aunt that night. We came running in. Stupid thing to do if somebody was truly in the house, I guess. And we searched every nook and cranny. Nothing. Now we're hearing voices. And the other day, my soda flew off the table by the rocking chair. I think I made her mad somehow, but I'm not really sure what I did. And I'm not really sure what to do now. It seems like things are about to get interesting. When my husband and I first married, we lived towns apart due to work. We also had a toddler. We decided to move in together as quickly as possible and went house hunting. I have always enjoyed stories of supernatural or paranormal occurrences, and I joked about how much I would love a haunted house. I was later told by a clairvoyant that the universe delivers. We finally settled on a house that was in our price range. It was built in the 80s, so no concern of lead paint, and not a lot of historic value either. Everything went smoothly, for the most part. Our toddler would awaken in the middle of the night and explain that her stuffed animals would move or fly. We figured she just wanted to sleep with us. Moving was a big transition for such a youngster. We got pregnant with another kiddo quickly, and he went out of country for about a year for work. Things were normal for the most part. The baby, six to 12 month age range, would sometimes stare at the front door and cry or point behind me when I was doing dishes. I didn't think it was too weird. My husband returned and I eventually decided to remodel the house. It had not been updated since being built. It was a major undertaking. My youngest was probably two years old at this point and the oldest was six. I became convinced that our house was haunted at this point and continued to be convinced for about two years. It's hard to remember the time frames for everything, but I will describe the activities that occurred during this two to three year period. I had a dog who required medication twice daily. It would frequently go missing. I would later find it in the same spot that I always kept the medication. One of my daughters would talk about the little boy that lived in the closet and that she was afraid of him. So we moved the two girls into the same room because we felt that they were perhaps lonely. This gave my husband a room to dedicate to his man cave and online PC gaming. My husband would talk about seeing a shadow dart back and forth in the hallway. I had a dream that when we took down the sheetrock, we found a secret room with dead twins who warned us to get out. All of this stuff seemed like normal occurrences that happen in life. But then I finally became convinced that the house was haunted. My children and husband were all in bed. I had clean laundry waiting to be folded on the chaise, but decided to sprawl out on the couch and watch the breakfast club instead. Alone time was rare. All of a sudden, a shirt flew from the chaise and hit me in the face. I ran to the bedroom and my husband was asleep. I woke him up and he said that he didn't believe me, but I know better because he got really anxious and couldn't sleep after that. The next big event occurred when my youngest told me that there was a man in her bathroom. We had a security alarm, so I knew that that couldn't be true. I had her take me to the bathroom and show me. She described him as being all black and pointed and said, he's right there. He's right behind you. I told her we would just leave him alone and go about our day. We had other things happen that we just explained away. I woke up to a shadow figure hovering over my husband. My dogs would wake up in the middle of the night and bark at the foot of the bed. I would hear noises coming from the kids' room and get a terrible feeling whenever I would go and check on them. 
I sometimes had to walk through a cold mist to get to their room. My dogs would also sometimes bark in the hallway. I finally called someone to intervene when my husband met me at our door, freaking out. I worked weekends and I would always come home and tell him about my day while he played on his computer. The kids would be in bed by this time. I would then go and shower and go to sleep. This night, my husband said that I had already been home and talked to him about my day. I had then told him that I was going to go shower. So when he then heard the garage door open and the car pull in, he immediately panicked. I was frightened to hear this as well. An entity taking my identity made me feel helpless. A coworker got me in contact with her friend who has special abilities. Her friend came over with another medium. They smudged our home and put quartz crystals in the corner. It was all free. They told me that the limestone behind us held energy which attracted transient spirits and entities, some good, some not. The shadow man stayed because of my husband's PTSD and was attracted to the negativity. They also said domestic abuse had previously occurred in the man cave at some point and that it was a big focus of the negative energy. They taught me to smudge and told me that I have ancestors by my side keeping me safe. Things would still happen on occasion after this. We spoke to our Muslim friends about it and they thought it sounded like a jinn. These creatures are mischievous and can be good or bad. They gave us a religious artifact from their hometown that had a prayer in Arabic carved in it. We kept it on our mantle and never had trouble after that. They would always laugh at us at Christmas time when we had our Christmas mantle decorations and our Muslim artifact. It's still a treasured item that we have to this day. We have since moved, but we did spend a decade in that home. And the more I think about it, the more I'm sure that it was haunted.